You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Galenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 77 with Adicon and Exact. I am absolutely thrilled to have both of these massive gamers on, and I am I have high expectations, guys. No pressure or anything, no. but uh, <laughs> no. But how are you guys doing? I let's let's hear from Adicon first. How are you doing this fine afternoon? And then Exact. Absolutely fantastic today. I started with a little bit of Overwatch. No old school today, so I am I am purging it from the system temporarily, so we can talk about it all day. But very good, very good, very happy. Very cool. Exact. Doing really good. Really excited to be here. I actually, at this point in time, have not logged into RuneScape in over 30 days now. I was traveling a little bit uh, last month, and uh, yeah, really excited to be here, though. I think last time I played was uh, that charity stream where we uh, did some things that we maybe <laughs> talk about today. <laughs> You know what? Um, Let's just dive. actually. I think hosted you after that, so you should you, you should mark the date on that, right? I uh, I can't remember the date, but oh wait, no, it was um. Oh wait, no, I I can't remember because you and Oda Block hosted me uh, like a no way. Uh, it was it was not the Holy. same day. It was not the same day, but it was like two separate days, and one of them was directly after the Bodhi cast, so it was somewhere oh, in God. that realm. But yeah, yeah, wow. should should have been like around mid May or something, but yeah, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, super excited to be here. Looking forward to this. Thank you for putting this together. Yeah, and, no, it's, uh, it's my pleasure. pleasure. It's my pleasure. Um, in fact, we'll just start out with it. Um, you died to Verzik on I your died. Hardcore Iron Man. And so and for, for those that haven't watched the clip or anything, I'll let you kind of explain the whole charity event and kind of what led up to that point and pretty much the magnitude of what was actually going on, if you don't mind. So we'll just... Let's just hear about like 30 days oh, ago, dear. like a month ago. No, and do I have to relive? We, we have to relive it. <laughs> do I have to relive just, this? There, inevitably, there's no. like two or three people in the entire world that didn't know what happened. But for those that didn't <laughs> know, they, they need to hear. Yeah, so I'd been playing this um, one defense hardcore Iron Man for about two years, I think, at that point. Um, and honestly... It was a weird th- it was a weird mentality with that account because I was always expecting to do some dumb challenge at a low level and then die and then I would survive and then I would do another dumb challenge PVM challenge at a low level and expect to die and then survive and it just kept on going for 2 years ended up getting to the point I think late last year where Addy and I teamed up um to do hard mode TOBs on that account Absolutely should have died doing that grind. <laughs> Addy, you can probably recall some very sus moments. My heart must have that. dropped like five or six times across the first <laughs> even two weeks. I, th- the, the, I mean, I think the most obvious one was um, Nilo. Nilo King. Oh my like, god. The, the, like the, the first five or six times at Nilo King were just terrifying because it was more or less very much out of your control, it felt like to me. Yeah, it, it was like the like the thing with the raiders, like the way you had planned it and the team you crafted was basically set so that nothing was particularly dangerous. Or if Dude, it was, shout it was out you control. and the team for sure. Yeah, but but Nilo King is just like not under control as far as I could tell. <laughs> I don't. I think when <laughs> we sent those first runs, we didn't even know me. what the mechanics were. <laughs> oh god! And we did not realize that it had a max hit of 140. I think it was at the time. Something insane. Yeah. Yeah. Which is out of your control. Like um, at the time, you couldn't even pray against that if somebody else messed up. Yeah. So, yeah, did that, c- completed that, um, completed hard mode, getting all the uniques somehow without dying. Um, for Sani's. So at the time, I think most people would say it was one of the hardcores with the best PVM items in the game. Um, missing some things like Corp, of course, being one defense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so. I put that account up for a charity stream against some uh, interesting incentives. We hit the incentive of $10,000 raised um, during that stream, uh, which was to do a solo TOB. And so that leads us to May, um, in which, yeah, I did the solo TOB. And after... Wait, just a preface. 
Yes. You've done solo TOB, but how many times have you done a solo TOB, you think? Because people are thinking you're you're just trying to do a solo TOB for your first time ever. You've done Oh, that. no, no, no. It, it, I had done some... I was the second person to do it, actually, after Wooks. So yeah. way back when, but way. I had not done it. Yeah, what was that like? Um, TOB release was 2018, right? So four years ago at this point Jesus. has it really been That's four crazy. years since the last three <laughs> where content really Jagex? where's content it's coming oh. soon yeah. um yeah but it would have been around um when a yeah, few, few months after his... tb yeah yes interesting um but yeah nothing since then um but you know the legend mr cold one uh the only person to have soloed the TOB on a hardcore. Uh, you know, he made quite a good show out of that, so I figured it would be, you know, a nice a nice incentive and something that people would want to watch oh, yeah. and raise more attention for charity to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, after two like 12 hour long streams of grinding um, the solo TOB attempts with uh, at that point 42 defense so no piety, not max gear. Um, pretty good gear, but without the defense level, without the without the offensive gear. Yeah. Um, I'd gotten to Verzik two times, I think. Uh, so this would be a third time. And Verzik was at like 10% health on the last phase. I needed to tank one more hit before getting to webs. And I decided to risk the, uh, risk the hit. Um, and it took me out. Yeah. So, uh, By the way, I was watching that stream, and uh, I was watching the prior attempts as well, where you just got scammed out of Blood Fury <laughs> procs, like, to the extreme. It was so depressing to witness. I'm like, really? I, I didn't even look back at it, because I didn't want to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was not really that bad? Oh, you were getting so scammed. It was like, every time yeah. the Blood Fury would proc, it would be on, like, a 1%. It was just no. like it was just never proccing those massive yeah. hits. It's oh, like, for the big I, one, yeah. Attempt, attempt number one as well. You yellow clicked Verzik and got dragged in and had to TP. And oh my goodness! And it just shouldn't have been a yellow click, but that's how yeah. it goes. Yeah. Ah, uh, it it was kind, pressure. it was kind of a beautiful moment though. Uh, you know, it sucks that the hardcore died to a uh, yeah. chance, but. It was kind of beautiful in a way. It was like, we all know you could clearly have done it, but it was just like, damn, like, this is just, you're getting so unlucky. <laughs> and like, <laughs> we're just like, uh, just, just, I don't know. Get it over no, there. well, at that point, I was, I, I was kind of ready because um, the, po the point of the stream was I was putting the hardcore status on the line and now I have less time to play. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, if it happens, it happens. And no matter what, it'll be a good show. I know a lot of people were angry, like, oh, why did he do that? Why the, f yeah. why did you, why did you do, throw away your, yeah, no, I mean, I, I was ready and it was for a good cause. Um, it was memorable to me and hopefully to other people as well. So yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was a great stream. So, yeah, um, what are your plans now? And I guess we'll go in. I mean, we had a bunch of topics and stuff, but you say, you know, life's getting busy and stuff. If you don't mind uh, kind of explaining that a little bit of I'm thinking what I've heard and what you've already said is you haven't logged in. Yeah, in what have you month. heard? Um, I I'm heard curious. that you're quitting. I heard it from a from a fake quitting stream that exact oh, yeah? is quitting now. No, actually, <laughs> no, I saw those on. Uh, I saw like you know I looked up um, exact on Twitch sometimes, and you just like exact underscore oh, no. n six. Yeah. You see that? You probably have those too. Addy probably has those it's, too. It's the, it's the height of flattery for any streamer <laughs> to be uh, targeted for them. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. I guess I would say I'll be playing a lot less now. Oh my goodness. I well, I played that hardcore Iron Man way too much. Um, <laughs> definitely. I think over the course of those two years, like over over two hundred you know, days spent logged in. Time for, yeah. Yeah. Let's. Let, I, yeah. I don't want. I don't even want to look at that. Yeah. Um, but the definitely. Context. Yeah. The context. I have five hundred days played on my main. Yeah, and that's an account that's wait, what? And that's a maxed like you that's have, a maxed main. I stay logged in like all the time. Just that's over the course of four years for this account, roughly about five hundred oh days. I'm at so about seven hundred days, days, but I just won't. You know, we'll, yeah. we won't talk about that. We'll just talk about how crazy <laughs> two hundred days. <laughs> two hundred. Yeah, days. yeah. Uh, we were all. We we're all. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, but um, yeah. so so is just like IRL now hitting basically, and you want to focus. Yeah. On... Cool. Yeah. So I graduated. Um, un- I finished my undergrad in 2020 and um, started the job uh, that fall. And yeah, things are picking up now. So That's I'm cool. uh, I'm choosing to fo- focus more on real life things. So before we get into Addy, I want to ask one more question. Are you prepared to stream Raids 3 or is that not on the table? Oh boy, um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm around. I'm watching Twitch still and I keep in touch with a few people from the RuneScape community. It's, um, I mean, what can I say? It's an amazing community. Uh, it's been my home for you know the past two or three years and... Um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be around. I'm not sure if I'll put on any streams or not, uh, but I'll definitely be watching. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what you you both here and everyone else does as well. Very, very cool. All right, let's hear a little bit from Addy Khan. For those yeah, that don't Addy. know, let's. For those that oh, don't goodness. know who you are, first of all, I just want to bring up a quick story. And I, you know what? I'll bring up two stories. I'll actually bring up exact story real quick. And I'll bring up Addy Oh, but, oh but, no. But, no! 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 Let's skip to the part every, where you talk about. Addy. No, I want to. I want to hear it now. No. So we everyone's time, probably. Time. If if you guys listen to the casts and I'm talking to the audience out there, you probably have heard this before. But Exact came into my stream before I ever knew the name Exact. It was just some random Twitch viewer of mine, and he came in. And he quote unquote backseated me. He didn't even backseat me. He gave me what? two. He he gave me like a piece of great advice for solo chambers. And this what was did like I even do? it was it was something so polite. And I took it as oh this random guy in my Twitch stream is now uh, backseating me. And so I was like okay cool cool man cool. I don't know how I responded. I was probably pretty polite too. But in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, backseater. This anyway, guy. turned oh, out I'm to sorry. be that like the next like month, within that month, I'm seeing, oh, the same name that was backseating me is now doing a solo tob uh, and like practicing No Pillar Inferno weird <laughs> shit. I'm like, oh, oh. And then I also, um, uh, just a few months after that, you also got the 40 Combat Infernal Cape. Whenever that was, maybe it was a year after, I all all time is blending in but basically i fucked up by um it's basically like the equivalent of wooks coming into your stream and you're just like yeah no get out of here i don't want your advice yeah it was pretty bad so i always think back to that whenever i think exact i think of the very embarrassing that moment back where, suitor yep, no yeah but it was it was just embarrassing on my end because i'm like dude i i was in the presence of a mechanically gifted god of this game and now no, I'm no, just... no. like i don't know i was <laughs> new to twitch at this point okay so i was probably being dumb too i i didn't realize it was uh, like impolite too i don't think you know. so i think you were very polite i think i was in a bad mood and i was just like this <laughs> oh, guy no. doesn't know what he's talking about so anyway that's my little story but now i want to bring up addy con because addy con i remember watching you and by the way, we actually have had Addicon on the cast. That was episode five. So if you guys want to hear like way back in the day, um, our conversation, feel free to go back how to episode long, five. How but long ago was that? <clears throat> that two, was two years. Yeah, I think, half, that was, years? I think that was December or maybe it was January 2021. So just like a year and a half. Ne- ago. Nearly. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nearly two years. Sure. So Addicon, I feel like we grew our streams somewhat together i just remember me starting out streaming and then i instantly found yes. your stream recommended channel and since then like i just remember popping into your stream and you were a god at the time this is three and a half years ago by the way i just remember you were a god at solo chambers your clicks were fucking on point oh my Every, god. you just you felt like you were in harmony with the mm. piece of content and it was crazy and then i remember um you know, this was like I don't know how long ago, how long after uh, you first started streaming, you got into the Inferno. But I remember you getting to in the getting into the Inferno. I was remembering Adicon's really great at Chambers, but he's probably pretty bad at Inferno because he doesn't do much. Anyway, I felt like a matter of That's like cool. one that month. Be true. <laughs> it felt like a matter of one month when you were just like the top ten Inferno people in the game, and I'm like, oh, okay. It this... took a lot longer than that. It was it was a process that was. Primarily off stream, I think. I had been doing bits of Inferno here and there. It's actually long enough ago that I don't, I don't really remember how much time I was putting into each activity. But that point, maybe three years ago, was certainly where I was more at home in, in chambers than anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And then pretty much 
immediately after the cast, um, in the no in the next like following three or four months, I'd begun to move away from treatment. So for some for some context here, last time on the cast, I think we had talked about pretty much all the stuff I was doing up until the point where I got to Inferno, and not really Inferno itself. Yeah, we were talking about the hundred man CMs and everything. Right. We we might we might have touched on it, but I don't I don't recall if I had a sub fifty, which is kind of like the standard for beginning to get good at speedies in, in Inferno. And it's back kind of hard the, to back in those days though, sub fifty was quite I mean Adwem was yeah. like fifty three minutes, right? And he was the best. Mm -hmm. and, That's crazy. Now it's uh, forty four. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that you asked how far you you and everyone else has come it's, to. It's unfathomable to consider the difference between every single minute that goes down. It's not just a minute, it's it's so much more. You know, it's it's like exponential graph, right? And the closer you get towards that potential that you can reach, it's just harder and harder and harder. And every every twenty seconds you go, every thirty seconds you go, it's just it, it's it's so much more than people think it is. Every time. Oh yeah, I mean now we're but, seeing um, like Inferno now is everyone's using a scythe, and people are probably like, "What are you doing with a scythe?" And just the fact that you're saving mm -hmm. that extra tick potentially on every monster, like those little ticks shaved here and there, are now the uh, determining factor. It's crazy. Where, where, where were we at? What I was doing around three. Oh, I was like, so a lot of my time was like spent chambersing. Um, I went through a phase of enjoying chambers to the extent that I had done uh, alongside solo, duo, trio, four man, whatever, just speeded speeds. And then we left off with Mega Scale, I think, which I'm not going to talk about because obviously it's in the last cast. If you want to go see it, you go there. Um, but that was like one of the, the more difficult and really interesting team challenges available at the time. And of course, these are all arbitrary things. They're just like fun things that the community does. And that's kind of really nice because, of course, four years without content means you've got to make your own, right? Yep. But I think immediately after that, I kind of moved away from the idea of like, is there really anything left at Chambers? And then, of course, CM was out around that time. So it was like either playing around with CM, which I had done a lot of, but didn't really like the idea of speeding it or going to do something else. And I, I ended up landing on Inferno, and I, um, well, I think we'll touch on this later, but mostly in credit to the people who were streaming at the time. So Adam especially, um, Jarvin to some extent, uh, Jolanin on YouTube, his runs were always there. Yep. And it was just so much more interesting to see the mechanical ability that, that took place in the Inferno was, it was so much more prevalent and so much more important than other places in the game. Because in Chambers, like, in terms of the APM, it's not that much. In terms of the precision, it doesn't really matter too much. And if you make a mistake, do you really die? Take a bit of damage, but it's not like it's not going to threaten the run. But Inferno was like so much more interesting to me in terms of this this potential for mastery, and also the progress that a player could make over time is it's more obvious, it's easier to understand, and it's more direct. And I mean that in the sense of if something goes wrong in in TOB or Chambers, it's not immediately obvious what caused it. But if you if you die in the Inferno, it's usually pretty obvious why. And that's a really good recipe for understanding how to get better quickly is to just look at that and be like, I could fix this. I could just do that one thing. Yeah. And it goes a long way. It goes a long way for people who want to improve rapidly. It's it's the content of choice in that sense. Um, yeah, that's... I don't know. I've I've kind of landed on Inferno now. And it's it's I think even with Raid 3 coming out, I'll still be going back to the Inferno every time there's new gear, every time, just to try and push it down and see what it's like. Yeah, yeah, it's uh good. it's it's a masterpiece just looking at really in really talented gamers in the inferno because there's so much going on and I've stated this so many times. I mean, I watch you do speed runs at Econ and I'm like this is a different like this is not a human being doing this cuz you watch people do the inferno and generally speaking, you watch somebody doing the Inferno, you're like, holy shit, this looks tough. This looks really hard because this guy is just getting owned by everything and there's so much going on. And then you go to an Adicon stream and, like, you never misclick. I swear to God, you never I misclick. I misclick. I misclick all the time. He ne Listen, guys, he never misclick. No, 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 okay. Occasionally, I he might misclick. But w what I'm saying is, like, you have it down to a science, it feels like. And it feels like everything's just flowing. It feels like you're part of the Inferno. And there's you know something the most... beautiful mm -hmm. about that. I don't know. You know the most interesting thing is that doesn't get brought up a lot about this is that you would think that somebody who's playing like that, to the extent where it looks like all the actions are predetermined and really specific, and yeah. 
you would think they're almost like flow stating it. They're just they're letting it happen. They're reacting to it. They they know what to do. Their brain just makes use of it. Yeah. And I find that it works to a certain degree. But the second you let yourself do that in the Inferno, and I've, I've tried to do it on purpose, the second you do that, you don't get good runs. Because you, you have enough time to think, and thinking goes a long way. It, it's sort of one of those... You have to be very conscious. You have to go beyond the level of just flow stating something to make it work. You actually have to build creative solutions and think ahead, and you can't do that in a flow state. Yeah, you can't just you can't just think play it in the moment and think and think like let me just mechanically mm -hmm. scale this out. You actually have to plan ahead in the moment, which is so much more interesting from the perspective of of speed running it because it, it, it takes it away from what one might consider. You know, you, you do it for the mechanical skill, and then at the end of it, it's like no, it's back to planning. Yeah. It's back to looking your head in the wave, and it's just way more interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm I'm assuming solo so, chambers, you so can get complex. in those flow states pretty easily. You you, you can, and, and it's okay to be in them. In comparison, you don't have to think about chambers, not very much anyway. Yeah, because it, it's all presets. Like maybe you're doing in quiz solo CM, and you flick your gear, you hit on, you see your HP, but there's nothing to think ahead about. There's no like, there's no wave potential solve. There's no like, I throw a chin, and what happens if this dies, that dies? There's no there's no judgment, I guess, and it's that judgment that gives it the extra step, which is really cool. So I want to ask both of you guys the difference of speed. What what really goes into um, speed running Inferno and getting a super low combat Inferno? Do you think they're two different talents, two different skills, or do you think you can kind of? I don't even know what I'm trying to ask, but I also, you know, kind of an extension to that uh, cloudy question that I just asked. I also want to ask like. Um, what are what were the uh i don't know basically points of progression in the inferno speed running because i've seen like okay thralls were never a thing now i feel like they're a thing scything was never a thing now i feel like they're a thing uh i believe buckler i mean these little teeny changes that people make over time so i'm pretty sure addy would know a little bit more on that but i also want to hear the mechanical side of getting that super low combat inferno because uh, exact. You held the forty combat Inferno record for a while until Absol just recently beat it with a thirty nine. Absol, combat. the the king. Yeah. yeah, he's been uh, he's been grinding that. So a couple um, different questions thrown at you guys. You guys can just share your thoughts before I. Yeah, I've been <laughs> opening my mouth for a while. Exact. All yours. Okay. Um. So is there a difference between speed running and getting a low combat cape, which takes twenty hours? No, you just gotta get good, man. That's that's. <laughs> That's what that's what they say, right? <laughs> just get good. It um, helps. You heard it here. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm known for my inferno guides. Yeah, just just get better, man. <laughs> just do better. Get gooder. That's it. That's, that's the cost. That's, it. that's the cost. <laughs> that's a wrap. Um, yeah. So, well, here let me also just preface again, and then I'll shut my mouth for sure. But. Exact, you were always that kind of minimalist, uh, low combat inferno doer. And then all of a sudden, you got a sub 50 out of nowhere. And that felt like it was a matter of just... Coached, coached by this man, by the way. Shout out. Uh, he, was in, he was in call, yeah. So, I told him to click stuff. And dude, I remember there was a stream like a year or whatever that was. You were like, oh, you were, you were super surprised. You were like, oh, I didn't think you could do that. I remember you <laughs> saying that. You're like, I didn't believe in you. Yeah. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was uh, no, no, that was Sebe. Wait, me? Was, I oh, yeah. yeah. He was like, "Oh, I didn't think I, I've seen you do like low combat and like all this precision stuff. I didn't think you could do speed running." It feels like that is two different talents, and it feels like you'd have to work <laughs> super, super hard at it. But I swear to God, you just you put anything in front of Exact, and he'll just no, dominate no, no. it. No, yes, yes, yes. I, yes. I think there's definitely a different way of thinking. Like looking at the the tiles and the movement and planning thing. So. Addy has got like these insane clicks and switches and his malice just goes exactly where where his it needs to be every time. It, yeah. yeah. I cannot comprehend that. Um if you look at the setup I used for the 40 combat inferno, I have a one way weapon switch and that's it. Um <laughs> so I just click that and then click the boss and then um that's that's low combat inferno, basically. Well, yeah, it does take a lot of planning, um, but I think it's overall much more slower, slower paced. Um, in speed running, you have to be thinking, like Addy just mentioned, on your feet in the moment, like every decision, second by second, yeah. uh, as you go. It's really, really involved. 
Um, the low combat stuff, uh, because there's this way of scouting the waves, you know exactly what's coming at you. And yeah, there's like 50 things coming at you uh, and you have two HP and you're going to die to one hit. But if you take your time and plan everything correctly, you will most likely be okay. Um, it's the planning part there. The long sitting down, solving a wave um, that I think was both the most interesting part as well as the most demanding part of the low combat capes. I don't know. Uh, do you want to take the speed running side of that? Yeah, I guess I can comment on like the difference between them as well. It, it's sort of very... It's the same skill set, just applied differently. right? One, one is more like patience and planning and precision and carefulness for the low combats. And one is more really understand the core concepts and build your gameplay up off of that and then let yourself flow into it. Again, it's like you don't entirely flow, you have to think on your feet as well to like plan ahead. But speedrunners tend to just let themselves go and they can just, the wave will happen. It's, it's a lot from memory, like you see a wave spawn and it'll just happen. But you can't just see a wave spawn in a low combat. Yeah. But at the same time, you put any speedrun into a low combat wave solve, they will probably be able to solve it, but it's not, it's not going to be as consistent. We, with speedrunning, we'd like to take risks, I think is the difference here maybe. Mm. And we'll we'll play around thresholds. So if I'm 10 HP, I'm going to play a bit differently. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I die. But if you're low combating, you have to apply your knowledge of maybe a blob and you know off tick the triple blobless or something. Um, it, it is very similar skill sets though. At the end of the day, I do I do think that a lot of low combaters and a lot of speedrunners could cross between the two disciplines within the inferno and still succeed quite effectively. Um, and I know a lot of the good speedrunners have at times done low combat capes, not necessarily like super low, but you know, under 60 combat pretty commonly. I yeah. think people do that. So they definitely apply both ways though. They definitely apply. Yeah. I think it's worth highlighting to your, cause we're talking like, you know, theory, theory and practice kind of here as well. I mm. think it's worth highlighting your theoretical contribute. Oh my God. It sounds like we're doing like science or something here. <laughs> it is though. <laughs> but as a, as but actually cool. this man here is the speed run scientist. I saw him draw this diagram once, like with I every really tile like in the inferno. And then he drew like the three tiles that the, the big blob takes up and where the small ones spawn. And then like, you must click this one and stand here so that the chin explodes on everything <laughs> at once. You remember, you remember the, the showing me this stuff, right? I, I, I could yes, not make I, sense of it at the time. So, yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> and then, like, in the Inferno speedrunning Discord, I just remember you writing, like, oh, my goodness. Just, like... I have uh, the perfect picture. Okay. I need, to, I need to go find it, but uh, if I can find it, I'll post it. Yeah. Maybe... Uh, do you think you can pull that up, like... Yeah, if, I, can, if I can pull up a picture. Yeah, if you send I'll, I'll yeah, go yeah. search for it. But I just remember, like, just these situations like every situation you can get into there used to be a channel and then for in inferno speedrunning discord be like oh yeah mage range stack okay you do this uh chin chin the blob stuff to with everything you do this melee do melee in this position you do this and you had like a solution for everything and i think that not just not just like writing uh, figuring all that stuff out and writing it down but also what's more impressive to me as well just equally as impressive is the um the way that you did it with building up this Inferno speedrunning Discord, making the resources available to people, as well as just elevating, you know, speedrunning to um, to a, to a wider community and making it become more known, more people engage with it, more people join the Discord, more people know yeah. the technology, techno te tech? tech, the, the tech, tech, yeah. the tech, the tech, the technology. <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> But it is true. <laughs> anyway, yeah. your contributions, I think, are worth highlighting towards uh, towards the the whole Inferno speedrunning scene. It's... I I just make Discord and people people go there. That's <laughs> I know it's a bit more than that, but at the end of the day, it was just nice to have a place where it was like you, you, the, you... the original the original idea was to just give everyone a place to go and just be a central hub, I guess. Because there were there were lots of other Discords where people did Inferno and streamed Inferno, but just not a central thing. Yeah. Um, it was it was partially because a lot of these servers were for selling capes and people didn't feel like it was ever going to be a community there. It was mm -hmm. more of just like the friends. I, I would hang out there, but it wasn't like, you know, you couldn't just have people rock up and be like, "Is this the Inferno place?" No, we sell capes here. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't quite it wasn't quite right. But no, I think that was essential to have I'm... that vision of like, yeah, this is not a place for selling capes. This is I had... speed, speed running here, yeah. and you we were I, able I, to do that. I had talked to maybe five or ten of the people who not just sold sold capes, but were like 
prevalent speedrunners at the time be like, is this okay with you guys? Would you would you want it? And pretty much everyone was like, it's a good idea, we'd like it, yeah. Which was really, really helpful from them as well. They, they weren't just like, nah, don't take it away from us. They, like, the Inferno community in general, super supportive and helpful. Like, everyone is just there for the Inferno. Um, it's really nice just seeing people come together for stuff like that. Absolutely. But, yes. Yeah, no, uh, it's been a real treat kind of seeing how talented players can really get in this game. Because I swear, okay, let's think. Inferno came out, what, five years ago exactly, basically? Mm -hmm. um, before that, people kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie. I think people kind of sucked <laughs> at the game. I mean, there was Chambers yeah. to get good at and God Wars flicking. That was, like, peak, in my opinion. Um and like I would, I remember watching Hauke, I remember watching Gladius soloing Chambers. That was just the craziest thing of all time. And it's crazy how far we've come. Where people are literally, I mean, was it you? Okay, so somebody said this. I don't want to quote. I don't want to misquote anybody, but they said that you don't think right now it's even really feasible to beat Jolanine's Inferno record <laughs> because it's yeah. just so incredibly oh, low and so no. incredibly lucky that like, yes, it could be beat, but it's so tough. Even with Masori coming out, it's still going to be difficult to... Uh, most compete. most people, most I, I would say there are five to six capable players in Inferno right now who have the capability to take Wreck in the first place. And that would require some very good RNG as well. This is this is just how speedrunning is. It does require a lot of RNG, but only at that very top level. Oh yeah. But I I think there are only six players right now who could even do it, and they would have to put in a lot of time. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how it's it's always been for Inferno. Is this this top bracket that are capable, and then the the top few ranks will always switch between them. But I don't think players beyond that could really push into that bracket. I'm not sure what the distinction is between the players. It could just be the amount of time they put in. It's obviously a huge factor. But the likes of Jolin has just been... If you've ever watched his runs back, you know, two years ago to now, it's very subtle changes in it, but you can... Ever, ever, this is the other thing. Everyone has a really distinct style. And he has pretty much always been the cleanest player for stuff. So That's... it's no surprise that he has the highest conversion rate for runs. It's He's the most likely to get them. Um, and that's really what it comes down to is like, if, if, the, if the base rate of a record, and you can kind of think about it like this, if the base rate of a record run is 1 in 250, which is about right for the top players, Jolin's rate is 1 in 200 or 1 in 150. And then everyone else's is like 1 in 250 to 1 in 300. And it's just that difference that makes him push that bit further and get those kind of little ticks per wave. Yeah. That makes it up is, for it. It is cool to think that there are, and I know when we're coming to the top speedrun Infernos, there's very few people that can compete with those times. But for the most part, I mean, how many people have done a sub 50 Inferno now? I can look at the leaderboard. Um, there's got to be like 25 to 50, I'm assuming. Like, there's a on, lot, I think. On the, on the leaderboard as of right now, there are 31 players with a sub-50. Jesus. See, that's crazy in and of itself. I mean, even with the blowpipe nerf. I guess we've had some additions like the Zaride van braces and stuff. but And this, this is all post-blowpipe nerf as well. Jesus. Yeah, that's insane to me. And, uh, yeah, the player base is getting extremely talented. Do you think... So, kind of leading into this question, do you think clients have had a big part in getting players better at the game? Oh boy. I think they've made players worse, personally. Really? <laughs> oh my god. Really? In all honesty. Yeah. I'm going to show with you about this. Do you, what? Do you it, it think depends, they, it like, depends like, where. Yeah, no, go for it. Go for it. In Inferno, I think it's made players worse. In Chambers, I think it's made players worse. For bringing down <laughs> top times, I think it's made players better. But... If they use them after they brought down those times, I think it's made them worse. Across the board, to this date, there are two useful plugins in existence. One is Neverlog, and the other is Low RAM. No <laughs> other plugin for PVM has ever been useful, in my opinion. And now this is not this is not including stuff like maze running, because obviously that is useful. This is not including stuff that might be on some of the clients to count like Nido things. I'm talking about mostly Runelite plugins for the most part, mm. uh, plus Low RAM, plus maybe Neverlog. But low, low RAM is like exclusively the only useful plugin. What about That's NPC indicators? NPC yeah, and I'll, drawing I'll, the box I'll, around I'll, the game? I'll, I'll, I'll draw NPC indicators is useful. NPC we're indicators, talking, talking like tile game markers? Changing, time changing ones. 
Tile yeah. markers, sure. Yeah, tile yeah, markers. No, well, well those thing. aren't cheap. Well, okay, look, so let me rephrase. Really, uh, I, meant to, I meant to kind of rephrase uh, bef oh. before this. It was basically clienting as in cheat clienting. Oh, so I should have prefaced that a little bit better. But so I mean, it, it's cool to hear both sides as well because we do live in mm -hmm. a day and age where we just have so many plugins that makes boxes around everything. Everything. The whole game is just a <laughs> just board <laughs> game, basically, like just moving your tiles. But yeah, that's why I would argue that in some ways clients have made players better, though, because there's this awareness of yeah, it's just a rhythm game. Yeah, it's just a board game. You can draw these tiles in places. Stand mm -hmm. here. And then combine all of these, you know, very clunky mechanics into a way that just breaks the game. Um, that's, I feel like, you know, where really PVM technology, I, I don't know, <laughs> skill level has gone up a lot is because people are aware, oh, you can just break things. You can just break God Wars by running through the boss and flinching it and then using mm -hmm. this kiting pattern to not get hit. Um without tile markers without um you know having this awareness that every boss is just a square yeah. uh i feel like that's that's what kind of started all of this i can certainly grant things like tile markers and, and npc and npc like square indicators around that would be useful yeah I, I i suppose i mostly mean things like um shaman splats for example something like a shaman splat that displays where it's going a vasa hmm. boulder uh, Ohm Acid Trail. Like, what? You can't see the Acid Trail? It's green. Why are you marking it green? <laughs> th 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 things like this. I'm, I, I, so I, I mean more so like the casual player-based plugins that they tend to use. Things that are very much non-useful and um, in most cases they're either crutching on to not learn the mechanic and, then, and instead they're reacting to the box. So the example at Vasa is a person has a Vasa plugin and they do Vasa and they see this big box and they try to run away from the box and that's how they understand Vasa. And a good player will understand Vasa actually throws rocks at the player, so I can just dodge where I was, and I can do this on time. And now they understand perhaps that other players get boulders thrown too. And then you can step, take this a step further and understand, like, oh, standing west of Vasa means that I'm not going to take damage because they throw it to the east. And it goes a bit more than that, right? But at the base level, it's like they just react to the plugin. And instead, you could react to the boss or something else. And it's just, it's just crutching in my eyes all the time. That's more. That's more so what I was going through. But yeah, yeah. Because I wonder yeah. with the uh, whole third-party client change. Based, so I don't know if Exact is aware, mainly because he's been busy with real life. But basically, they've banned all clients except for OS Buddy, RuneLight, and HDOS, Woo! which is some. Yay. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Jagex did say, "Hey guys, you can all cheat for the next week because uh, we're not going to enforce next. this until next week." So. Grace period. Yeah, a little grace period. Even though it's it's, it's, yeah. it's the purge. <laughs> one one day of free clienting for one year of not clienting. Because I was going to say that's what it feels like. like but they they really they've shouldn't. always been bannable clients, and uh, now they're like, "All right." Be sure, guys, get Go off these it. bannable clients that we've been saying have been illegal for all this time. But, but you can use it today and yeah. tomorrow. Use it for the, the next, next week, and then we're and then we're gonna hammer down on it. So, so can I just log in right now and HK the heck out of anyone tribe breeding? Yeah, Pretty it's much. completely it's <laughs> easy. Okay, let's go. Grace period. Woo. Turn on your Woo. Terminator plugin. Just yeah. But that's an interesting mentality, actually. That actually applied to clients in the first place that you kind of think things have kind of been pushed as far as they will go within the rules people are playing like with as much stuff as they can and then people go beyond the rules too and say like okay well now i highlight the entire soda seg mace um but like just over time and jagex has struggled so much with this is like the guidelines on what is allowed what's not allowed is is hi hiding uh, NPC indicators, uh, NPC death animations loud or not? Like, you know, the stuff that is quality of life, is it loud or not? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's been tough because Jagex had not really any way to enforce this, right? Unless you're streaming. Yeah. There, There is a question in the thread about this and it was about what plugins are allowed. So I guess we can kind of dive into that now. Let's do it. But, yeah. but um, I, I, ultimately, this came. This this has always come down to what do they enforce? Because without enforcement, the rule is meaningless. That's simply just how it is across yep. the board. Um, so it always comes back to Jagex. But it's still interesting to discuss what people think are allowed. For me, it's pretty simple. Plugins should be static. They can't like 
move around so that you can't have um, a tracker on something that marks tile by tile where to move, for example. Uh, and the other thing is that it should not think or process information for you in any way. That's basically the two things for mm. me. So what are what is an example of something that is an illegal plugin that's somewhat popular that you can describe that is quest thinking helper. for you? Quest helper. It's highlighting the option for you. <laughs> so is quest, but is quest helper considered static because it's always going to be the same quest? Or it is, is, that it is. static. There's just a huge it library. Like, but it, but it also thinks for you. It, okay. the, the idea is that for me, the, not, the plugins should uh, not do either of those two things. So what about puzzle solvers for clues? Shouldn't be allowed. Okay. But now uh, there's the other side of this is where I understand that at some point, if they've been in introduced and it hasn't been cracked down on, i.e. not on Jagex's end enforced, at some point these things become too prevalent. That you, it, It's been too long. You can't get rid of them. And an yeah, example wait. of this is, is Quest Helper, Clue Solver, Chamber Scout. And these <laughs> things really should not be in the game. When you said Clue uh, Solver, I was like, wait a second, just... that's a plugin? I didn't even realize that this plugin. I thought the game just <laughs> gave you... No, no, the, the game doesn't give you the errors. You actually had to solve that back in the day. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. And it's it's a shame, but... I, I don't know. It, it's, it shouldn't be things, but some things have li have lived on too long to not be useful. Yeah, exactly. To, to just, not be removed. Just to continue that point of puzzles not being solvable in the main, in vanilla client. I sat on the toilet probably like a year ago or something i was on the toilet and i you know this i was like you know story. what i have a hard clue so let me log into mobile right now and try to solve this hard clue the first oh, step no. that came up with it was a coordinate and i'm like okay yeah okay, i'm completely like... lost i have to log out because it's just a random Wait, yeah. coordinate. and right. there's no like rune light thing that says hey go here but anyway somehow out of process of elimination i found out the coordinate and then the very next step was a puzzle box and i had to do a puzzle box by myself i'm like how the fuck do you do these <laughs> like plug it how do you do clue oh, scrolls without no. room light like this is this is horrible yeah so just brief little story of how op plugins have really become just in everyday life i could not play vanilla and i just want to state right now i am so happy with uh the decision that jagex made to partner up with runelight one and i think oh my this whole banning of third-party clients they did it in such a magnificent way like i don't feel like anybody's really complaining they've allowed low ram now like npcs disappear we have left click pickpocketing finally there's a lot of other custom customizable options and these are things that the community just like unanimously have just been saying hey like we want this we want this we want this for years mm. and now it's come and it's like oh thank god yeah to caveat that they have been taking their years to to get to this point but yeah from what i hear you say they're definitely we're lucky to have some mods who you know they, they have their hand on the pulse of the community and they're yeah. they're, they're at least seeing and listening yeah. which is um very special and the, for this the biggest part of all of this is before raids three yeah, that's, oh, that's, yeah. One, that's, one of, that's one of the largest parts of this. It's in time. It's in time that the biggest PVM release of the of the last four years, hopefully, is actually going to be <laughs> potentially, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, touch wood five times <laughs> off client for everybody. Oh my god! Yeah, no, no one's going to be able to cheese it. You have to learn. You have to be good. You can't just crutch on plugins. Yeah. So there's a enforceable rule that they are adding, which is if you are caught on an illegal client. After this grace period, which is over this next week, um, you will get a two-week ban, and then the next offense, you will most likely be permanently banned. Um, is this fair? And do you like that they've stated what the punishments are beforehand? To me, yes. Yeah. Set mm -hmm. the expectations. As, as long as they follow up, as long as it's enforceable, absolutely. Yes. Do you... And, and okay. To add on, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that was always true, including about things like Let Ram. I wouldn't be using it if it was actually punishable and by default, and just always was. But <laughs> It was so our, fun watching know. all of the people come in your Twitch chat and being like, isn't this banned? Then the streamer, <laughs> the, the, please the, the, go on the, Reddit the, now. Uh, the Let Ram stuff is just getting so old after all this time. Just so <laughs> is old. It, has the meme gone stale? It began, it got to the point where we kind of had this understanding that Dragex really was never going to ban for it. And that they had been calling about it and we knew it was going to come eventually. And it was just like, I, I, for the last like four months, I had a command and stream that linked people to clients and just said, <laughs> use it at your own risk. This is how it is. I just yeah. got bored of it. You know, at, at some point it's just enough. Too much, too much. Yeah. No, I mean, that it's is a really good 
point like there's just things that should be here like for example i'm right now i'm thieving elves and for years we had to right click left click right click left click mm -hmm. because there was no way to no. that is just something that is making the game worse i don't enjoy it every like nobody enjoys this except for bots because now it's uh basically discouraging real players by doing this content and now bots are just right. farming these things you know um mm -hmm. So there's things like that where it's like, dude, these should just be legal. I know they're not allowed right now, but it's just like, oh, legalize them. Legalize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Poor 20 streamer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that you? Is he back? <laughs> Apparently, he's been streaming all this time. I unfollowed him back in the Inferno days because I, I was actually oh, losing you. brain cells. And no offense oh, by any means, no. but like literally when you'd sit – in, when you'd sit in a stream for four hours and nothing had happened, I realized, okay, this is for my own mental health to unfollow a streamer because he's so addicting Bro, to watch. watching Yu-Gi-Oh, though. He's so yeah, addicting to watch, but nothing was <laughs> happening, and it was just, like, making my, like, heart hurt. I was just like, dude, do something. Like, oh, my God. But, yeah, apparently he still he streams. Was, he was the milk master. <laughs> the best to ever do it. As soon as he killed Zuck, we were talking about this on the Adwam cast last week. As soon as he had killed Zuck, it was over. It was it's, like he, no, he, he messed it. up. He messed he up. He tried to go back as well. Tried to do a repeat once. It didn't work. <laughs> it was over. It, you got one chance for Zuck, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, it is cool that we're now at a stage where it's pretty clear what's against the rules and what uh, is legal. And it's also cool that they've kind of given us, you know, some really useful plugins that have been asked for, have been requested for so long that are finally in the game. Is there anything that you would like to see added that hasn't been added yet, Addicon, or things that should possibly be removed? Uh, nothing. Plugins wise, uh, not, nothing that I can think of. Very cool. honestly. What What are your thoughts on Neverlog? Because you did mention that we don't have Neverlog, uh, and we have a five minute timer still. As much as I would like Neverlog. I understand that you can't you, for old school you can't do that because of the servers you just can't. Yeah. If you gave if you gave the player base the wider access to it, it would just cause so many more issues than there, than there already are. I think there are compromises. You could add a ten minute timer instead of five because a lot of the time, if I want to go make a snack or get a drink or just take a little break and walk around for a bit, five minutes is on that threshold of not being enough. But ten minutes is like much better. So um, let me just. So expand on that a little bit because somebody else was asking that in fact people are also advocating for maybe 20 minutes 10 minutes and like 15 mm -hmm. minutes but i think with the jagex launcher there's going to be a new system where you just click on your profile you don't have to type in your information every time it's just click you're back in because your yeah. accounts are like there so i think the five minute timer if it stays as is which personally i'm fine with uh it's just gonna be really convenient when you go back from your computer yeah. after five minutes and just click once boom in i i have tested jagex launcher it is a lot better i think it's just something that we got too used to never log really and give us six months on jagex launcher we won't care okay. that's probably what it is very cool mm -hmm. all right um we got some twitter topics and we've covered a couple of them so far but uh let's go into Eh, I guess since we're already talking about this, we'll just cover the rest of these. DBV Orange has been uh, asking us to discuss illegal plugins clients. He lists some bullet points saying, Effect on PKing. Is authentication possible through the launcher? Seeing server info you normally can't. Speed running. Thoughts on PVM skilling records requiring more obscure plugins which are inaccessible to the wider public. And macros. So I also want to expand on this real quick for both of you. Do you think that even though they're banning clients and it seems like they're going to be trying to enforce it a lot more than they ever have been, do you think that it's still going to be an issue where people have very overpowered clients and it's still going to lead down to the same road where it's undetectable and people are doing it? Or do you think the Jagex launcher is now like foolproof and nobody's going to be using cheat clients? You want to take this? Or... Uh, I'm thinking right now. To... Okay, uh, I'll leave. So... In the ideal world, yes, it catches everyone. But I'm pretty sure there are already bot clients that run on RuneLight. They just have an overlay or something. They, they do something with RuneLight, right? It is it is pure RuneLight. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if it's going to catch everything, but it's going to have a big effect. Yeah, if it's like purely Personal. stacked on top of RuneLight or the mm -hmm. vanilla client and 
there, there i mean there must be somebody who knows how to do that right yeah there there are, there, there, are, there are plenty of ways right they do exist but the, the biggest thing is now we're moving into the realm of because it's because it's such a minority now that would be doing that and it's not accessible on actual on like main clients for people i think the burden now comes to the community to try and step up a little bit and really watch out for those players like not not, not including bots and things but like if you have a community, let's say I'll use Inferno because we have the Inferno community right there. Mm -hmm. If we start requiring full video evidence from players for their runs, which is what you really should do for any speedrunning community, yep. and, and we see they have these plugins that really just are not on Runelight, you know they're on a client immediately. It's very easy to catch out. This is true for every speedrun. It's now on our it's it's now on our community to do something about it. And if someone's cheating and not submitting, who cares? That's on them. If they want to do it for fun, I don't mind. It's more so when it begins to impact other players. Um, and I think this only really matters for either speedrun community or, I guess, skilling six hours. But at the end of the day, those are the only places if it matters. Just enforce it. Do it as a community. Team content, have, too, you know, though, is the thing. Like, right now, it's I've heard that it's annoying to find TLB teams if you're not on client because mm -hmm. it's the norm to use uh, clients that are, I guess, yeah. outside of the rules. Um, so I guess, yeah, like you said, it's up to the community. But we'll... With these changes, I, I, I'm hearing you say that, yeah, hopefully the community will say, yep, just go go regular client. Yeah, it's kind of tough. I've uh, So personally, I've never logged into a cheat client, quote unquote, uh, but I have heard a lot of positive things about- Oh, really? Exposed on the, <laughs> the man's cast himself? <laughs> No, but real talk. Do you right hand? Up? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, no. So <laughs> I will on, just on. state real quick. I have been permanently banned on this game, and it was the what? It, it was exposed. Like, yeah. No, I mean that's Ramble no. One. If you guys want to go way back, I've made over oh, hundred rambles now. Ramble One talks about it. Uh, and but by the way, that permanently banned account actually got unbanned. It was like four years later. So nice. hold on to hope, everybody. Right? Just hold on for a few years. No, keep but making those Reddit posts. <laughs> Yeah, no, but <laughs> I got wrongly banned. I mean, banned literally, me when you get banned, you try everything. Like it's just like, dude, yeah. you realize yeah. how little power yeah. you have and how your account's not really yours; it's Jagex's. So, um, where was I going with this? I feel like, a, yeah, I completely lost my train of thought. But um, oh, I'm sorry. Now you're good. Clients. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, about about clients. I'll think about it in a second. But if you guys have anything else to add. <laughs> I like that this question says effect on PKing. Like we're both very good at PKing uh, each other. In I killed case. Shorty in LMS about a week ago. Oh, no oh. way, no. We had one fight, it was predetermined and I'm never gonna live, let him live it down. I, I, by the way, I, I rethought of what I was saying. It was something about socket. It was something about how I just wanted to preface that I have not cheated since then because I just don't find it worth it. When you realize your account's taken from you, you can't do anything about it, it sucks. Oh, wow. So anyway, I wanted to talk about Socket a little bit because I've never used it, but I know somewhat what it's about. You connect to a little uh, thing and you're all in the TOB raid together and you can see the soda seg maze and all this stuff. Do you think that that is something that a lot of people want? Do you think that should be allowed in the game? Something like that, like a party system where you can see things? Or do you think that should all be removed and people just have to accept that you can't use Socket anymore? Because I'm pretty sure... A lot of people love that stuff. Again, I've never used it, but I can see the value of it, although it is kind of cheating. What are your thoughts on things like that? Because Exact did bring up a good point of team content being affected more than just speedrunning and stuff. Remove it, accept it, report the players who do it moving okay. forward. Shift in the community once again. I think, I think that's what it comes down to still. Okay. Um, if 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 if, t if speedrun teams want to submit a time and you see they run the maze together like that, yeah, just disallow yeah, them from the entire community. They're just they they're just uh, having a land party, man. Yeah, guys, just calling. Yep, two it's... diagonal, two north, two diagonal, two east. Yep, or they're all it's... in the same room together, looking at each other. They're actually in the hacking. same sock. That's yeah, they're yeah. just in the same sock together. <laughs> they're all wearing one sock. It's a bit yeah, odd I... because old, old school speedrunning has never really been about the speedrun. It's been about the methods for a lot of it. Um, especially things like Tom, like consider all the methods they have to use, like Book of Darkness saying P1 Verzik and uh, Five Tick Zarpus or specific BGSs, Maiden Stacks and Skips and stuff. It's 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 always been more so about the method, I think, for some of those bits of content. Um, 
than it is really about the actual speedrun itself. The speedrun is just a byproduct in a lot of these cases. Um, and people always want to innovate new things and new methods. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that innovation is on the client side of things, and then it becomes socket, right? Or it becomes socket maze plugin. Yeah. But it's, I don't know, it's hard. It's I, I, obviously like a lot of the, a lot of the client makers right now, as of like two, three days ago, they said like, we're not going to make this anymore. It's just not going to be available. So I don't know. Changing beyond, again, the community. It's, it's changing it bit by bit, but it's about yeah. everyone following up on it. Interesting. I think that's kind of cool because, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like over the years it's been pretty popularized to cheat and a lot of people do it. But yeah, if the community had a more firm stance on, hey, like, let's, let's keep cheating away from this game and everyone kind of had a little bit more, a better sense of integrity for the game, I think that would be cool. And, and there have always been those plugins, though, that feel like they should be allowed and they're so nice and so convenient. Like, for example, low RAM. A good, good thing it's in the game now. But there's things like that that have always led people to cheat clients. Because, and in that uh, sense, I really think that. Well, first of all, people shouldn't really be using cheat clients now. But I can definitely see a, a feature that people really want. Let's take into consideration uh, adding that plugin that's really nice that a lot of people love earlier, rather than like waiting years and years and years to the point where people start switching to. Uh, cheat clients anyway i know that's kind of different nowadays because we do have a jagex launcher coming out which i believe detects the clients and stuff so i don't think cheat clients going to be as prevalent at all anymore so So. does it have like what um i've heard what like blizzard and other mmo companies mmo game companies do like they actually as you're running the game it can like scan your computer for other stuff that's running on it okay. that seems a little bit scary to me <laughs> yeah, but that would be like the way for them to actually in- enforce yeah I that think, is true right? if do, do, are we getting that with runescape i have no I, idea i don't know what the authenticator really does to be honest is that like something that kind of communication plus prevents the urban yeah, i'm not sure sort of yeah. thing. i think mr orange has uh has, has the knowledges I've always been a fan of those kind of things where it really just does go absolutely intrusive. I'm I'm okay with it personally. Yeah. Like if just you take have over my computer, hide, if I you want to play you, RuneScape anyway. Just I, take I, it I think over. The, I think the scarier part is what they can do if they have that information. Like what if it gets leaked? What if someone else gets yeah, access to it? Issue. It's it's not it's not so much what they're doing initially. It's Knowing Jagex kind of security, yeah, uh, it's, it could be an issue. It's perfect. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> it's gonna be fine. There's one more point from this question that I think is kind of interesting. Um, uh, seeing server info you normally can't. So mm. this made me think a little bit about developing the plugins, actually. So I think what seeing server info you normally can't would be, for example, for a projectile, if a boss shoots a missile at you, you can see, okay, it gives you the number of ticks left that it has to impact. It gives you the target. It gives you the location things like that. So Mm -hmm. right now, the client directly feeds you information like that. Um, And this information is incredibly useful for developing plugins. So the fact that RuneLite right now has this thriving plugin hub, which has, you know, thousands of users contributing stuff open source. uh, I think that's a beautiful thing. I do. Um, But it's also opens the doors to a lot of OP stuff. I don't know if you knew this about me. So I, I mentioned this to Addy yesterday, was that way back in 2018, uh, after TOB release, if not the first, I was one of the first people to start making TOB plugins because at the time there were no rules. It wasn't against the rules at the yeah. time. I was just tinkering Covering around. Covering bases, my... okay. No, I've heard, I mean, well, you <laughs> are, I've, I've heard you've come out with a lot of things. Even the... Um... I mean, I just remember you going for low combat Inferno capes and looking up Hanky's little uh, yes. Inferno thing. And then I think so somebody I've made... I've always it. been a huge yeah. fan of turning things into like a system or yeah, like a machine. or brilliant. And you know, RuneLite, that's what RuneLite is. You can go in there, take all the data and turn it into something that can either be you know useful for um, creating methods or creating a plugin. Um, and yeah, so... <laughs> 
I look back now, it's like, wait, did I, did I by releasing those TLD plugins, <laughs> did, I, did, I, did, I, did I do this? Start the fire? <laughs> you caused yeah, it. <laughs> maybe. No, I mean, I'm sure someone else would have done it if I didn't. But some of those, some of the plugins that are still used right now in, in the TLD plugins, yeah. in like those clients, they still use like my old code, copy paste. It's terrible code. I don't know how to make these things <laughs> for my life. It's so bad code. It's um, great code. I can already imagine it's great code. No, You're just too humble. It's actually bad. <laughs> if it was, but, it was. But to be honest, like you got a point. Plugin Hub, like the fact that it is open source has caused a lot of quality of life. I mean, I enjoy this yes. game thoroughly more than ever before. I just absolutely love the freedom, love all the customizations that we all have. And <laughs> there's just been a lot of things streamlined. And I think because of the pioneering of other people developing plugins and stuff, it's just led to a more fluid game and just better gaming experience in general. So, yeah, I don't know. Is that, is that going to be affected now that they're limiting I think, potential server? I think you're not, I I think think you're not going to be able to get... Go for Sorry, it. Go. No, you. <laughs> I, I, I think that... Well, one is, um, I, I think that the what we t talked about yesterday was like they are going to not just allow... Anything, even if you add like to your rune light, I do not want NPC indicators to be this thick. They're too thick. I want to make them thinner. Mm -hmm. Oops, your rune light is now different. You are banned. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to inhibit like further growth of. Uh, oh, of that sucks. Uh, yeah, the, 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 pl the plugins that we have, maybe that's what we have now. Uh, I don't know if you can actually do development work. So Adam uh, from rules. Rune Light can potentially do like add on new things is because he's kind of part of the rune light team right yeah but normal people that aren't really associated can't anymore unless also they get i mean you can yeah, we'll but you can be, like write they'll probably thing, be you can white make... devs right they'll Maybe, they'll whitelist yeah. certain players or people's oh, work have to. Or some stuff. Cool. otherwise there'll be no progress my, you my, can my... make most of a or a plugin I almost said script. Are we botting here? Or um, <laughs> plug? You can make most of a plugin without looking at the game, but you want to test it as well, right? And yeah. if you don't test it, I mean, how are you going? How, how do you test it without? It's going to be unofficial, yeah. right? Yeah. While you're doing it, you can't like upload it to RuneLight, be it an official thing. Oh wait, it's broken. Gotta 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 cycle it back through. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. The way I see it currently is that most of the plugins that exist right now aren't useful. And the ones that we did talk about, things like NPC indicators or tile markers, these are very much like, if, if you considered like RuneScape brand new, no plugins at all, what are the first plugins people would make? It would probably be those, right? They're kind of, they're kind of like the most obvious ones to go for, and they're also the most useful ones because of that. And I think there's a set of plugins that fall under this category that we do have right now, which actually bring a lot of quality of life to the game. In fact, the most quality of life. And then everything else is things that players crutch on, that they don't require. That's more or less how I see the entire plugin scene. But because we have this baseline to work with, and they're so versatile, like, it, like um, a tile marker can be used in the Inferno, it can be used in Chambers, it can be used in Top, it can be used for skilling. It can be, it can used, be used everywhere. Label, be do not because... forget your potions. Do it can not be used to edit. Put your yeah. Gear. Yeah. <laughs> do, not be, do not it step on the bad tile. <laughs> yeah. And, and we have this set of plugins that are in this position that are all base plugins, I guess we should say. Something like that. And they're the useful ones. And I think that the progress for clients right now should be to give players customizability over those plugins. So talking about the NPC indicators on the on the, uh, the tile markers around them, allowing players to change the color more frequently, the the shading, the opacity, the the the, the, the distance of it, all giving options to these base plugins, the ones that are actually fundamentally very useful, mm -hmm. and then letting the, the letting the development for the other ones die off is completely fine. Because at the end of the day, good players don't need those ones. They just need the base ones. And a bit of customization is already asking for. Yeah. So that's more so what I think is important, is not to necessarily develop new stuff, but to think what those plugins are and give customizability. And that'll keep people happy. That will cover all that bases. Point now? That, yeah, I think that so. we have all of those plugins? Like, okay, we just cut rune light. This is the rune light that we have going forward, and these are the plugins. Um... I think I think in this two or so two two to three years of like big plugin development, if there were more plugins that fit that bill, we would know about them. Yeah, probably. And that I reckon there's like ten of them, right? Maybe ten that actually stand out as like, oh my goodness, this is huge for my gameplay. This makes it feel good, look good, helps me click correctly. And the rest are like, depending on who you are and how you play, what content you do, 
there's a couple that help, but they're not like fundamental. So trying to categorize plugins anyway, and then focusing on the base ones is what it comes down to. Interesting. All right. Friend Zones has some topics. Uh, and let me just read all of them out, and then we can just kind of go into whatever is relevant. What is something you have yet to see implemented in game that you think could be a real challenge for people? So I'm assuming PBM uh, mechanics. Um, he also asks, favorite and least favorite mechanics in game. What are some hobbies of yours people might not know about? And what's the most recent challenge you've had to overcome? Wow. There, that's a very diverse question. Can we? What was the first part of that? I guess we can go through bit by bit. Yeah, something yeah. to be implemented in game that could be a real okay. challenge. Yep. I'll actually just mm. link it to you guys real quick. Yeah. Um, I I am in a bit of a weird position because this is probably another whole topic to cover. But I went to raid uh, raids test play test raids three at the leak, end of last week. Leak, 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 leak. Uh, <laughs> and and while I can talk about the experience, and I know there was more questions about this, I can't give any details. And I know there are mechanics that have not been explored in depth in the current game that are going to be there. And I can't talk about them. So no. the good news is that the, the development team is very aware of things that could make good mechanics, and they are interested in adding new stuff. We are getting new stuff. It's one of the best parts about the raid being developed. Um, but I don't want... And, and to some extent, what I want falls in line with that. So I'm going to kind of skip over and simply say that we're going to get some of it, but I'm not going to tell you anything about it or what I want because it's the same thing. Okay. <clears throat> exact. Do you have anything? Inferno challenge mode. I'm sure you talked Ooh. about this last time, right? <laughs> but give now, please. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I mean, so this question is like, could it be something that could be a real challenge? Is yeah. this like implying that all of the stuff is already figured out? Yeah, and... maybe. Or what? what What I think, so when I see this question, I'll just bring up an example of mine. I love God Wars flicking. I love yes. after you've killed Sarah Doman and then you're doing the, the, the two tick rigor flick with three five tick minions attacking and you try to preserve as much prayer as possible now you are still somewhat draining prayer points unless you're super accurate and you're like going crazy but what i would find incredibly fun and incredibly challenging in uh, raids three is a room where you have limited prayer so you can't drink prayer pots or maybe it's an invocation or something like you can't drink oh, anything and you're capped at a certain amount of prayer points and you have this room that's going to go on for two minutes so you have to really conserve you have to uh make sure that you're doing like one tick flicks for the most part but you have to do enough dps where you have to also include those rigor flicks or those piety flicks hmm. and I think that could be something that's very challenging, but also extremely addicting because you just have that limited amount of prayer points where you just got to time everything precisely. I think that could be a, a super tough thing, but also really fun. Yeah, I like that. And the idea of like not just the three protection prayers, but, you know, like you said with Rigor, what if there was other sets, like a separate prayer book oh, for the no. raid or something? Oh, yeah. Addy's oh. over there like, I can neither confirm nor deny. Addy's like, damn it! Bye. Bye. I would, I would love to see an overhead prayer that gives damage. In other words, something that Ooh. you can flick on in addition with rigor, but you'd have to off ticket with the NPC or fighting. Smite for PVM. Smite, smite for Satetsu if you remember this. Oh right. my god! There was this big meme when we were doing raids three within the the tree TODs, and it was like raids because hard we, mode because, TOD. because we were doing hard mode, we thought they would add some really crazy mechanics. And at some point, I was like, "What if you just smite Satetsu? What if smiting gives you every like, time we put on? smite on?" Every time. Warhammer specs with it. <laughs> and it, it became this thing where like if you weren't smiting you were trolling for that week and it's just like it's so uncanny because you have this unreal confirmation bias and you want it to be a thing and yeah. it would make such a good mechanic 15% accuracy increase for smite 30% damage taken 15% damage increase for retribution 30% damage taken would be sick, right? Yeah. And you can't you, you can't introduce that into the main game, but you could have that in a raid. You could have that in a mini game or something. That's true. And it just means that if you're on tick with a major, okay, time to get up. You lose one tick, and then you gain thirty percent or twenty percent increased damage. Whatever. It's just I don't know. Overhead, yeah. very cool right. if you could make it work. 
Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is Smite's going to work in Raids 3. You just leave. No, it. no, 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 no. Yes! We got him, boys. We got him. Oh, my we God. We got him. All right, what about this? Favorite and least favorite mechanics already in the game. Do you have any Ooh. that you just absolutely hate that are in the game that's just pretty much a part of RuneScape? Or do you have any that you just absolutely love? The movement system in this game can possibly that's, that's both one. be a favorite as well as a least favorite mm. favorite because you can i mean it's it's like a chessboard you can plan out these crazy methods g challenge m is a master at this um you've seen his god wars method where he's just like run around the place and like somehow you're running straight through the guy and nothing's hitting you so i love seeing that kind of thing but it's also completely dumb like <laughs> How, why can you run diagonally through the bandos and he just doesn't see you ever? <laughs> yeah. It makes no uh, sense from a game game wise, but I love seeing what you can do with it. That would be my answer to both. I guess that's not. I I don't think that's how the answer, the question was meant. But the movement yeah. system is something else. I think you could follow yeah. this. I think you could follow this by saying the tick system, in general, because. Limiting players to, to set actions per tick means that you can't ever play faster than that to gain an advantage. You can only play within it. But at the same time, it means that it's much more of a rhythm game and that can lead to some really interesting things itself. Yeah. But um, a lot of other games, they just have faster tick rates. You can just, you know, you can move in between. There's no, there's no tiles. You just yeah. move it's very good. specifically. Yeah. And that, and that means you can have much more interesting mechanics for dodging or really specific positioning and micro movements. Whereas in this game, you have to move a tile or two tiles or not at all, but nothing in between. Mm -hmm. So I, both those things, both the movement and, and the um, thing I just forgot, they both do the same thing, I think, right? Yeah. As for actual like singular mechanics, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure. I don't think I really dislike any particular mechanic. One, one big gripe I have is something that I, I like to call... Um, oh, I've blanked again it's like this frustration mechanic this this it's just annoyance mechanics is the term i use hmm. which is which i define as anything that is putting constant pressure on you and doesn't allow you time to breathe and in most cases it's trivial so my best example for this is fasani fasani and meleeing so fasani it's not particularly dangerous you have plenty of time to react but a melee keeps you on your toes mm -hmm. and it keeps you on your toes for the entire fight yeah. And it's not challenging to react to, but you have to pay attention to it. So suddenly you have no room to breathe. You just have to constantly pay attention. Yeah. And, and the counter example is if I'm at Ulm, and let's say crystals has just occurred and I dodge crystals, if I pray mage, Ulm probably won't jab me. And if lightning isn't on first row, I can AFK until teleports. I can literally AFK until teleports. You're still interacting with the boss, you're still doing stuff, but there's no annoyance mechanics going on. There's no constant pressure that you have to react to. That's true. And that's And that's... That's the best definition of it I can give, and I don't like those mechanics in particular. See, that's something I was bringing up with Adwam and Corky last week, is w there's a fine line, I think, of enjoyment with static and dynamic, uh, m basically, encounters. So, like, what you were just saying, when things are too dynamic, where if anything could happen at any point, that loses the fun of certain pieces of content. So sometimes you kind of want that consistency and that... Um, staticness, I guess, in mm -hmm. a boss. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, Hallowed Sepulchre. I mean, I, I think of Hallowed Sepulchre because I've been doing it recently. And yeah, exactly. like everything's pretty static. Like if you get, it's it's way more enjoyable to do Sepulchre when you know each room is starting static. But if they just removed entirely the idea of static nature and you have random flames going at random times and you always have to be constantly paying attention to every single thing, that would become a frustration really quickly, I think. So oh, I, sure. I think yeah. I think the key here is burst intensity. So the idea it, it, sepulchre fits very well because when you approach a puzzle, you have to identify the right timing. You have to pay attention to the flames and your movement, and that's burst intensity. You have to really focus for that. And as soon as you get past it, you might have a window of twenty, thirty tiles that you just know you can click and you're fine. Yeah, and that's the point where you can chill. And it's this quick activation that you have to, to work through and then this process of, oh, I can chill for a bit. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. It means also you can because focus. Because you're grinding. Sorry, sorry, you go. 
No, I, I, it's 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 this idea of a lot of the time you play old school on the side. It's never the main focus. Now, I, <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. the I like the idea if you're doing a really big bit of content or if you're doing that big boss fight, you should pay that ten minutes of attention to it. So, like, if you're at Ulm, if you're at Verzik, you can't really take your eyes off it, and that's okay because you're really interacting uh-huh. with the boss. But if I'm just like skilling, or if I'm running through a demi boss, or if I'm doing something that isn't quite, it doesn't, re- it shouldn't really warrant my full attention. I can make gains on the side. It, it turns it into more like an idle clicker in a way, but with yeah, less. Yeah, you're doing idle. it for hours and hours. That was right. that was what I was going to say. It's, yeah, it's this repeat content you can keep coming back to, and having that intermission between burst bits of attention is really good. So self self on the side, I can I can I can pay my attention to a TV series I'm watching, but when I get to an obstacle, it's three seconds of calculate, go, calculate, good, and then back to the TV series. I don't lose more than two seconds of my time. And it keeps it going for such a long time that you can get through long grinds. That's what makes the game so good. Yeah, everything is is on that level. Got to keep piping your mouth in bonus <laughs> chat while doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to just bring up real quickly. Uh, I personally love Sepulcher, and I kind of related a little bit to Inferno, where Sepulcher would be really fun if you didn't have the first three floors but it was like an extension of like more challenging things it's same thing with inferno i i've heard people offer suggestions to have an inferno start like as soon as you've completed a cave you can ask duradel or whoever you get the task by like hey can i start at wave 35 like let's just start it but it won't count yeah. toward any time it'll just be like a more fun who knows how it would be balanced but there's something like that that sounds really fun and i just want to bring this up real quick because i think it would be fucking fantastic is a new mini game that's movement based, so kind of like Sepulcher. But I don't know if you guys have ever played Geometry Dash. Um, it's this oh my god, phone game. Geometry Dash it? and RuneScape. Geom- it's basically there's ideas of Geometry Dash. First of all, that was one of the most addicting and popular games on the App Store for so long. Geometry Dash. It was this rhythm based game. Uh, there's a song playing, and you're this little cube that has to go through this 2D level. And um, it's exactly static every single time. And whenever you mess up, you get sent back to the beginning, instantaneously restarting again. So I would personally love to see, and I've brought this up multiple times. So some people listening to this are absolutely sick of me bringing this up. But um, <laughs> I haven't heard it. That's good. This this that's idea fun. of this new yeah. movement mini game that's way more challenging than Sepulchre. So there would be like five levels. Just five different courses that are exactly static every single time. It's an instance, so you go in, it's only you. And every time you mess up, you're instantly sent to the back and you instantly start again. I'm talking like the tick you die, the tick you're sent back and you're running again. Um, And it would be like a two-minute course where you just have to memorize it, basically. Now, there could be a little bit of dynamicness to it where there's like yellows and blues and stuff, potentially. Um, But I really just want to see some super, super high level fast paced uh levels where it's it takes a long time to get good at but then as soon as you have it down it's just this addictive rush of like mm. running through these and who knows what the rewards would be or xp rates or anything like that i just find that would be so fun because i've been experiencing sepulcher tons of fun but i need i think we need something more challenging that's movement based so there's some huge potential here for some really really interesting movement mechanics i mean you can consider things let me let me draw us the draw, draw a scenario here you're on the final part of sepulchre the final straight mm-hmm. the most complex one that most people would assume now imagine this continues forever and the more time you stay on this as, lo- as long as you're gaining ground you're gaining xp and it's always it's always a different auto-generated area that comes into contact with you so it's always new see and i you get have to worried just, about that i get you know, worried about that too that being, dynamic Hmm. So you want, you actually do want it to be set piece. I want it to be you a want, set. You want it to be learnable. I want it to be a set course. And the coolest part about this uh, is I think there's so much variety. Like there's so many obstacles. I'm thinking like five levels to start out with that are each around two minutes long, and they are just intense. I mean, you have t- two minutes of absolute focus. But the cool side that some people could argue is unfair is that yeah once you've mastered it you've mastered it i mean you are just zipping through them that's that was the fun about geometry dash is you are struggling so hard for so long because it's so hard but then as soon as you've beaten the level you're like okay i can kind of do this and you'll still mess up here and there but you start mastering it and that's like where the addiction starts setting in where and then you have like five different levels where you're 
You this know. just sounds like you want floor six and seven of Sepulchre. I do, but I want it to That's always <laughs> be that. I don't want any like early levels. I just want you to go right. into this intense, 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 and you can just stop after the level's done. Like the, oh. the largest issue would ultimately ultimately be balancing. Yeah. How do no, you balance sure. the XP if it's that strong? Or what if it's not even XP based? Right. But what if it's only reward based? So it's a mm -hmm. mini game that's just centered on rewards. And so you just do a bunch of levels, you do a bunch of maps. And so it would never be, a, it's not really a skiller's paradise, but now it's kind of like, a, I don't know, you could just offer different monetary rewards or resources it doesn't, or something. It doesn't have to be necessarily classed as skilling or PVM. It can simply be an activity. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things in the game are classed under that, but consider pest control. It's just a mini game. You're doing PVM, but you're not really, you're not trying to gain a combat XP. You're not trying to gain skilling XP. There's just rewards at the end of it. Replace the context of a PVM thing with a skilling thing that you don't gain XP from. That's what it is, right? Yeah. Hmm. Now, it's interesting. Now, Friend Zones has a couple more questions, but I want to bring up something before I forget it. No Monkey, if you guys have heard of him, he's a very yeah, talented Yeah, been watching. Yeah, he's, he's a king. He made a video recently talking about how Raids 3 needs to be extremely rewarding. And, um, you know, he I don't know if he has any involvement in Raids 3, if he was, like, there testing anything. So I'm, I'm assuming he's kind of not in the know of what's actually going to be happening. But he would really love a, uh, an Enrage mechanic where you kind of yeah. just exponentially so, gain so his, rewards oh. with risk. His, his, his video on this was very good. Recommend yeah. to check it out. For sure. It, it really did that's sound... that's been one of... Yeah, no, no, sorry, go for it. Exact. That that's been one of like the most successful mechanics in our dare I say the most successful mechanics in RS three. We'll have to bleep that, that out, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you brought that over to OSRS bosses, there's potential for that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just wonder like, should raids three be the most rewarding content? And then I wanna also just bring up another point. Should Inferno have been more rewarding and given you resources or something? The Did largest... you want clues from Inferno? Dude, I was you actually... Of course you do. You want you clues from Inferno? There was, there was Your a... agenda? There was actually a point in time where I was like, dude, if you could complete an Inferno and get a guaranteed elite clue every time, or even a master clue, like it's the one piece of content that actually just straight up gives one a master, hour. like I would start learning that shit. Like, one hour in the tunnel for a master clue. You'd do yeah. It. Oh my god. Okay. That'd be cool. Wait, uh, is that how is the rate for that compared to like Seracnus? Seracnus would actually hour? still be better unless I was pulling like yeah. sub fifties every That's... time. But, yeah. All right, better get, get get on it then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make this happen. Addy, coaching coaching lessons are opening up, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> the biggest problem with Inferno and fight, well, not not so much fight caves because it's a bit shorter. It's replayability. Most players consider it the one and done, and very few players ever get into that mindset of, actually, I would like to get better at this content. <laughs> and it comes down to incentive. If, yeah. if there's no GP incentive, then why? So, yeah, things like the task of Why, Abby? Yeah. Why have you done yeah. this? I don't know. I just do. <laughs> <laughs> why have you done and 5 things. million Inferno? <laughs> I wish I knew. Please help diagnose me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it... I would love there to be more incentive, but I understand that you can't really you can't really change Inferno as it is. It's just it's a great piece of content. It fits where it is, and it's more about making making sure the lesson is learned. I think for the new bits of content that come out. So things like Tactical Trials, if they want to bring that out, the Blue Inferno, yeah, they have to make it replayable and profitable, which I, I think they mentioned right. They, blue they, they Inferno. This <laughs> Inferno. It's, why are you sounds, blue? <laughs> it sounds like it's it sounds like it's Gauntlet and Corrupted Gauntlet, but in reverse. Right, yeah. so corrupted Wait. is like red, and then it goes to blue. Oh it's, it's, it... No, no, why? <laughs> I don't know. I like it. I think it's a cool idea. I definitely, yeah. ultimately, red replayability. Goblet, blue right? Inferno, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a green Inferno at this point. Just totally change the color. Yes. What are your hobbies? Yeah. So, what are your hobbies that people might not know about? Exact. You go first. Wait, there's stuff to do outside of RuneScape. There is outside. I, I, I've been looking for a month and I haven't found it. Uh, <laughs> so I, someone's going to be very mad if I said that. Uh, but uh, I used to teach martial arts, actually. Um, I had a I started a class when I was in high school. So I, I grew up in um, practicing a Korean style called Tungsudo. And it's always been, you know, really fun, good for exercise, good for self-defense. And I think just like 
it's nice as a kid having that kind of routine thing to do. And um, I ended up teaching for four years a while back. So I don't think I've talked about it too much, but I think it's something that's stayed with me. Um, Maybe that's why I like to make guides and stuff, or I used to on YouTube. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's, that's that's one of my hobbies, I suppose. Would you say you're a natural teacher? Like, you enjoy... Oh no, it it, dra- it drains me to to teach and to I, I mean a lot of people has, have asked me why don't you do more like don't, why don't you stream more? Why don't you make more? It tires me. Like I yeah. get tired in that kind of environment where I'm talking to a lot of people. The class I had at the time was like 30 30 students or something. Um maybe 40 when it was at its at its largest and that just it was two hours, uh, twice a week, and every night after class, I just go home and eat food and crash, <laughs> and yeah, that's the also, next day. Just, that's really physical oh as well, right? Like that's not just mental and and think about what that's people true. are doing, giving advice. It's also physical. So that's true. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more to it. That's true. That's a cool. Ho- I had no idea. That's awesome. Are you are you still doing that? I don't practice that uh, much actively anymore, uh, but I I try and just keep uh, keep sharp on it. Just like every week or something, do a little bit of training on my bag or something. I have this punching bag in my room. We know how that goes. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, you should uh, add, you should send the meme uh, the, I, the I, edit I that, that you made and you can post that <laughs> from uh, from my charity stream. Very good edit yeah, by Addy. I had a lot of fun making that. And a great clip to begin with, of course. Let's see this. There it is. One of the uh, best clips to come out of the charity stream, if I do say so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just showed everybody. Mm-hmm. But for those uh, that are on listening, basically, it's uh, Exact getting KO'd by a punching bag. And he, yeah. <laughs> I think that punching bag cast vengeance is that what i don't know what happened right there but yeah that was crazy a sneaky venge got him good <laughs> yes so what about you Adicon? do you have any uh i am um, that jack of, we don't know about jack of all trades master of none i like to dabble in a lot of things and i'd always it's it's annoying because i tend to get decent and then the rate at which i get better drops off and i get bored So I've tried a lot of things. I've had the privilege to do many things. I used to, not so much these days, and especially COVID kind of stopped a lot of this, but I used to be very good at chess when I was very young. And I still occasionally dabble. Um, But a lot of chess when I was very young. And then after chess kind of came gliding, I used to fly planes. Um, Which was very funny. Wait, you were the pilot? The pilot, yeah. Wow, oh my goodness. And wow. I can I, I can share some stuff a bit later if you want to edit edit it back in, pictures and videos and whatnot. But having the privilege to to go on holidays and, and fly around in different countries, whether it be France, Italy, New Zealand, lots of different places. And of course living in the south of the UK, we have the South Downs, which makes for fantastic lighting. And that was a that was a hobby which lasted for two to three years. And it's still really nice because a lot of the skills, a lot of the interests that carry over from that I still have now. Whether it just be, you know, you might think of just looking at clouds as incredibly mundane, but there's a huge amount you could tell because you have to learn navigation and, and weather patterns and, and all this stuff that comes with it. That's really cool. Um, even after gliding, more recently, I think table tennis kind of took my interest again. I used to play when I was very young again and then kind of didn't. And then around lockdown, it was kind of getting, I'm just very unhealthy and I wanted some more physical stuff. So kind of kind of got back into table tennis. Very cool. Um, Arguably, again, right now, after after moving at the beginning of last or this year, I've had less time to do stuff. Mostly wanted to focus on streaming and sort of bettering myself a bit. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really doing much right now, but I'd like to get back into some of these things. Probably more so the table tennis because it's local. Very cool. But, what uh, yeah. I just got to ask, do you play chess here and there on your phone? I can... <laughs> I can Magnus play. Carlson I is play his alt. <laughs> is his alt. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't want to see the real one. No, because oh, I've, I've been getting into chess like for the past year and a half-ish, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it had nothing to actually do with Queen's Gambit. It only had to do with other people getting into like Queen's Gambit. And then I have never even watched it. had exactly it. the same thing. 
So. It was people getting into it, and yeah. so many people got into it. I was like, yeah. "Fine, I'll play again." <laughs> yeah. and it was it was kind of fun. I, I I probably played for a good two months on and off, just messing around. Yeah, it's... this is going to be this is one of the most interesting things that came out of chess for me. What? And it's that I used to love chess back when it was where uh, back back when it was at a level, and early on before like this explosion of openings came out, mm -hmm. where people didn't really do openings, even in tournaments. You would see them, but you wouldn't see them beyond like five moves. And the, and from five moves in, you would have an open board of which you could like perform on. You could do your thing, and you could play, and you could create something that was never done before. And nowadays, you have games that up until almost the mate happens, it's followed in an order due to an opening. Yeah. And the game plays out, and I really don't like that. And one thing that I found just, again, so fascinating is that Inferno is like chess, specifically speedrunning, because... If you consider an opening to be like a set, set, of, set of moves and reaction to that, the wave spawn is exactly the same. It's as if someone played an opening on you, and now you have to react. And I used to love Inferno a lot more than I do now, because back when I was learning, every wave solve was something that I had never seen before. And it was something where I'd have to adapt to it and figure out, and I loved that process. And nowadays I see a wave spawn, and before I've even begun to think about it, my body is doing whatever it is to solve it. It's, it's, it's like playing the opening back again. And I found the similarity just uncanny and frustrating <laughs> at the same time. But really cool, really, really interesting. It's one of the reasons where, as much as I love Inferno, I don't love that aspect of it. And I wish that, not, not so much that I could take it back, but it was some more randomness to how, it's, how it functioned in the spawn. And then this magic could come back a bit. So, so if, if NPCs were offset by like one or two tiles... That would be the difference, I think. Would that be a frustration, <clears throat> though, if NPCs really could just spawn yeah. kind of anywhere? Wouldn't that be like but, more tilting than anything? It, pro it probably would be. Yeah, it probably would be. Jad spawns on top of you. It, <laughs> it would open up the, the realms of creativity a bit more. That's there would be true. no like set souls, but it would be certainly more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, may, may, and maybe not in a good way. But I think that if you take the set tiles that things spawn in and then offset it by one or two tiles where they can spawn randomly instead of like always in the same spot, now it might be much better. But so. would that cause runs to be like, oh, well, I got fucked over by RNG. Time to like reset because this thing spawned off. Like There's already so much RNG. I'm not sure if you could consider that to be much more. By but certainly way, it's, it's a bit, yeah. I want to ask uh, both of you, I guess, real quickly, because again, stepping back to the last cast, because we did talk about a lot of Inferno stuff. Um, mm -hmm. What what are your guys' thoughts on a, an Inferno where all the monsters max hit you if you miss a flick, <laughs> but, 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 okay, he, actually, this is what we kind of came to the conclusion of. It was too aggressive to be that, but it was something where monsters guarantee hit you at least half their max hit and up to their max hit but you also hit always at least half of your max hit and up to <laughs> that's kind of satisfying so i was wondering like would that be uh, clearly i mean you'd get inferno runs w way faster and there would just have to be some different mode for it or something like that but that sounds really satisfying in a way to just always guarantee at least max or half of your max hit but it's very punishing as well because everything's hitting you, especially like bats. A berserk mode, Inferno. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. I like that. Yes, yeah, I think it, it'd be fun. I don't know if I'd want it as like an official mode, more so than just something to mess around with. But I yeah, think it'd be fun. It's it's tough because the more modes you come out with, it's like okay, what's the most fun? Like, what's the official one that we're competing with? Because like you don't want to, I don't know, spread out too much. I feel like we have a. I feel like that kind of reminds me of uh, game modes that have come out. Like, there's so many game modes now, and I'm pretty sure there's not going to be an end to it in the next like four years. There's going to be like three more Iron Man modes, <laughs> like Mithril Man <laughs> mode, and stuff like that. Um, it's Mithril, yeah. Who knows? Interesting. Okay. Um, what's the most recent challenge you've had to overcome? I guess mainly focused on IRL, but I guess in game can also be a thing. Do you want me to take this one first, Eddie? Please, yeah. Uh, recent challenge, ongoing challenge, actually. Uh, learning Spanish. Ooh. I've been struggling a lot. So right now, I, I, I've started in January, actually. And I feel like I'm at the point where... Have you heard of this curve uh, while you're learning stuff? Like, you start... As you learn more, you feel like you know less. 
Yeah. I feel like I'm at the point where I know the least right now. <laughs> My knowledge is just going like I, I'm learning more vocabulary and stuff, and it's just like I, I, I'm getting to realize how much I don't know. Um, is it a is it a language like English where it's just all over the place, or is it very much set structure? It's very much set structure. At it's least much more set. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not Wait. many. Uh, well, I I know Spanish uh, somewhat. Hablas español? Yeah. Oh. But oh, no. just barely because over <laughs> okay. the past over the past like seven years I just haven't spoken it at all and so it's really rusty. You but, can get that back easily though. Yeah, and that's that's all it really comes down to is just immersion because you can learn a ton, of course, uh just like studying. But man, as soon as you get actually forced into a situation where you have to speak and you have to understand people, like that's when it starts drilling into you because it's more uh I don't know if this is really like a scientific way to look at it, but it's kind of like if you look at evolution, like I feel like when you're forced to do things, like it's survival, yeah. sort of. It's like it it's ingrained. There's it's still more. actually that. It's, it's like a, a fight or flight thing exactly. when I have to <laughs> use the language. It, it's worse when you do have the option to like start speaking in English again. I feel yeah. like no, it's, it's almost so easy not, to just. I know it, that's what you just not, have to go full immersion. You have to. It's not just the immersion; it's also cutting out the other sources of language. So you have to. <laughs> wow, that's so funny. Yeah, um, it's cool though learning a language. <laughs> I think it's really satisfying and fulfilling. It feels really productive. I don't know. When I was learning Spanish, it just felt really good. And I tried to learn French yeah. in high school. I didn't actually try. I just was a total slacker. But French is a language I would absolutely love to learn one day, although I'm pretty lazy when it comes right now. But I could still see myself, you know, in my 30s or something, like, trying to learn French. That'd be cool. Yeah. I honestly think I'll spend the rest of my life at least working on one one language of some sort or, like, multi different languages because... It just brings so much value with the understanding of um, of different people, and it, it gives you the uh, I don't know what we'd say the foothold to start understanding other other cultures too. Yeah, so yeah. it's really nice. It's been very rewarding. Yeah, I'm still learning English. I'm getting there. <laughs> Me too. <Same. laughs> I realized from podcasting, I'm like, my English kind of sucks. <laughs> like I'm using the same stupid words. You take the transcript, you put it in Microsoft Word, every word is red underlined. Where's my grammar? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Adicon, most recent challenge you've had to overcome? Uh, I would have to say probably moving, like properly moving to live on my own in the last, like since the beginning of this year and late last year. I've lived in other places. Dude, congratulations. Alone. Yeah, it, it's it's Sorry. really nice. Um, I've lived in other places before, whether it be sort of semi alone, but usually with I, I had I lived in China for a time, a couple of months, but that was with other people doing work or with friends or whatnot. So it's never been quite fully alone, and that process of coming to understand that both that freedom and also that responsibility has been quite interesting. I mean, obviously that's just natural, but mm -hmm. it's been fun to explore and also. To sort of understand yourself a bit more and also this idea of like just improving your quality of life because a lot of the time when you live with other people it's it's impacted by them and for them and when you live for yourself you can really focus on what you want and craft your environment to suit that so i've been doing that um, just so in cool. little just in little ways and it's something that you can please yourself and you can just not have to worry about anything and it's it's super liberating super nice an example is just, it sounds ridiculous, but even just one small example is I'll buy a pineapple every week mm -hmm. just for myself. And it's, and it's great because it's the most cost effective fruit on the market. Less than a pound for a pineapple. It's a decoration for seven days and then it's food for two. And it's just that little thing that like just gives me a little bit of happiness on that week. Just that one thing. <laughs> I know pineapple. it's so mundane. It's so mundane and it's so silly, but it's just no, one of those little so things. that's so sweet. Yeah, yeah. and it's I just it's it that. is very it is very sweet, and it's <laughs> it's just one of those little things. And I like, can't believe you. I, I, and oh my God. <laughs> and you can just craft your environment in that way to suit yourself. And I love doing that, and it's been super fun. So. Yeah. I don't know. Buy a pineapple, people. So it's econo <laughs> economical. And the weekly pineapple. Yeah. No, but you got a good point. Fantastic. Living on your own, like I haven't lived on my own in, I actually pretty much forever. I have never lived exactly on my own. I've always had somewhat mm. of a roommate. Now it almost feels as though I'm living alone occasionally when we're on like off hours. Like I've been living with my older yeah. brother for like three and a half years 
And when I switch to the night schedule, I mean, I'm asleep when he's at work or, you know, <laughs> whenever. And then uh, he's, he's asleep when I'm streaming and up and stuff. So it almost feels as though I'm alone. But it, there really is something beautiful about kind of discovering what you truly enjoy in life and kind of figuring out yourself and getting yourself a routine. And yeah, that's nice. I think it's also kind of essential to figure that out before you get into a relationship. It doesn't have to be essential, I guess, because you'll figure out things regardless. But really knowing yourself and really knowing what you want in life really helps before, I don't know, starting to live with somebody else romantically. You heard it here first, chat. Relationship advice from the casting couch. <laughs> right here. Casting couch. <laughs> we oh, listen to anyone listening we are now your relationship experts we will not know mm-hmm. jesus yes um okay. do the runescape community uh, 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 just, just, just <laughs> cut <laughs> cut uh, all right listen second has some topics uh, <laughs> oh gosh you went from that to second yes Second. All right. Go on, exact, what do you have? For he's, us? he's asking exact first thoughts on meeting Adam and Billy Adam and at Billy. Runefest. Uh, so I'm Addy sorry. and I were actually both there um, yes. that year, 2019, last Runefest. I believe we were both at the Weatherspoons too, where mm-hmm. uh, Billy uh, was about to get in a fight with some dudes. Do you remember more about this? I... You did the <laughs> right thing and tried to to step in between to. Uh... Let Billy chill a little bit. I simply wanted to watch the chaos. <laughs> but um, no, you did the right thing, for sure. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Um, and meeting Adam. Oh, my goodness. Just just wonderful guy. Uh, his He just smiles, and everyone is happy. Just a beacon of light. Love it. That yes. giant bald head. <laughs> Why? <did> you... <laughs> I'm sorry. You could have stopped the <laughs> sentence like halfway through and it would have been fine. And yes, I didn't. <laughs> oh, no. Addy, do you see Neen in your nightmares? And my dreams occasionally. We'll just leave that up to interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Favorite current streamers to watch? These two here. Uh, Mr. Addy. And you, Sadie? Much love. For, for me, there is a fella called Arcunos, A-R-C-U-N-O-S. And he's been streaming for two months now, just over two months. Hasn't He played very, very much back in the day. Fresh account, main account. And he's doing this Road to Max series. Just super genuine, super fun to watch, very fun. Um, and he's at this point where he's beginning now to get into things like Zora and a bit of God Wars to make money. And... Watching that, I love watching this. My favorite thing in streamers in general is both passion and to be genuine about what you're doing and just enjoy it. It shines through no matter what you do anywhere, but especially streaming. And he's got all of that. So he's my favorite streamer to watch every morning I wake up. I'll try and find his stream. If he's not on it, I'll cry myself back to sleep for a few hours. <laughs> no. So, and he's by far the most interesting and, and best stream to watch right now. His growth has been tremendous as well, and he's going to do very well. So do check out Arcunos. That's cool. He's, nice. he's, he's my pick right now. I got to give uh, a couple shout outs. First of all, I got to give a shout out to Adicon. Whenever, yes. whenever you are in the Inferno <laughs> speedrunning, I'm there. Like, I just, What is going if on? If I'm on just, Twitch and you're mm-hmm. live doing the Inferno, I'm there. Like, it's just the best content. It's, it's just the best. Like, nothing else is going to be more entertaining than that, in my opinion. And second, uh, I really like Qneeks. I've been really enjoying Qneeks streams. He's a uh, semi-new creator, although he's been on Twitch for years. He's just been somewhat consistent the past two years. And uh, he's just been playing in Iron Man. He he had his little phase of going through hardcore Iron Man and dying and dying. But now he's been a Grey Helm, and he's been learning chambers. Like, he's been doing solo chambers. And it's so cool, again, to see that growth of improvement in the game. And uh, I also got to give a shout out to Zoe Pancakes because it's just crazy to see how far she's come. I mean, she's completed the Inferno and now she's done six Jad challenge. And I felt as though a year ago she was at the point of, I don't know, she was just like, not like no disrespect, but she was much worse a year ago. And now she's seen it. I, I don't know. I just, I've seen crazy improvement from her just gameplay wise and entertainment wise. She's just been 
overall a great streamer that's wanting to improve at the game and i think that's awesome for both of them kunix and zoe mm-hmm. i think it's amazing the uh, diversity that we have in the runescape twitch section too it's just whatever whatever you want to watch whatever kind of a personality whatever kind of gameplay you want to watch we have it if you want to ha- watch like just the in- the most insane clicks and skill like if you call it mechanical skill you know travis dex these guys addy half the time sometimes i don't know <laughs> um and then i don't know if you want to just watch music you can go uh, watch music listen to to the best tunes of a stream um what's his name uh Bjorn? Is it Bjorn? Yeah, Bjorn. Bjorn. Yeah. Um, the best radio listen to some of the tunes that Puggin puts on. Oh my goodness. Um, least least of his talents for that man. Um, but I just feel like we have everything. You have the big streamers too are just all around great entertainers. You want to laugh and get your ears blown out, go watch Oh The Block. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just feel like we have everything. Um, yeah, we really do. Everyone, everything. There's even the likes of, I mean, I so Ta- Tanner Dino has been streaming like his Ultimate Iron Man progress. There's a guy who streams like 46 via, watch, uh, via accounts or something. There really is everything. It's so cool. Yeah, no, you're right. It is cool. All right. Sec- uh, Sorry, mm-hmm. did you have anything? No, you're good. Nah, it was okay. useless. Continue. Second <laughs> asks Exact, what is your training regiment? Oh my God. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what is this question? Uh, one hour a day at Sand Crabs, getting strength. <laughs> Very good. IRL. You should sand try crabs. it. IRL Sand Why Crabs. Why are you eating up crabs? If you're talking about exercise, I actually don't do that much. Just um, I I, I used to go to the gym when I was in college, but not not anymore. I just do like push ups, pull ups, squats, run yeah. a little bit, um, body weight stuff nowadays, like two or three times a week. Just to stay active, um, I don't really have that many like goals in terms of fitness, other than to feel good and feel like I'm staying active. So, that's... yeah, I think that's a great uh, lifelong, I don't know, aspiration to have is just like keeping yourself healthy. Yeah, so that's cool. Addy, what do you box cancer at RuneFest 2023? That's the Inferno guy, right? Just yeah, say less, honestly. He, he also says he is 185 centimeters and 180 pounds. Why is he okay. using the metric system and then the American units? Wait, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll headbutt his kneecaps, though, if he wants me to. Jesus. Oh, my. <laughs> sure, why not? If we can Check raise... We... Charity stream? Charity stream? <laughs> All right. A cold one asks, if you could each delete one piece of content from the game, what would it be and why? Exactly. We'll, we'll get you first. Myself. You already did that. I delete. I, oh no! I already <laughs> did. All right. Delete all Iron Man. Uh... Delete all red helmets. Get rid of yes. them all. If I can't have it, yes. no one can. I second. Honestly, the no, no. I mean, I, I think Iron Man uh, mode brings so much to. Um... Cool. What's that? Cool. Oh. Iron Man are terrible. Cool. No, you. <laughs> no, you, you at you, you own, you own an iron tree. You at Shrikon? No, no, no. Nope. I, yes. yes. I, I gave it away. Yes, you gave it away. I gave it away. I have, I have, I have a tree away. I have a protege who I gave the account to to de-iron to be a main account, so he could not oh, play no. his iron and instead play the main. Oh my god! By the way, I, mean, I gotta say the inception of iron official iron man game modes really did change the game forever in positive yes. and negative ways i will yeah. fully admit there are some negatives to it first of all me being an iron man for the past like six years on this account alone five years i mean i have absolutely loved it i've been the most addicted to this game i could ever even imagine being playing in iron man and i'm pretty sure exact could probably agree i mean you were literally just saying that that your hardcore your pure hardcore was just like it was addicting it was yeah. addicting it's and fun. It's, well yeah legitimately good fun yeah to you know each item that you get the uniqueness of it the the rng when you get trolled or when you get when you go dry and finally get the item yeah. um very 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 nice when you get spooned feels very nice um now you don't have that 
Yeah, and I, I will say, so there are a lot of benefits to Iron Man, but I have also seen, like, what if the game never had these other modes where every single person's a main account? I feel like there's a lot of beauty in that, too. Now, it's hard to weigh what would have been the better business decision for Jagex. I'm pretty sure it would have been Iron Man 100%. Iron Man, for sure. But, yeah, for sure. But I will say, for a player's, like... Well, first of all, the wilderness probably wouldn't have died because there would have always been an incentive for the other player to fight back because then they're actually receiving you know, uh, items. Because like right now in Iron Man, yeah, like they've come out with some updates where you get keys and you can destroy them or you can pass them on to your main. But for players that exclusively play Iron Man, there's still like zero incentive to ever fight back. And Wait, did he just say that Iron Man mode destroyed PKing? Yes, Iron Man mode. Dis- you, yes, Iron I don't Man. Think the, it changed that much. The idea of Iron Man, I believe, was a big cause of uh, PK mm. uh, decline. Basically, that is so ironic because it came. One of the big inspirations of it was from uh, Bodhi's One Man mm. Army, where the whole goal was to PK. Right? My, yeah. That is so ironic. That is very ironic. It is so interesting. This is, there's a, this is a statistic that about 25% of active accounts are Iron Man. Pretty much dead on 25%. And then how many mains are bots? Because I there's very <laughs> 20, few 20, bots another Iron Man. 25% again, I'd assume? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it's it's uh, crazy it's to see a, how big it's, it's. It's a very large chunk of the playbase. Yeah. Whether, whether it be a minority or not, it's a very large chunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to say because there is a, a small part of me that kind of well this kind of goes along with it i really wish the ge had never come out either because like in my perfect world it would be no iron man mode no ge back to like the good old days where everyone's a main account we're all having to <laughs> trade on third party sides stuff like i don't know there's something kind of cool about that but i understand there's a lot of nuance and a lot of problems with that as well that i tend to brush under the rug so but yeah i think iron man was a there's pros and cons to it and it led to a lot of division in the PK community and just in... I mean, there's a lot of hostility. I mean, not a lot of hostility, but there are still players that just, like, hate Iron Man. And now there's Iron Man that hate mains, and it's just like, damn. <laughs> we all play the same game. The thing... I'll, I'll, let me get... I'll, I'll get it out of the way so it's gone. The reason I like Iron Man and hate Iron Man is actually the same. It's that every item in the game now becomes a goal. Whereas on main account, a lot of these things are purchasable unless they're untradeable. Mm-hmm. And because this is fantastic for a lot of the more casual players because now they have way more things to go for and they can balance that. And the terrible part is leading through mid to late game, especially for more serious or players who have a lot more time to put in, now they have to go and do content they don't necessarily want to do to get stuff they might even go try on. And I, there is this feeling, I know that people always say it's like, you're not actually forced to do that content. But let's be real, you are kind of forced to do that content. Yeah. And that's the worst part about Iron Man. And, the, and again, the best part. But it's yeah. scary to think that if, if you are willing to put that time in, you're, you're going to go on that one bit of content. You're going to go 5x rate. Better be prepared. Yeah, and I think... Related to this... Yeah, go, go for it. No, you, you finish. It's kind of it's kind of a tangent. Okay, so. I was just going to briefly finish. say the collection log has really kind of narrowed that gap of Iron Man and main because yeah. there have been a lot of people going for collection log stuff. And I really do think, I mean, if there had never been Iron Man mode, collection log alone kind of fills that it's Iron that Man thing. mode sort yeah. of thing. And it's exactly that same thing with collection log that gets me. It gives you so many goals to go for, which is fantastic, but... There are too many things that players don't want to do that they feel obligated to do, and it burns them out or makes them not happy about the game. And the, the, the solution is to only go for the stuff you want to do, but not many people actually think like that. They're going to be like, I really need that item. I have to get this for the log. I have to do this. Mm-hmm. It's a bit Must of a mindset every shift. Iron Man grab a Dragon Warhammer? Mm, is it really necessary? So this is related to the question, the original question. Delete a piece of content? The uh, the Dragon Warhammer itself, yeah. or the Dragon Warhammer grind for irons. Just delete Shaman. Delete Zaya. No. Delete. Z- <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we like Chambers. If I Chambers. No, but seriously, once you, you spend all this effort grinding fifteen million shamans to get this weapon, and then you use it, and it just misses. The whole experience <laughs> of using a Warhammer <laughs> is complete frustration and RNG. Why do you do this to yourself? Listen, Can we just delete it? Adikon brought up the point of the whole smite mechanic. Dude, I have been saying this. So 
back before Theater of Blood was ever released, they were proposing a prayer called Judgment. Now, they had their own ideas for Judgment. I thought the perfect prayer for Judgment on the standard prayer book is a level 85 prayer that increases your accuracy by 50% with no strength and no anything else. Or even... 100% accuracy. Like, I would literally be down for a prayer that's just a non-overhead, just something like piety that can't be used. You know, you can't use piety with it, but you could use it alone. And it's just an accuracy prayer for all styles. It's just you hold on judgment for when you want to spec your Warhammer for better make it, consistency. Make it reduce damage by 25% and accuracy is guaranteed or something. You would never yeah, ever use it offensively, like yeah. but it's still important to put it on. Exactly. Sure. I mean, I vote yes immediately. I love those kind of prayers that just have that little niche. Like, hey, if you want to make sure this spec lands, pray this, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of cool, but yeah. Um, was there anything else you guys want deleted from the game? So yeah, what do you want to delete? Iron Man. <laughs> I want, I don't necessarily want things deleted. I'm, I'm much more often for reforming or changing them. Yeah. But um, if I if, if it was like, on next release, I would just say delete next if it was on the release <laughs> moment. It's it's just I love seeing new things come into the game, but I want them to be original. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to be clones of things from RS3 or other games or anything else, I don't think that anything beyond the name and the style of the boss arena should look the same. I think that the mechanics should be different, the fight should go around differently, stats should be different. Everything should be completely new, basically, and tailored for old school, as opposed to being like completely just. A copy. That's all. Well, so. let me ask. What would you, because I agree. I think next they they had so much potential to make that boss a lot better. Is there anything in specific that you would have loved to have seen that could make next a lot more fun? They should have had trample. Was the first thing to come that comes to mind. Now Do trample's a bit better now. It's not. It's not really trample. And the reason they don't want to do trample is because they think it's a bit of a boring mechanic. It's like too simple. But I don't really think that's a problem. I just think that they need something to combat the idea of red Xing. Mm -hmm. It's such a to have to, to the feeling of like having to right click and then cheese a boss to do it efficiently. I just I can't get over it. I don't like it. I really I really like interacting with the content in a meaningful way that it was designed to be. I don't mm -hmm. like cheesing stuff. It's the same reason I don't like the idea of Chambers Chest. You know the the, the chest that gives you like twenty five slots or something. I actually like the idea of interacting with scavs. I want to do that, but scavs are crap. I want to interact with the rope, but now we have Peanut mechanics. I want all of this stuff patched to be impossible, completely impossible, so that you have to interact with stuff. That's what I like. Some of the stuff like the Phoenix necklace, using the Phoenix necklaces to skip the tightrope in Chambers, is just complete nonsense, though. And it's like yeah. kind of fun to see that, that actually it's, happen. It's super cool. I love the mechanics of it. I just wish it wasn't possible. <laughs> And and that's it's, like it, hurts. it hurts. It hurts. I kind of like it. I'm not gonna lie. I like it when things that are very. I mean, tightrope is not a great mechanic room anyway. You just kill the fucking know, things true. anyway. I really do. Well, part of the reason I like the rope skip so much is because there is a lot of precision to it. You can't just cross it whenever you want. Like, there's a lot of precise timing and a lot of precise clicks as well on your way back. Yeah, which I kind of like. And you know what? People say the same thing and just very weird tangent, but. Uh, over to wilderness bosses, people. I just died pickpocketing uh, an elf. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, I was gonna. Laughs. Yeah, I was. I was gonna say. Um, yeah, I was not paying attention. Uh, no. I was gonna say. So wilderness bosses, people. Is think, this the first time you've died in a, a save? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. This is pro. It's always pickpocketing. I die on save a cast. Uh, like, every time I pickpocket, I at least die once a cast. It's pretty. Oh my god. Just stop looking at your HP for a little bit, and it's just over. Um, but no, like wilderness bosses. They have this mechanic where people are like, oh, wilderness bosses are too easy. You can just cheese them because you can just safe spot them. But, but like, you know, you had to learn the mechanic to cheese them. And I think there is, like, I think of Venonatus, for example. There is a lot of precision to the start of the kill, knowing kind of what's going on. And there's kind of beauty to that because I like uh, the old school charm of just kind of doing things in a weird, quirky way that no other game would really accept. They would patch it or something. I kind of like that. It's just been there for years, and it's just how it is. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Sorry, go. I, I'll just uh, briefly say, if somebody were to play this game blindly, like never look at any guides, holy fuck. I don't know how anybody could ever kill a wilderness boss solo. Just Jilly, Jillyfish, if you know Jillyfish, yeah. has has played a lot of old school guideless and every time she streams it is guideless 
And she still gets stuff done. I mean, I remember when she was doing Vorketh, she figured out that undead, uh, Cr Crumble Undead worked on the spawn. Wow. Some of these things aren't as, are, are indeed obvious or built for it. And it's just about letting players explore that. But no one ever does that these days. But there's, it's really nice to actually see someone try. Yeah. Well, it just, it, it feels as though like there's a sense that the game is solved where it really isn't. Now, there, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of players that pretty much have this game figured out. I mean, I would consider you two. GE Challenge, Port Gazard, like there are Prendy, people like that. I mean, there are people that really have this shit figured out, but there still is always new content that comes out, things to solve, new updates, new patches, things like that that change the game. So none of us knows what we're doing. It's just Wooks. Only Wooks. <laughs> just it's copy the, Wooks. It's, it's, the, it's the spirit of Wooks that's within us all. Yes. Yeah. I would like to take a quick intermission to say that congrats to I'm a Drum for getting his Infernal Cape about 10 seconds ago. What? He's been yeah, on. let's he's go. He's been working on it for so long, and I just saw the DM. He's like, Jizzy. I did it. Wait, did he tweet um, it? I'm not a fan. No, I just did DMs. Oh, wow. I, I, I assume it'll come out. It'll come out in a minute. But Big. I was super happy for him. He's been going for a long time. Let's Always go. like seeing people get the first capes, and yeah. That's such a cool feeling for, for him, I bet. And, he just, and he's maxed as well, so now he gets that Infernal mm -hmm. Max. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Best feeling in the game. First fire, first and foul. Sorry, intermission over. Continue. Okay. Um, you know what? Frey asks, what achievement are you most proud of in RuneScape and in real life? If you guys feel comfortable stating. Well, at least the IRL one, if you guys have anything. I've got a longer answer for this, so I'll go second if that's okay. Okay. Uh, Sure. Yeah, for RuneScape... What was the question proudest proudest achievement proudest achievement basically hmm i would say the 40 combat inferno yeah at the time i would agree i mean it was yeah can, I, can I, I just didn't pick your brain real quick and just like yeah? i want to just ask what was the feeling because i know it was pre-recorded because there's no way yeah. like that would have been so insanely stressful there'll be live stream just anything <laughs> could go wrong but what was the feeling of having it done and knowing that you can have a live stream and just relax to it and know that everything's oh my out? god like, was it like the best feeling I, you know part of me wishes that i, I think i could have done that on on live but uh, i don't know man it was very weird and i was able to kind of slip into the shoes of a viewer and yeah. just watch it go down oh, and there cool. there's there was no streamer at that point there's no streamer it was just it was just us in the chat saying i was here oh, <laughs> and yeah God. that was that was uh yeah that was a really interesting experience but the reason why i would say that for runescape is that even though that was what like two years ago at this point summer of one, one year or two years I, I, anyway it was one summer yeah um that was i think the first time where i like took concepts from the game and made something uh of my own with it it was yes it was based i it was based on the work of a lot of people uh mm -hmm. unpredictable especially showing a lot of just, just just the concepts and everything um but i can I, i'm just really proud of the work that went into that uh there was this thing that there was a problem there was like 10 or 20 problems to solve with that challenge. One of them being, okay, you're on a one defense account with like no HP, so you must be praying against everything. And you have no pillars left at the end Jeez. and two blobs. What do you do? Oh because God. once you pop one of those things, it's going to, the little little three blobs, there, which use all three styles, are going to come running after you and uh, punch you very quickly to zero HP. So coming up with exactly how to time one of the blob death and then exactly how to run to off tick the mini ones while staying in cycle of the big blob that's still alive. That was something that took like a really long time to figure out. And I was like, wow, at first I, I didn't think that was going to be possible. And then I actually got the account to the wave. And I was like, well, this is going to be a problem when I was finding out what to do. I was like, okay, so I just took another account and went to went to wave whatever it is that has the two blobs in it and, and just sat there for like two, two or three hours figuring out this problem. And yeah, it sounds like you spent you spent three hours of your life wasting it on how to oh, how blobs. to kill two blobs. <laughs> but like little things like that. Um, 
that made an impossible challenge possible. Um, it was just uh, really fun to put all of the pieces together at the end. And once again, yes, there was a lot of input from many other people and a lot of inspiration. Inspiration from Adwam, from his old uh, low combat capes, unpredictable, put together whole video saying 40 combat inferno plans, and I yoinked all of it and <laughs> stole his stuff. Um, I want to. By the way, have you 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 guys have both seen his his recent stuff, right? Who's... Unpredictable. Yeah. Oh, do, I saw Just... September's uh, no prayer as well. Did you see that? No, no leaking unpredictable. Sorry. Yes. No. Okay. No, no leak. No leaks. No, 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 no leaky. Uh, no, no. Cut. But unpredictable. Out, Let's but... just say. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, September, uh, September had a uh, no pray magic. Right? Yeah. No. Cool. No. No mage prayer. Yeah. Anyway, unpredictable. Just how does it, how does he? I love the calculated way that he thinks of things, and he uses like a lot of simulations and things. Um, I've, some of his later sims are just ridiculous to the extreme, and the next time I think he posts a video, it's gonna just blow the community's mind. Yes, it's exciting. just unreal. Yeah, it's just entertaining too. Like this nonsense that. So, Eddie, to your point earlier about things that should be patched, we should probably patch unpredictable. Patch unpredictable, He's... right? <laughs> It's it, too strong. You know it's, it's you know it's crazy. Nonsense, you know it's cr you, you know it's crazy when I feel I have one of the strongest grasps in, of Inferno and how it functions, and I'll just sit down and look at what he's doing, and then after one minute I'll be lost, and after two minutes I'll be confused, right? And it just doesn't stop. It's very, very, very crazy. Yeah, for sure. I want to sort of like the way he molds the game, and understands it. I wanted to briefly ask about the pain of having to restart accounts because I heard that it was around 10 accounts or so of, you know, failed accounts before you actually got the 40 combat Inferno. Is that true? Only 10. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, 10 was failed ones. Was that one. like just the worst thing ever having to just go back? Like, yeah. what, what was the most, like, what was the worst feeling of a death in the Inferno where you had to just restart everything? Was there ever a moment oh, where you just wanted God. to give up? I got to healers once before, um, oh, on my second attempt, no. actually. Yeah. Uh, how many hours was that run? Like from from account creation, going through the fire ca uh, fight caves, going through the inferno up to healers. Like how many hours was that in game? Like to just throw away. Goodness, I think like I, I think around thirty total Jeez. hours. I spent way too much time on and this. So much I did, focus uh, too. Yeah. I did my own account prep too, so like it was just ten hours of this. The, 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 actually, ten hours of pre preparing the account is not a lot, um, but that's fast. because at the end of it, I mean, you didn't, didn't need to, we ended up like not using ancients, right? So you don't have to do that, that's true. and then just get like get, just get a fire cape, get the range level, get the magic level, and then just easily go, go get a fire cape yeah, at level go thirty in. or whatever. Like yeah, you make it not? seem but, so easy, but it's just like that is so ridiculous already. For most people for me included. yeah but the 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 deaths were definitely bad at the at the end i think the strategy i was using um was because I, I think i was having some internet troubles too so I, I died twice to internet um i died once to instead of clicking log out i clicked on the bond pouch and then Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. i just had everything spawn on me instead of logging out um yeah the, the the those definitely spent a lot of time uh just preparing not not even in the inferno Where, so you had stated afterward that a 39 combat was possible is there yes. anything lower that's possible 38 should be doable but you're but like very pressed and very uh, i don't know it might actually what, it might actually be okay. I, you got to be perfect for twenty hours already to get yeah. the thirty nine, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if you can just replicate that with, I think, um, yeah, there's a different setup that you can. That's so. Ba nice. Basically, if you can do a thirty nine, you can do a thirty eight. But you know, many more attempts, possibly some more RNG, and that that may that's just what I know of. I'm not like following the latest strategies on mm -hmm. stuff right now, um, and I'll 
you know, and anybody who knows, like, I'm predictable what, listening to me talk about this. It's like, yeah, I already got level 35 at Zuck, about to send it. Um, but yeah, it, sh it should be possible to uh, beat that. But it's very possible also that Afzal will just hold that forever because that is a it's it's a it's possible time. but also not really possible and like who else is going to dedicate a year to their life right. trying to get all the yeah all, all the mechanics down and everything that's crazy um yes. i want to ask you one more thing exact and that is going way back to the three combat fire cape uh journey basically that you and rendy oh yeah on. uh i know there was no topics on it i was surprised by that oh well, at least i didn't see any but that was a long time ago, and I did have Rendy on the cast, and we kind of talked about it already, but I kind of want to hear your thoughts, if you have any, of just that journey of, like, kind of <laughs> pushing yourself into the fight caves and then just kind of competing oh, with Rendy man. and pushing the fire cape to eventually a level three. Oh, no. Yeah, so <laughs> the reason why I was almost just... Uh, I. I didn't even know if I wanted to continue with the 40 combat Infernal Cape after a few attempts and after getting so close was because of that whole thing. Or was it the other way? Dude, the, 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 the timeline is blending. Yeah. It's so when, like. when was when was all of this? I think it I was think 2019, it was, end of before. 2019, right? Or was yeah. that 2020? It was the end of 2020 or 2019. I literally can't. Is Adicon now? Do you know? I, I have no clue. I, I can't remember which. Like we have to go I feel to like it was around December of some year. Oh but my I can't god! Remember. Wasn't it around and winter time? It was. So? Yeah. Okay. okay. It was either 2019 or 2020. I literally can't remember. Level three yeah. combat fire cape was January 19th. 40 combat inferno was June 18th. Of what year? 2020 for the okay, inferno. 2020, okay. And 2020. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. January. So 2020. 40 combat was five months later. But every single low combat fire cave, infernal cave, I I was just asking myself, I I, I can't believe I'm doing this again. Why? I'm, <laughs> why am I doing? Why am I putting myself through this again? And so, this this I think was a really really interesting coincidence that happened as we were progressing the fire caves. Uh, Randy had a sixteen. I Randy did sixteen combat. I think. I did 15. Um, and then Kemp Key was still theory crafting the 19. Oh my god! <laughs> kidding. Never get I'm kidding. Oh, oh Kemp Key, man. Meme. Oh, the man. whole meme oh, of that. Like, it's like it's like right. that picture oh. of that woman with all the like question marks and like equations and stuff. There's <laughs> like Kemp Key was still like, formulating. Little did 19. he know he was holding the key to that thing in his <laughs> hand the whole time. Uh, yeah, that's the ring funny. of suffering. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Um, so then, I think. Um, Okay, no, it was this. Rendy had... I can't get the numbers straight. But correct me if I'm wrong I after this. Randy Someone just go back and... and you got 16. 17. I got 16 okay. and said 15, 15 is possible. And then, okay, I was just... I was like, 15 <laughs> is possible. Ha, ha, ha. Rendy's going to work on a 15 one. And then I started preparing my 14 combat one. <laughs> Finally got that done. And then two days later, this man comes out and just like... Nine combat fire. Yeah, that was video it. posted, and it seemed and that fake. Was like, what? It seemed fake. Like we were all on Reddit. We're on Reddit. Yeah, we're like, that's like, impossible. What he's is going he's on? hacking. You know, <laughs> he's hacking <laughs> <laughs> because he just came out with it like instantly. It was just like, dude, you clearly hacked, but no. It, 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 it's almost as if we planned it. The way yeah. that worked out was perfect. Oh yeah, I get it. Fourteen combat. Two days later, he's like, yeah, sit, sit the fuck down. <laughs> Yeah. I have nine combat. And I think at that point we were like, okay, what what is going on? That's that's I think when um Randy and I first started actually communicating about this. Mm -hmm. Like you would think that we had organized this whole thing, but no. That's when we actually started talking about it. It's like, okay, so lower, maybe. Um I did an eight combat a few weeks later without uh with only Protect from Magic, I think. That's crazy. Um and then we both were like, okay, it's 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 Christmas. Like, can we can we stop and like figure out what we're going to do? Because three and three and four combat is looking possible. Yeah. Randy came out with the four combat one first. Um, did he solved um, everything without prayers? I solved everything without prayers separately. We used two different, two completely different methods to get to the three combat one. Um, 
same core method, Rendy's method, uh, using the suffering, but two completely wa different wa wave set solves. Um, and some other differences too. So it was really interesting. We both got that around the same time and uh, decided to announce it together. Oh, that's so cool. That yeah, that, that was, worked that out really nicely. Thing. That was a really cool moment in OSR. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'm just glad it was more, probably more, much more fun to watch than, uh, actually, actually take part in grinding that. Yeah. How many, uh, I'm how sure many hours, tell you the same. how many hours would it take to do a level three combat? And by the way, I got to give a huge shout out to Port Gazard for doing a level three fight cave. Yes. It, without the, uh, whole mind shield and stuff like that. Yeah. That's that was, insane. that was really cool to see. Dude, shout out Port Kazard in general. He's just been up to some insane he antics. He's a beast. Yeah. He is just good at everything as well. He's get, he's, he's so getting good. back into Inferno speeds as well. He's just posting good no. spots again. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, that's what he's doing right now. He's just back on Inferno. Oh my goodness. He said he'd do them until he gets bored, so he's, he's... going to pull something disgusting for sure. I need to get him back on. He is a king, dude. He is a mm. king. I didn't. Yeah, really... you had him a while ago, right? Yeah, yeah, I had him on. the ca And that was back when, like, you know, he was a beast still but i mean even since then he's done remarkable things since and it's like he's continued to push you know what we think is the limits of certain things like i thought nobody would ever be able to get a level three fire cape ever again like i thought that was just impossible he just does it it's not <laughs> easy for him yeah literally okay um that was kind of long uh accomplishments right yeah Oh, real life. Oh, yeah. uh, I go. guess I would just briefly mention the uh, the. I, I, I thought it was a gr uh, very satisfying for me uh, teaching the martial arts class that we talked about before. Just seeing people grow um, and being able to share something with them like that. Um, That's cool. very rewarding. Yeah. Adicon. All right. Uh, what was the question again? Proudest Sorry, achievement. <laughs> I feel like Proudest yeah. I feel like this is an hour ago when it was first oh, yeah. asked, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a bit weird in this. I don't really ever get the sense of achieving stuff. I'm not trying to be weird in about this. In real life I or just, in game or just both? Anywhere. Really? I never get it. No matter what I do, I just don't what get it. What is achievement? Um, and I've, I, I, I saw this question this morning. And I was like, I need to try and define this because I just can't fathom it. And it goes down this road of, like, what do you... Let me see the exact question, see if I can decipher this a little. Can or can you post it, it to me, please? Yeah. Yeah. It'll help a little. I got stuck in this. I, I wondered for like an hour this morning on one of these questions. I was like, I just don't have an answer to this. But I, found, I found it quite interesting. Yeah, most achievement, most proud. I, I came down this road of like, what does it mean to be proud? And it's like, pride is the sense of accomplishment. Accomplishment is the sense of overcoming difficulty. Difficulty, in my opinion, stems from a lack of understanding of core concepts. And learning concepts individually shouldn't be too difficult because they're pretty core concepts they're just base concepts and so this idea of accomplishing something doesn't really mean much to me because as far as i'm concerned myself or anybody else if you set your mind to something you can do it and if that's if that's what people mean by the sense of accomplishment or pride in something sure i have it but i don't think it means much damn that's maybe that's that hey, uh, I, I went down deep. this road for an Game hour. Too hour. easy. Life I, I too swear. easy. No, no satisfaction. No, no. In life. <laughs> no. He, it, it's funny. I, I don't feel bad about it or anything. It's not like I'm depressed all the time. It's it's really that I I genuinely believe that people can do stuff if they set their mind to it. Mm -hmm. And so it shouldn't be a surprise when you do something. There should be you pride should, in that, shouldn't... though. There should be a sense of pride, and yeah, I set my mind to it. Not I everyone don't... just because anyone can, and I don't agree with that on principle but just because anyone can doesn't mean that everyone does right and you see that in reality sure uh, not but, everyone but, is dedicated or you know sets themselves to the task goes for but things. it's all but it, but it also shouldn't be a surprise when that task gets accomplished should it? but even if it isn't a surprise i think it can still be uh, something you're proud of an achievement you're proud hmm. of but that's an interesting take. I, I've never really seen it yeah. that way. It's interesting. I just tried to I just tried to like really specifically define it this morning. Like I couldn't come to an idea of, of something where I I either agreed that it was a relevant definition or something that I thought was actually applicable to me. But and as, as an example, like did I feel good when I got a, when I got my first sub fifty in Fono? Hell yeah. Did I think that I was proud of it? Not really. <laughs> it was just something that happened because I put the time into it. So and it's the same and it's the same thing for everybody in, in anything they do not mm -hmm. of course it doesn't apply across the board but it applies very broadly 
if you want something done, just do it. Just put time in. Yeah. And the, and the ultimate factor is people are capable, and people don't trust themselves to be capable. And understanding that means that you can do a lot of stuff if you really set your mind to it. And this is true again, like across the board, no matter what it is. You want to become good at something, put time in. Yeah. Will you be proud that you became good at it? I don't think. I, I personally know. I'll just accept that I put the time in it, and that's a great thing for me. Strange, Honestly, st strange take, maybe, but yeah, yeah, I think it's a very narrow take. I can see where you're coming from, but also what we were saying earlier about you. Um, I'll, I'll go. Mm -hmm. ach achievement of yours in my mind has been sure. building up the Inferno speedrunning community while simultaneously entertaining thousands of people by streaming your own runs with the Inferno Discord, building up this community. That's uh, more of a side know. product, though. Yeah, like, so, yes, I wanted this and I wanted it to happen. But I took the steps yeah. that I wanted to, to do to make it happen and it happened. I shouldn't be surprised or. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just a me thing. I don't know. I can't it's see it. It's an interesting take, but uh, yeah, I think. I mean, I, when you said you, when when you when you first got your sub for Inferno, I think that is something yeah. you're proud of because you are happy about it. Like you know, I, I don't I feel like the definition of being proud of something mm. can differ. I guess if if you want to define it as like the sense of accomplishment of overcoming difficulty, yeah. then yes, yeah, I, I absolutely have that. But I don't think that's a relevant definition. That's all. It's a, I don't I don't want to play the word game, but I kind of I, I don't know I can't settle on something for this. <laughs> Interesting. So but, what but, about? But, but certainly this. Yeah. Certainly, like accomplishing something that was deemed difficult and that you overcame is a good feeling. Pride, no. So no, your sub fifty was a great moment. It, you were happy about it. Is there anything IRL yeah. that you were uh, you'd like to share? Uh, hmm. Not really. I mean, whenever, when, again, like whenever it is that I think something is wrong, I, maybe I can pride myself on the idea that I, I'm very happy fixing things that I, I find if I ever have a problem. If I'm feeling down or if I, I don't know, if I want something done, I just go do it. Mm -hmm. I don't really sit around moping or something. I'm just happy to to find find the reasons why and go solve it. If I want to do something, become better at it, just find out how to get better. One thing I'm very good at, I think, is understanding how to learn and it's one of the most important I think you are skills too. it's one of the most important skills that play that not just players but people don't have um stems from education and then a lack of it within education is teaching people to solve things themselves i think if if there's one thing i'm like really happy that i'm good at it's it's probably that it's finding You're good at getting funder. good yeah, good at getting good. No, that's an yeah. actual <laughs> skill, though. I mean, I it's see, absolutely good at getting good. I see myself with that with a very like lower level compared to Addy, because I mean, when I see Addy's just improvement in Inferno, which just seemed like immediate, it was in, it was just insane because he really did put a lot of effort and critical thinking into learning, which is so much effort. But I even see it uh, with my simple. Uh, example of me learning how to flick bandos i just thought that was going to be impossible super hard and stuff and then you know what i just said fuck it i'm just gonna go try to learn this <laughs> and i died a ton of times but i gave it a lot of effort like i really put in a lot of effort and that was like one of the moments in at least in game where i realized hey i can actually learn whatever i want it was the same thing with zuck helmet by the way the zuck helmet yeah. seemed yeah. so incredibly intimidating to me initially and then I just started doing it. I was like, you know what? Let's just learn. Let's just do it. And uh, of course, fun. I already had a big building block of playing this account for 15,000 hours, so that helped. But on top of <laughs> the amount of hours and experience I've had in this game, I mean, there was a lot of stuff I had to learn. And being able to learn to learn is a good trait, good quality. I think a lot of it is, there's two parts. One is learn to learn, but the other one is people underestimate themselves. So in the words of a very good player, you can do it. Uh -huh. And the words uh -huh. from Winston Churchill, he once said, <laughs> failure comes, or success comes from failure to failure. Or wait, what was it? Yes. Success yes. Comes, comes from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Or going uh -huh. from failure to failure there without we, loss there of we enthusiasm. Go. Keep, just yeah. keep failing. Literally. As long as you don't give do you up. Know where... don't, don't, don't be afraid. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to fail. Do you know you where know, the you can do this came from, Eddie? I don't so know. That's a reference to this, I think. Is it, are you referencing the start of one of my Inferno guides? I, I am. You can yes. do this. You can my, do this. My, my favorite meme is the is the edit where someone says you can't do this. No. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little bit like, Did someone do that? Do no. Yeah, it's a thing. 
<laughs> so the start of the guide. Welcome to the Inferno. You can't. You, can't do this. <laughs> you oh, cannot do this. After you watch this guide, you might have a better chance. You might have. So there's two inspirations for that. One is Shia LaBeouf. Do it. <laughs> oh, do that's it. what it was. <laughs> Just, Just the other inspiration. <laughs> I love that one so much. I this is, this I is like lore to the that. video. I love it. The second inspiration was actually a game called Celeste. Um, it it oh, reminded yes. me of this when uh, you were talking about Geometry Dash for um, agility. Mm -hmm. um, it's got like short levels that you can do. It's a it's a platformer mm -hmm. about a girl who's climbing a mountain, and beautiful game, really nice story. But also just like tight platforming action. Uh, it's a lot of fun to interact with. And one of the nicest thing is that the checkpoint system, uh, like what you mentioned about being teleported directly to the beginning of the level without any ticks lost. Yep. Um, it's like that. You die, instantly retry screen. Die, instantly retry screen. You get mm -hmm. better. One, uh, go jump over one more thing. Uh, beat one more obstacle until you beat the screen. So it's like that super rewarding sense of progression. Yeah. Um, and I think in some cases, like, Inferno feels not like that because you die and you go back to the very beginning. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I was trying to bring like a more sense, of, like encourage people not just like you can do this, but also like yeah, you're learning and building on top of what you already know. Mm -hmm. Don't feel discouraged just because you die in wave one again. <laughs> That's anyway. Cool. <laughs> Here's a, do it. Just do it. That is, by the way, that actually unironically motivates me. That Shia LaBeouf video, like it actually, <laughs> like it, unironically, it like shocks you out of like it's, whatever you're thinking about. It, it just puts like, everything so yeah. simplistically. It's just like, just do yeah. it. <laughs> do Stop it. Thinking. Like, that's give it a it. go. Yeah. Don't what think, are you don't waiting think. for? Yeah. It's good. It's one of the. It was one of the best like meme videos, and yet it was like probably the most seriously impacting videos <laughs> yeah. of that of that few years. And the fact that it made its way into like serious videos, not like as a meme, it's just it's really cool. By the way, are one of you yeah. out by the coast? I keep hearing seagulls. It's my seagulls. seagulls. I'll close my. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I thought one of you guys were out like chilling at a beach or something. Like, <laughs> it's been a comfy. lovely few days, and they won't shut up. That so. is, I mean, it sounds nice. It uh, honestly does. I was just confused. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get it on stream a lot now. Like, are you by the sea? I'm not really <laughs> by the sea. The seagulls just think they are, or they like the landfill or something. But oh my god, yeah. Okay, uh, there's always a seagull out here. Here's a random topic. Dark Spirit asks for exact, and I want to actually just include all of us in this. Fluffy pancakes or blue waffles? I don't know where the blue waffles came from. No, 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 no. Oh, God, what? What happened? We're not doing this question. What is it? I'm confused about the blue. Am I? No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Apparently, that's the bad part. Apparently, that's the part that shall not be touched. You poor innocent. Fluffy pancakes are wonderful, from what I hear. Yeah. You poor innocent soul, don't give in. This is the equivalent of room 40. I am so confused right now. What's happening? You don't know what room 40 is? I don't know what any of this room stuff... room forty these nuts it no nah, like this is oh isn't, this isn't is this the D's nuts somehow this is not this is bait of the worst kind oh my god okay well here let me just phrase it this a is the kind of I'm... thing you open up an incognito tab before you search it <laughs> and maybe add a VPN too from what yes. I hear okay I, I Addy wouldn't no even idea. let me Google this <laughs> I was I, poor poor I was, soul I was like yo what is this question dude and then he was like just. Don't, don't even. Don't. Just I, was, don't. I was opening up Google, typing in blue what? And he was like, nope, nope, nope. You can't do that. <laughs> what? Certainly not free back to the I'm so, I'm so out of it. I'm surprised I don't know any of this. Okay, well, I don't know. Here, don't worry. Let, let me ask a similar question because I thought this was a cool question but at a surface level. Waffles or pancakes? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, now we're talking. Uh, what do you guys think? Addy Khan, what do you think? Waffles pancakes. Pancakes, and I'll give you a recipe. Pancakes, and I'll give you a recipe. One okay. cup of flour, one egg, pinch of salt, one and a tiny bit of one one cup and a little bit of, a little bit more of milk. Mix okay. well. Clarified butter. In flip out with whatever you want. Okay. Typically with, with sugar. Okay, or that's the, no, that's the important part. What 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 do you want with it? Yeah. Oh, with it. My my yeah. go to with my go to nowadays is. Vanilla shitty. It, ha it has to be shitty vanilla ice cream. Shit, even <laughs> you can't buy good vanilla. It has to be shitty. So like, like overly the top yellow, and really like uh, smoothie and sort of vanilla. 
Yeah, yeah. It's just like super like overly vanilla y vanilla ice cream. Honestly, like fast and it's food just, soft fantastic. serve. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, fast food soft serve with breakfast foods. That's like, just good. Yeah. Yeah. So the point is actually not to eat the waffle or the pancake, right? It's to eat the stuff on top. And waffle has more surface what? area and more stuff. So, like, it's not a question of the waffle versus the pancake. It's like, you know, there's but more surface area. It still is a question of waffle ice versus mm. pancake, though, because waffles waffle are superior. No. They are. Yes. This, this is an outrage. No. Waffles yes. have always been superior. <clears throat> Um, now, there are bad waffles, and there's also bad pancakes. There's great pancakes, great waffles. But if you're looking at a spectrum, the best waffle is better than the best pancake, in my opinion. Ooh. Like, if you were to just have the absolute perfect, whatever is, in my mind, the perfect waffle, it would be better than the perfect pancake. You've opinion. heard of deluxe gourmet waffles, but have you ever heard of a deluxe gourmet pancake? No, I didn't think so. It's just Ooh. a pancake. It's just flat. Uh, let me let me let me flip this on its head. If you take the most simplistic version, the pancake wins. Uh huh. Potentially, yeah. Probably. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. Probably. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good point. But um, let's add a different dynamic real quick. French toast is now included. Oh no! I need I need a clarification here. Is yeah. French toast with spices like cinnamon and stuff yes. in eggy bread? In comparison to eggy bread, <laughs> which simply doesn't have that, because I was trying to do this the other day on stream and I couldn't figure it out. So, what is eggy bread, sir? Eggy, br eggy, eggy bread, bread is is bread that has been doused in like egg. mixed egg <laughs> and then <laughs> fried. Yep, and that's all it is. There's no spices. There. I like the cinnamon added and uh, the little bit of milk. I think you add a little bit of milk. I believe just a tiny mm -hmm. bit. Um, I like it when you add cinnamon because I am addicted to cinnamon. I love cinnamon. I'll put that on anything, literally. I'd rather have cheese on toast than French bread. Than French toast. French toast, sorry. Okay. Done done in the grill. Really in the like grill. That. In the grill under the oven. Yeah. French toast can end up being oh. really soggy and gross, especially if you have it cold. Yeah. But like if you have a hot, crispy piece of French toast, oh my goodness, it's delicious. Anyway. Mm. Okay. Third Age asks Tree. I'm assuming he tree. knows exact. The tree has fallen, but we know trees are biodegradable. Do you <laughs> Do you have any interest in creating some other kind of unique account build in the future? Addy, please explain in depth the mechanic of Raids 3. Without leaking, but be very in depth, please. <laughs> oh. You just have to leak it without leaking. Just as long as you preface this is not a leak, you're fine. You're on good grounds, right? Yeah. There are some things that I've said on Twitch which are very fine to say, which I can say here. One of the most, if not the most important thing, I think, is that the complexity of any given boss within Raids 3 itself could be the final boss of a raid That's and that is saying a lot because it means that every single fight is going to feel so much more like a complete fight than just oh i'm hitting a mystic and it doesn't fight back and it's just like you know you consider the pre-rooms and chambers and tob obviously tob is a lot better but take the tob pre-rooms and now like multiply by three that's kind of what those bosses felt like to me sheesh that's it's a lot it's a lot more than I think people will be expecting. Okay. That's it's a lot more of a complete fight. Nyla's now, multiplied by... I just imagine Nyla is multiplied by three. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so what about... I can't say. I can't say. What about um, invocations? Do you have anything that you can leak about invocations? Here, let me ask this, actually, a specific question, mm -hmm. if sure. you know. Are invocations inherently making the raid more difficult, or are there invocations that make things easier? I do not think difficult? I do I do not I don't know for sure, but I do not think there will be ones that make it easier. Okay. I think instead the content will start at a base level and invocations will simply make it harder. Okay. This is one of those very interesting things where a lot of the hype towards raids three, I think, is gonna be a bit misplaced. People are going to initially see it as who's gonna get the first completion? This new raid that's gonna be the most difficult. Because people who haven't really read up on it don't or haven't been exposed to this argument or or this this topic already don't really understand that it's not necessarily going to be hard mm -hmm. and the design is meant to be easier than chambers and top it's meant to be like not as not like easy mode top but in that middle ground of not quite as difficult as a first step chambers in other words players should without a doubt on zero invocations be able to clear the raid first time almost certainly interesting but that's not meant to be the difficulty of the raid so mm -hmm. There's going to be some mixed expectations. People are going to be like, oh, but it's such a letdown. Everyone just did it first time. What's the point? 
And then on the flip side, Max Invocations is the goal to strive for. It's the one that's going to be the most difficult thing we've ever seen, I hope. And that's really what is more interesting, is who's going to get the first Max Invocation raid? So that's cool. So, so you can actually plug in every single invocation. There's not like a certain path that you have to go down with invocations. I don't, you can actually I don't all think them. you'll be... I think I think you will allow be allowed all of them. There's no restrictions. Like you, you can only have 10. If you want them all, you can have them all. How many are there? Can you leave that? I believe they said 60. I thought it was going to be 40 Jesus. initially. What? But, 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 but... I do believe that some of the... So there are different types, and I can't be specific, but let's say example is... Basically, an invocation is anything that could make the raid more difficult. So an, examples of things that could be them could be stats is an obvious one, mm -hmm. or more mechanics is a cool one, or restrictions, or time limitations, or gear limitations, right? Think Things that add difficulty to the raid. And obviously, stats is like a really obvious one. So and a single invocation, let's say there's 60 of them, it could be like, okay, let's add 5% damage boost to a boss, 10% damage boost oh, to a boss, okay, 15, 20, 25%. And that would be five invocations, but it would be within the frame of one type of invocation. I see. So there might actually only be 10 types of invocations, one for mechanics, one for stats, one for restrictions, one for time limit. And then if you wanted to consider types, there would only be 10. But if you have settings for individual ones, that could be like 50 or 60, because it's like every time you ramp up one, it could be more and more. That's so, so that's right. It's that's, still a lot, so, though. So 60 Even is a bit of an overestimate, but 10 categories, or whatever it might be, is a lot, yeah. Is they li they're going to layer on top of each other. It may be easy mm -hmm. to just do something with the time limit, but can you do it within the time limit and without right. your stats? So, and without right. prayers? And without... Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask this. Do you believe that combat achievements, Grandmaster combat achievements, will require full invocation? Or is that going to be unbelievably difficult so they'll tone Ooh. it down for the at least the Grandmaster task? I know... Uh, I can't... <clears throat> I can't say because okay. I there's something which I know people have been saying, but I don't know how they know it, and I don't know if it's something that was leaked in, in like accidentally or if it's something they just was in a blog post. But okay. it's it, it, there's a bit more depth to invocations than simply just adding them on, and it's going to factor into how combat kind of achievements plays in. So, not really applicable as a question right now, sadly. Interesting. <laughs> exact. Did you have anything that you were? I don't know if you wanted to add anything on that. Oh, from from raids three, I I'd be curious if there's a gear restrictions one because, you know, for for a lot of people the and teams right like oh you must have mm. Torva to do this or for irons you must have gotten these items. I want yeah. What if one of the invocations is you must go in naked and right. then your best in slot gear is just you just have your best in slot gear already. Personally, I don't want item restrictions. I would rather have things like healing item restrictions. Like you are allowed only one brew, for example. Mm, but maybe that's a bit yeah. too specific, but I, I would prefer that kind of restriction. To yeah. It's personally. leaked. One brew invocation. Uh, no. Sell your brews. <laughs> Sell them. Okay, Chelsea. Well, like actually say. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, it's not, not, nothing else. Okay. On that. <laughs> Chelsea asks, "How do you feel about Jagus's recent decision on clients, which we've already covered?" But she also asks, "What is your favorite RS pet?" Ooh, Eddie, you had one in mind. You, had, right? you yeah. can't decide. Yeah. My three. favorite pet is the grotesque guardian pet, which is really? a bit of a weird one. Oh. Not many people like it, and it's the, what? It's, the, it's, nice it's the one. only. It's the only pet that I have ever received that I actually grinded for on purpose. 2,937 KC, I think. Something like that. Nice. Right Basically, on. just just before rate. Mm -hmm. And it's the only pet I've actually sit, uh, sat down and thought, I want to grind this pet out. I want that pet. Everything else has been a byproduct of just doing raids and I like, I'll get it eventually kind of thing. But that pet is the only one I've like really wanted. I got it really fairly early into what I was doing. It was like maybe the first year of streaming I had it. And I think now the only other the only other pet that I'm gonna grind properly on stream will be Zami Pet. But I don't That's like nice Zami. One. It's 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 never gonna hold that position for me as like the first one I went for because I liked it. So that's mine. Exact. I gotta say this is probably a popular one, uh the T O B dust one. The which dust T O B pet. Which one though? Oh no! I Ooh. love all of them. I I had the uh, Soda Seg one the most. No, I, I despise no. Soda Seg. Why do you? It's so I cute. Know. Little I, small bear. I've never <laughs> liked Soda Seg. Nilo's the best because it trolls people. 
Nilo's oh, that's good. yes. Nilo is a lovely one. I just wish they would give the blue and the green ones too, as part yeah. of the uh, metamorphosis. And the but red, that and the one, red. The, and the purple. Wait, the red, and purple, and the uh, yeah, yeah, all of them. Be, uh, there's no reason why not. Yeah, yeah. See, I really love the Zarpa's pet. I feel like it's a an improved nice grotesque too. guardian. Uh, yeah. Whoa. I, 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 I like all the flying pets for sure. So. Yeah, the, the flying one's definitely really nice. Yeah. Um, I think Zarpus's wing flap is just really satisfying. It's something nice about it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The the original Versic... That's so weird with the Rage oh. pet, though. The original Versic pet and the original Ulm pet are, like, kind of... They're kind of scuffed. Yeah. Yeah, they are a bit, aren't they? And um, then you... Criara is also up there for flying pets. Oh, that's nice I got one, my yeah. Criara pet early. I, I got it before my hill. I got... I got it at one point one k, and that was that was in all fairness a pet I was grinding for, but not like it never ended up being a big grind, so it doesn't yeah. really feel right. But yeah, yeah, Criara is a good. Pet. My favorite, my favorite's actually the Nibbler pet. If I had to just like rate it, uh, that would, yes, that would absolutely be my favorite. The Nibbler form, not the Zuck form, and Cute. I think my second favorite pet. I, I kind of like combined both of the Metamorphosis raids pets like those are kind of in the mixture of like tied for second but after that it goes vedion vedion was one of those pets i grinded for but i got super lucky on it was like 465 kc and i loved that pet because it was so early on it's before uh, rev weapons is... were even a thing and like that's a rare one too. it yeah. was and yeah. yeah wow it was a it was a cool little grind it was kind of like when i was mid level ish i guess i had just got my infernal cape when i actually got the pet which by the way i thought i was the coolest motherfucker in the entire game with <laughs> nice. an infernal cape on an iron man with yes. a on it. i thought it was yeah out. i, I mean back sure. then that would have been much more rare as well oh yeah still right now but like yeah it was cool do you feel it's like different. the grind and the story behind the pet is more important or the pet itself to it's got to be a mix right yeah it's got to be a mix yeah i even think of my inquisitor's mace i mean that thing took like 11 oh my god yeah, to things are, things and irons like even items and irons, right? Yeah, like yes. that Inquisitor's mace. When I see it, I'm like, that's a story. Yes, that's, there. like that's yeah. a that was a event. <laughs> yes, when Fosani's first came out, right? I remember. I, I I don't know if I was there live in the live stream, but very soon after you got it, at least. Yeah, it was I day one Fosani's. I li oh, yeah. like a lot of people already know this, but just to put into perspective. Back in 2020, summer of 2020, I realized I wanted to go camp Seracnus a bunch because I just wanted to do a bunch of clues. And I realized I wanted to get an Inquisitor's Mace, but I realized how rare it was because only Normal Nightmare was out. Oh so God. I grinded Normal Nightmare out for nine months straight. I'm talking one tick flicking, 20-minute uh, kills, resupply. There was supplies, no sleeping tablets. I mean, supplies, oh supplies. Oh, the, uh, I spent over like a bill worth of blood runes. It was of raw GP, a bill. I mean, it was just absurd amount of time and scything? effort and resource. Yes, I scythed everything. Oh my God. Well, after I got my first Inquisitor's piece, I scythed everything after that. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was a total shit show and for nine months of it. And then... Lake got his mace, and then the very next day, they announced Fasani's. So, Lake got his. I stopped for two months to wait until Fasani's came out. And then, day one Fasani's, I got my so mace. easy. And I planned for an 18-hour stream, and I literally got it 17 and a half hours in. It was, like, the most glorious Oh, my moment. God. That is amazing. The perfect point. Yeah, perfect it was amazing, dude. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was over. That was so good. Yeah. That was the um that that's kind of why I would say the dust for for my mm. <laughs> dead hardcore. <laughs> Addy Addy and I we teamed up for hard modes and uh what was it I said? I, I don't need that dust. I don't I don't need I just need Oh unique. this was this was fantastic. It was like I'll just go yeah. for one one just thing. Go for one unique. And I'll de oh, and I'll I'll, I'll I'll definitely stop after that. <laughs> yeah. There's no there's no reason to go definitely. there. I just wanna show that it's doable. Yeah. Yeah. So we got one, and then you're like two days later. I, Addy, I'm, I'm getting that itch. Can we have you, more? You want it? Maybe we should <laughs> just we go more? for like until I get another item or the red side. I was like, <laughs> Can I have the red oh, side? I want the red okay, side. Okay, then off the we go. One. Okay, we go. So we got the red Never side. Never satisfied. I want, I want another one. I think I'm done now. Nope. <laughs> we need to complete it. 500 KC later. By um, the way, were you the only hardcore on the high scores for hard mode TLB before you died? 
Or were, were there, uh, there no, anybody? Praise Foot got there before that, but okay. it was like a good. It felt like a year. Um, I swear. <laughs> that's what it felt like I, I think Chris Foot got it like a few months ago right so yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to say there will probably be like less than 10 hardcores at, at hard mode Tom for the next like 5 years, five years. It's, it's just it's... people just can't it, it's too dangerous You ha- the biggest part is having that trigger finger and that game sense to pull it off and then the team on top of it because yep. if your team messes Throw up another team you'll you still die no, I I just AFK actually. You guys, you got you guys uh, good. I, I was just AFK. <laughs> it was fine. But well, yeah, I think um, pog tanking as well. Oh yeah. Oh, that was fun. That's I think that, that's what got me back the, into it. That was the that's final why... key. Yeah. Pra- yeah. Praise Foots, by the way. Praise Foots hard mode top. I as far as I'm aware, I was told. I don't know for sure, but I was told that he TPs out if he has green ball on him every time. Probably a smart idea. And and and, and uh, yeah, it's it's smart. It's foolproof. But like, it's one yeah. in. Three, four KC. Let's just go. Yeah, hold on. It's really, it's really hard to to get a team that's consistent to want to do that and to put the pressure on for like more runs as well. Because mm-hmm. that's one so of the factors. Have you is, seen? Is minimizing have you seen Addy's video on the tanking stuff? Oh, it is beautiful. The art of the tank. Oh my goodness, that was the most gorgeous video I've ever seen. The it, dude, I'm not gonna I... lie, Addy. That was an incredible video. Like that's Maffin, that's Maffin's video. I just happened to have the privilege to make it. <laughs> it was so well done though, because you layered it. You know, you didn't just go out front like this, like you did just showcase the best thing, thing ever. <laughs> you kind of layered it, and it was so beautifully done, and it was still fast paced enough to, to kind of for the, like a beginner, they can kind of see what's happening, sort of. But even for like higher levels, they can. I don't know. You layered it very well. It was very nicely timed. Like the pacing of the video was great. And then the end. I mean, you got those shots, the like bird's eye views of everything. It looked, so, it was yeah. gorgeous, man. I'm so glad the final bit came out as well as it did. Oh, it was like so Ma- Mathem, good. well done. Mathem had it in theory. He like Mathem had this the way. So Mathem had this like little. I don't know if it was like. I don't, it was some. It was some tool he had that he created and he would plan out every single tick for every single player where the ball was what Verzik was doing the, the attack timings and he every single one of these like crazy things he would plan out like all, all the things in the video were like 90 percent his and 10 percent exact i think you had the initial stall tank the pause tank and then right, yeah and then <laughs> and then Mephim just went crazy, just went crazy. Uh, i think you did some too like the walking stuff right I did a little. I did a little bit when I adjusted it, but I never like hard pioneered it. That's still, still all math right, realistically. And then he like planned out this. His he was like, guys, one day he just pulls like in the group chat, guys, I've done it. He's been awake for like 20, 20 hours at this stage. He's like, I've done it. I have it. It's th- my final creation. And, it's like, and he post and he posts this animation of like, this is it. I mean, just look at it, like, what are we looking at, bro? And he's like, the helipog tank. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, the what? What do you mean? It's like we're doing this. Assemble. It was just so much fun, the whole thing. And then the shot at the end, I think it's Hootie. It's like, Hootie, get online. We need, a, we need a video. We need someone to record. <laughs> and Hootie's on the raid like, okay, I'm here, guys. What's up? And he sees it. He's like, dude, what did you guys just do? What is this? What am I looking at? <laughs> and it's, it's still so much fun to watch like that final clip, even today. That's gorgeous. Just, that like, was the, one the, of the most fun the, teamwork things I've ever the seen. The synchronization is just... Oh, yeah. yeah. It was cool. That, the best it, part of... Yeah, no, The best part it. of all of that is that it is practical. It is yeah. actually practical. It's one of the few things that ends up being useful in the raids that I do today. Practical applications of really fun and effective and creative methods that yeah. you can adapt with as well. So See, rare in this I, game, and it's I think, nice to have. I think there's a lot of beauty with uh, te- like super synchronized gameplay of absolute gamers in a team raid. I mean, I'm even thinking solo running Ulm, doing it doing mm-hmm. a perfect acid walk with like four different people like that oh shit my God, is cool yes. it's so cool it's a, to see it, it's exactly the same kind of thing as well yeah and it, awesome. it, it appears especially at Ulm, especially at, at, at tom it's interesting because it's like it's the raid it's the raids right that tend to to give you that kind of ability to do it yep but you could make an argument that something like five or zami would also function in the same manner i think yeah yeah. If you if you wanted to run it, you could do it. It's just not applicable because you would never do it with two people. Yeah, but that would it's, be kind of fun though. <laughs> just give Zami like two thousand HP and just have <laughs> challenge with Zami. Zami. <laughs> challenge, with... yeah. Uh, but I think that, that this kind of behavior, this kind of ability to do so, definitely emerges in raids. Mm. This is why this is why again, like because those bosses in raid three are so complex. 
I'm hoping that some of these things will occur there, and it'll become the norm if we're lucky. Yeah, DD Zarpus also is another example. People yeah, have a lot yeah. of fun doing that. Mm -hmm. um, just anything where it's teams of three or more, t two or three or more. Yeah, even two. It's just like they're doing the same thing. And the best part is like un w without communication. It, it means that everyone understands what's going on and yeah. can execute it. Yes, that's cool. Super cool. And like there's a random there's a random Zarpus splat. It's like we know where to go. It's not a problem because everyone everyone's tuned in on that. Super cool. See, you know, I just go panic and run into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think what's cool is, and again, I'm going back to Sepulchre because I've just been doing it for the past couple months, just here and here and there. But man, imagine they could come out with a multiplayer sort of movement oh. mini game. And I'm not talking Sepulchre exactly. I'm talking a different movement game where you have to have coordination. I mean somebody's got to be standing on this tile for you to go to this tile and there's a lot of movement oh, and a lot of coordination that there is some be. troll potential there oh no like hardcore troll, <laughs> hardcore troll potential which would literally you could not do free-for-alls for it like it just would not oh be a feasible God. thing and so you couldn't make it like i don't know the balancing aside but besides all that the beauty of having like a five-man team that's all it's all a movement based thing and it has to have precise tick perfect coordination that would be cool it's it's honestly the kind of thing that would fit very well into the raids three paths is that kind of like just just a couple of the paths just like at certain points things that require extreme positioning and coordination would be very cool yeah would be cool eh it sounds like i don't know if it's happening i'm just saying it's a good it's a good place for it i mean no i i think uh <laughs> i think husky um really spending time and arcane as well i mean them developing these really fun i mean sepulcher is one of them i mean i think it just makes sense to incorporate really fun elements from sepulcher and movement based things into raids i think that's just where it would happen. yeah sepulcher is i am ashamed to say that i've never been able to try it yeah but i've never done, I've yeah, never done the quest either. until like before uh but yeah, yeah. this looks so fun are can you race in there like with uh, so other people that's what i've been trying to push and i'm just gonna say right now sepulcher is not difficult enough as if you've spent enough time in there it's not even really a race anymore kind of but here's the problem with it they say they don't want to add sepulcher instances, but if you have four people starting floor five all at the same time, you will all be on a different instance. It makes no sense. Oh, uh, so really? Now you can space yourselves out, like everyone kind of enter every like five seconds or so. I don't know what the exact timing is, but um, then you can all potentially be on the same floor running things. But the the first few floors have different paths, like you know, there's there's multiple different floor one variations floor two variations so you kind of just go without i propose an idea and who knows how much work <laughs> it would take to propose this but or uh, to actually implement this but is a friend mode where you go in and you have the exact same route with all your friends and you all start at the same time yeah. and it's a race all the way to the end that would be yes. so fun and people would love that'd be that. sick i know especially like within within a cc if you were to join exactly it would be like next it's like it's you all like, join the like, same like, friends chat and you go yeah. in at the same time and boom go it's, it's it's really interesting a lot of a lot of streamers end up doing like sepulchre races like just come world 475 come and maybe that's a pvp world i don't know i mean just like come <laughs> come this world and we'll go race sepulchre and I'll, even i'll do it very occasionally and i i'm doing more sepulchre myself so it's like just come and have some fun with it because yeah why not? But it's nice to see more players for sure, and yeah. it's problem with disrupting instances, as you say. So, I'm all I'm all on board for that kind of thing. I love it. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of. I just want more movement based. Like, you know, we have this tick system, we have these limitations with this game, but with these limitations, we have a lot of potential as well for a ton yeah. of fun activities. I think things that are mechanically based. So, if you have to use your prayers, your movement, or clicking to attack something, all these things make for good puzzle solving solutions. Yep. especially with within sepulchre if you had to attack certain targets to like make let's say make a drawbridge drop down in time that'd be cool yeah Th things, the agility that, things raid. That, yeah it's actually things, a raid things that, things that include the, those actions are always good instead of like okay now chambers do skilling what no i don't skill i'm on good <laughs> bosses you know that kind of thing yeah Pe so. there, there are a lot of people with the mindset that this game is dying or something like that and mm. Or, or the game is getting stale, which, by the way, I mean, they have been pretty bad at coming out with releases consistently that are really fun. 
I don't know what all goes into that, but I will just say the quality of the content we're getting, especially if Raids 3 is a huge success, what I, which I really hope is, and I'm optimistic for it. I just feel like the next few years, we're going to have some great pieces of content that are far better than everything we've had before. I There's the potential for that, I think. They've set the framework as well with the engine changes. It's why the inventory is messed up and stuff, but I... they're getting to a stage <laughs> where a lot more developers, de development has happened and is now coming into play. So, yeah. We are going to get some good stuff for sure. That's exciting. Okay, so here's a question from Bell. And they ask, Hello all, hope you're all doing well. My question can be answered by any, if not all three of you. Regarding the announcement that was just made today, which is about the cheat clients, uh, they ask, Do you believe CA Diaries are in a healthy place with or without it? I do understand it's not something to be completed by just anyone. As we all know, it takes a high level of skill, time, and effort. So I think there's a... Uh, an idea going around that combat achievements are now super difficult without cheat clients, which I don't really agree with mainly because I did it without cheat clients <laughs> fairly. I mean, yes, easy. Like, yeah, I play this game a lot and stuff and I can just put a lot of time into it, but it is possible without cheat clients. Now who knows if my teammates were using cheat clients. All I know is Whoa. I wasn't using cheat clients. So um, yeah, that's, and I want to extend on this question a little bit is, do you think the rewards from CAs and do you think the difficulty has been successful so far up to this point? Like, do you think it's a good piece of content for both it's of you? A, it's actually a curse for, for Inferno because now people aren't incentivized to do uh, Inferno tasks and speedruns until they have three zones. That's true. And they get and they get blocked from it because it's just something they're not usually doing. They want to do quick speedrun Inferno, not, not like everything else. Mm-hmm. Which is understandable. On the flip side, actually getting those three is huge and provides more tasks, so great. Um, but the difficulty isn't very high across the board. I think, if anything, it just needs... It doesn't need balancing because of clients. It needed balancing before client stuff was announced. Like, the Inferno task is effectively AFK. I can sit still for 15 minutes on entering. <laughs> 18 and minutes. Uh, if you're if you're mean, yeah. I can sit still for like fifteen. Oh no, like yeah, like eighteen minutes. Yeah, I can literally sit on wave one <laughs> behind a pillar, and then I can come back and be like, oh, I'm in time to make this. Yeah. And obviously that's that's an exaggeration. That's you. For a good that's player. you. That's as well. you. <laughs> but, yeah, we got to keep that in mind. <laughs> but we are talking of a, a realistic fifteen minutes of time that is spent not attacking. Yeah. And when you consider any other bits of content like chambers or, or tub for the CA stuff. You can't afford you can't to lose 10% yeah. of your time. You actually have to make up where you have 90% yeah. attacking uptime at least. No, you're right. So, I think a 60-minute Inferno... I personally thought a 60-minute Inferno would have been like a really, first of all, clear yeah. number. And just and the same thing with the solo CM. Now, I understand. So here's where I kind of draw the line is like, I don't know if they really wanted to necessarily cap Grandmaster at like, you need a Tebow or you need a Scythe because, I mean, the CM... I got that time without having any experience with solo CMs. I mean, it was like a 3830. Like that is, I got that in like four tries yeah. and I messed up so many times, but I also had best in slot gear and I was pretty knowledgeable with all yeah. and other things. But solo, solo record sub 30. So that would consider five minutes of not attacking in the same manner. Yeah. And it's like any, any good player who is keeping up, up time on their ticks and not really just wasting time is going to be fine for those challenges, but not for top. You can't waste 10% of your time. So I, the only thing I would say for these is make the top ones a bit more lenient for regulars. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's about it, really. Maybe even bring Inferno down. Maybe bring Solisium down a little bit to like 37 and maybe Inferno down to 60. Yeah. Just minor things. But clients don't change this. Not really. What do you think about rewards? And I guess we'll also ask Exact on this like whole subject. But do you think the rewards are good? Because I feel like the rewards are really nice up to Elite. And then Master and Zuck is just Inferno based. I feel like there's nothing really more besides an aesthetically pleasing Slayer helmet. Is that fine though? Is that but what it should have been? You get extra teleports like, on. Uh, you on do things. get extra teleports with the hilt. There is, but there's just like minor tweaks. But it's infer Inferno. Uh, yeah, to the Inferno. Do I'm you... not familiar with either combat achievements or the client stuff. I, I mean, based on the previous stuff, I would just say like the. Uh, so the seg maze gets slower. So agree with Addy on mm -hmm. the top times going up a little bit. But 
What do you yeah, guys think the, about? What are the rewards? I'm not GM. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm sitting. I, I I am feeling extremely self conscious here, sitting as a hard tier completer among two <laughs> grandmasters right here. Help, please. Uh, so I, pretty much, I agree. Like I'm fine with how it is right now, but I will say, like the hardest, arguably the hardest set of tasks you have to do in this game give you next to no reward, like actual reward, mm. which is fine kind of but is that the precedent we want to make in the future is like oh this is very difficult and we're not trying mm -hmm. to force everyone to do this by having a new cape but that's kind of what the inferno felt like the inferno comes out wooks couldn't even do it for two days and uh you're coming out with a new best in slot cape so i just wonder like if the zook helmet had let's just say this is all okay like this idea i'm bringing up i'm not proposing this i'm just saying what if the zook helmet had a plus four strength bonus when oh, wearing shit. it okay. to, to everything range mage and i i'm not a fan of things that are not cosmetic but i am a fan of big cosmetic upgrades essentially well not upgrades but more cosmetics okay i just don't think <sighs> originally when jim was or when combat achievements was polled it had a accuracy defender i yep. believe yep. for elite oh, yeah Plus 30, 40 accuracy over uh, drag, uh, a Vonic. Yep. Not as strong, but more accurate. Mm -hmm. So this is the for the, for the one. Um, and it just failed, Paul. Yeah. Maybe this is a problem with the Pauls, because would that have been too strong? Well, to be honest, it wasn't really that great it, of a defender anyway. Like, people were putting no. it into calcs, and it was like, yeah, it's kind of good against these very, very, very niche situations. But you wouldn't really bring it. But, but the, the idea is the idea is that you have a bis or something coming yeah, into the game yeah. that is you know, and I, I looking at the player base that has accessibility to it, I don't think so. It's not the right place to do it. Okay. If you were if you were to create a really difficult challenge, i.e. Inferno, and put the bis at the end, a good player doesn't need like to be maxed to do Inferno. They can go get this thing if they're good at the game. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. But if you're going to create a really complex system of things where you actually do need skills, you need to compete complete with uh, clues to get mimics and stuff you want to do all bits of content in the game definitely not upgrade upgrades but more cosmetics absolutely okay cool cape cool cape or something sure you know yeah we got the cool helmet which i'm i'm pleased with Speaking i'm pleased with the rewards for the most part i'm just prestige you know, i like asking the prestige question prestige of itself <laughs> yeah speaking of heart speaking of cosmetics and add a uh, sanguine avonic to top please please Ooh. please Everyone has more sanguine kits, but that'd be cool. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. There's even been a model of that somewhere, yeah. right? Just red. By the way, what is up with that holy scythe? That looks like I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say it. It looks so bad. <sighs> it looks like garbage. Mm. But it's to the point where it's so garbage, like it's almost like ironic to wear it. You know, it's like you're like trying to be a clown. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that I, thing I, I was so. Know. They could have made that thing look so dope. They really could have, but they were so obsessed with certain designs that were just so flawed. Like, doesn't Jolinian use one though? Ah, <sighs> yeah, he does. He, does. he does. Then we can't. Then we can't talk about it. I know, but Hit. like, it's like the ironic, like clown, like being a clown, yeah. kind of like it's bad. It's just objectively a bad looking. I'm sorry, it's bad looking. One of Wait. one of my favorite Wait. sites and games was from Soul Calibur. I put a picture in chat in case. Nice. That kind of site is what I was expecting it to be like, and that, that was the picture. Been. That's what it's I clean. sent. That's what I sent to the designers who are working on Holy Scythe to be like, here's an example of something I think would be good. And it's a simple design. It looks like a scythe. It doesn't have some weird bluey glowy thing. And it clearly looks like <laughs> a, a the quote, random ass circle thing. in the middle like, with like some like, <laughs> yeah. And it, and it looks like a quote-unquote good scythe, I guess you could say, instead of like an evil one, right? I'm just going to show this. To the people that are watching the video version of this, look. Look at That's this. Holy scythe. <laughs> look at this holy scythe. Like, I'm literally showing them from the right. wiki what this thing looks right. like. It looks like a Nerf's children's toy. Like, it looks like a children's toy. <laughs> look at this. Oh, it's so terrible. I'm literally just going to send you guys this because it's absurd. Like, it honestly looks like a four-year-old's foam toy that they would start like <laughs> I don't know it looks incredibly bad that's the one that's 
well there, there aren't many things they have messed up art wise but that is honestly one of them i, I will never forgive them for this it is what is the blue supposed to be anyway dude like, i is... have no idea it is just... what is blue that's not wood it's not met why is it blue Dude, it's, it's blue. It's Sarah Doman, blue. <laughs> it's just blue. <laughs> it is so bad looking. That whole thing looks like trash. I'm it's sorry. I'm so obsessed with how bad it looks that it's just like, it pisses me off. I now, don't have to think it, about it. If if at some point they were going to do a, a revamp to it, would you want them to delete it or would give, just give it a metamorph option to change it between the two versions? Don't even metamorph it. Just change it. Like, stop <laughs> making it look like a children's toy. Like, make it's it look bad, like what huh? you presented. What you delete presented it. looks yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, just copy it exactly. No one's going to care. Literally. Like, they could do that. Uh, yeah, no. Scythe bad. Give something new. It does hit harder, though. It does hit harder, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> More consistent, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the other really bad-looking armor or just, like, stuff is uh, Dragonstone armor. You guys ever seen that? That stuff that comes from the elven chests? That uh, yeah. Yeah. stuff that just plastered dragon stones that look like plastic all over your body and you look <laughs> weird and deformed and stuff yeah it's, it's, bad. it's very odd i don't mind there being quirky armor sets i, I think if it's if, it, if it's a high level item and it's really going to be used a lot it should have some more consideration as to what actually that's true uh i mean the red scythe was a community design wasn't it yeah, that uh, I, good I thing that passed because they were really yeah. trying to oppose it. Like they were like, "Oh, that's not Sarah Dome thing." Like nobody cares. Just it looks cool. Um, that was Foxy, really... right? Foxy C. It was Foxy. Yeah, he, he made one for the rapier, I believe, and maybe the Avonic. But his designs are just in general good. I will say the holy rapier looks cool because it's so simple. It's just the little. I, I, I also like gold. it. Yeah, it's not got a blue ring around the hilt or something. It's, exactly. just, it's just simple. Um. The, the strangest thing is like this. It, I think I think the um, the holy scythe is one of the few things in game that has some glowing effect added to it, or some disassociated part of it that isn't actually attached. Everything else is very much like you know. If you have a look at Vigoras, it's actually got a chain on it with a thing at the end. Yeah. It's like a witchkin thing. Yeah. Every other item is like a sword. It's like it's not some like glowing handle that kind of like extends out. It is actually a sword. And then the holy scythe is like what? It's yeah, just what yeah. It's just it's not quite right. But. Okay, Whale asks, how do blobs work? No. I've got this. So, so <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Look, look, Whale, all there is is, if there's a mage and a blob, you, you do one, you do one blob cycle where the blob reaches you and the mage hits you, uh, and it hits you with range, and the AFK part is because two ticks later, you pray range, and then you can pray mage for fucking ages because the... The blob, because the blob that hit you with mage, and <laughs> and the next cycle you let it, you let it read you on mage. So you're essentially yes. doing, you're essentially no. doing, you, you, you're getting a blob mage here, and then a blob read, both with mage. Oh, I don't fucking know. That clip, by the way, is just glorious. That that edit that mofo made, I think. Yeah, glorious. Uh, you have to you have to show that. I I'm actually not familiar with it. Oh, you got. Oh, I got a. Oh my god! I'll, I'll have to find it. I'll link it to you guys later. <laughs> Sounds good, you at least, because if you haven't seen it, it's yes. just Adwam trying to explain the whole like blob thing, and there's all of a sudden like these equations. no way that was Adwam. <laughs> <laughs> there's like these <laughs> equations flowing by and stuff. Like it's pretty crazy. It's funny. Um, actually, you know what? I see this question, and uh, we've, we we kind of talked about it, but I don't know if we asked a specific thing to exact. Uh. H asks, what was your favorite and least favorite thing about playing a one defense hardcore Iron Man? Oh, actually, Addy, uh, that, that, that's a question to you, right? You, you played the account for me, and uh, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was actually all Addy, so I'm not sure. All Addy. I, did, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't play it. Um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Off the record. Um... Yeah, that's that's a really interesting question, actually, because uh, there were, I mean, it, it was a strange, th it, it's like a lot of RuneScape things. It's very painful, but addictive, too, I guess, like super annoying grinds some places. Um, because of the one defense, you were, um, you'd be limited in your skilling and your... Yeah. Um, less dps when you're trying to do bosses or just grinding for anything anything is just a bigger grind um 
But from that limitation came a lot of interesting challenges and I uh, learned a lot of new things, um, learned how to... Uh, I, I learned a lot of PVM just from that playing that account. Uh, doing Zora without completely getting massacred, uh, doing flicking God War stuff. Um, yeah, what else is interesting? Coming the limitations and then coming up with methods for the later content uh hard mode tob so that includes addy that includes the whole team math ham parrot includes president uh i'm so the president mr president everyone who helped with that frosty C-Pill. yeah yeah team, team is endless it wasn't just four people it was people who came in on rotation over and over yeah for sure the whole team i a cold one stopped in for some raids oh my goodness um but just like overcoming the limitations and figuring out what you can actually do. Um, and like I mentioned at the start, the challenges kind of just got more and more ridiculous. And I was like, yeah, this is, this, this is, I'm, I'm going to go for Fasani's and not be able to wear the armor and just be ragging it with like a, whatever, n- naked armor set. Yep. Um, and I'm going to die doing it because either I'm going to DC or I'm just going to die. Um, same thing with hard mode and just uh, finding those like routes and still, I, I guess, just overcoming the challenge. Um, that was the fun part of it. And Your it account it... got so far. Yeah. And it wouldn't continue to go far. I mean, if it were for <laughs> that, like just unlucky streak of not being able to get past Verzik. But like, of course, IRL obligations and everything like that. But your account was, I mean, people were... Just claiming you were like had the greatest hardcore account of all time, which is it's just insane. I didn't even I scale. I mean, <laughs> the, the items were good, but like there was also some stuff that I didn't get to do. Uh, Corp was, yeah. I think, oh, um, so, in a pot. Yes. Oh my goodness, that <laughs> that's a really cool one to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. So, I was going to make a video on this, but fine, I'll spoil a little bit. Um, the armadillo method that um, I came up with uh, along with a fellow player named 9900, I think. I'm not sure how he puts those numbers. 9900, anyhow. Um, We came up with the armadillo flicking method, uh, which was the only way that I wanted to do armadillo boss on the one defense hardcore. So usually armadillo is just worst nightmare on a one defense account because oh, yeah. you get wrecked by the boss the minions just kill you and you have to camp pray ranged because if you don't you get hit do the big die yeah. <laughs> yes um and just i don't know that was the final boss that i just left untouched on that account and then coming up with a method to do that boss without dying and without defense uh, was just it was just so much fun we we went through everything we did some like simulations we looked at um, just lots of different mechanics and it's a hard method uh, but just so satisfying to do um, what ended up happening was we came up with a method where we step under Kree to slow it down to the minion cycle flick all three minions still get destroyed on the one defense because Kree has a magic attack as well yeah. um but it was just yeah it was fun um knowing that the stack if you mess up miss all three minions plus uh Kree is like the damage is like 120 or something so yeah just just don't mess up um that was that was a lot of fun too both doing the method as well as um as well as streaming it Good yeah fun. kriara is one of those weird bosses that's just, it's so different than most it is yeah it's just like the whole pushing mechanic and the pulling and you sometimes if you're doing like the walk under method like that's annoying it's like the whole thing just feels wonky it's yeah really, it comes up strangest. to you and starts milling you yeah. <laughs> yeah it's super strange for god wars it's like completely out of there yeah 
made a lot more harder on a one def as well. Like most things don't scale as badly in the game for that. Like you can do top on a one def yeah, pretty yeah. easily, but but Criara no, and then a hard the worst what? scaling piece of content for one defense, I think. Yeah, uh, out of maybe even maybe Nex is also terrible, but I don't know how much you need to tank it next. I I didn't play much of that, but yeah, Cree probably is the worst boss for uh, like if you don't have defense, you just die. And so while that was horrible, and while it was like you know fifty kills uh, for the hard combat diary, I think is what I went for. Didn't even get any loot in that. Oh, I was going for the AGS because it's like okay, God Sword set on the one defense hardcore, and Armadillo was like the brick wall to that. So I was yeah. like AGS. I would like I would like that. I ended up practicing on the main for twenty kills and got it, and then I couldn't. <laughs> get it. Yeah, but it's over. Um, nope. Yeah, so lots of pain, but also I'm I, I felt satisfied just doing that method and showing that it worked. I think. Um, the other guy who worked on it uh, plays a 45 defense iron and used that method to get the grandmaster task of a 30 kill trip. So that was really cool too. On another, a pure? Another use. On a, uh, 45. a 45. 45. Oh, Jesus. Berserker. That's insane still. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like the just going off of Criara. I had this little method. I just hated Criara because I felt like the method, if you didn't want to catch chins on an Iron Man, was just Tebow walk under Bulwark bullshit. Um, yeah. And then I was just like, you know what? Let me just make this as easy as possible. So when instances came out, you can guarantee off tick the minions every single kill if you just stand in the very corner. Um, and then what I did is, like, I don't like being pushed back either. I find that it interrupts my flow. And so I just stand <laughs> in the very corner. And then every five ticks, flick on the Tebow, hit Criara, flick on the Bulwark again. And then by the end of the... By the time Cree dies, you're already in the rhythm of having every minion off ticked. And it's just really nice. But again, that's more oh, that's for, nice. like, mains that have defense to spare. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. So... That was a really comfortable way to get the 30 kills, by the way, without any chins or anything. Oh, oh really? Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Nice. Here's a question from Sani. He asks, for all three, who were your biggest inspirations when you started learning high-level PBM? Hey, oh, you know boy. what? I'll go first for this because he's asking all three. So yeah. for me, uh, first of all, I always, when, when I started my Iron Man, I always looked up to Say Allo. He was an Iron Man that was oh just, goodness. he was rank one for a time. He was so into skilling. He was so into PVM. He loved raids. He loved item collecting. He loved clue scrolls. He just felt like the overall Iron Man that's just, you're a beast. And he was also just a cool ass dude. Um, and so he, him improving at the game and stuff was a big like motivator for me to get better. And same with Ladius and... Uh, Lake and P I mean Lake was already just leagues ahead of me and stuff but I just remember watching these people and be like this is motivating and then you know what I got to give a shout out to a person named Dat from Iron Clan he was a person that got an Infernal Cape really early on as Iron Man and I was in that clan and I just remember thinking like there was like maybe two people in the entire Iron Man clan that had an Infernal Cape six months after and Dat was one of them, and that was a huge motivator because I was like, I want to be one of those prestigious people in Iron Clan that has a Infernal Cape on an Iron Man. I think that's just a cool flex. So that kind of pushed me. When, once I got my Tebow, finally I grinded for my Tebow, 20 KC. I started working on the uh, Infernal Cape, and that was kind of my motivators to get good at high-level PVM at least. What about you, Addy? We'll go Addy first and then Exact. For me, I don't know if I actually ended up watching too many players who were super high level. My intro to Twitch was a fellow named G Woody at the time. Who G I think Woody. We might, we might know. I don't, I don't think he streams too much right now. He doesn't. Or hasn't done for a while. But I always... Uh, he was like my intro to streaming within Old School. And then from him, Alan Dito. Who... Interesting. They, both both G Woody and Alan. I love Alan. their streams so yeah. much. Um... They're just amazing people. Their streams are always fantastic. And they were kind of like doing this mid... Like, they were still doing Endgame. But it wasn't like ultra high level. Mm -hmm. And I guess around that time, not really many people were. Um, of course, like Latias, Lake, uh, Rocket, to some extent, I think was around the time as well. And they were, they were also in that same sort of like... Maybe a bit more elevated into the bracket of high level mm -hmm. content. Rice Cup actually got me into 
Solar CM, which was a huge factor for my early streaming, where I was also doing like 800 Solar CMs or something stupid at the time. Um, but Rice Cup was initially there for that was, I was like, the, my memory of Rice Cup is him chopping muted old tree with an Elyon. Really distinctive to me, and maybe it's not meta, but like that's just one of the th images. Yeah. Like I wanted to, I wanted to be there, I wanted to do that, I wanted yeah. to have that here and, and do that. So that was that was definitely one for me. Uh, Letu, Letu Lania, Letu, I miss that Letu guy. was just just really fun challenges like Ballista Zuck. I was like, what's going on? I don't even <laughs> understand it. I never even looked at Inferno before. I'm I'm seeing a guy dark bow and Ballista Zuck. That's just fun, really fun stuff. And then for Inferno, it would have to be Jarvan and uh, Adwam. And then Neon on YouTube would be my, my three go-tos around that time. Very cool. Yeah. Exact, what about you? So I was trash at PVM until I started learning solo raids from Wooks's guide. Um, so I improved a little bit on Chambers. And then I was like, okay, let's do some Inferno. I was tra still trash. I got absolutely wrecked by inferno it's like so hundred something think. attempts See, or something let's just take a break right here for all the listeners these these people are like exact as a human being i mean he had to struggle sure? everyone has to struggle and sometimes <laughs> we miss we miss we just think that people are born gods you know like they had to struggle to get to the point they got to i mean even Wooks, it was it was a struggle on a trial and error yep. the wise, wise words from the host here absolutely um, very true Anyway, I think sorry what I learned in front of that. No, no, no worries, man. That's <laughs> that's um that's good stuff. I, I think I learned from Charles's guide, actually. Yeah. Um, the OG. The OG. The OG. Yeah, I still I still see his posts on uh Twitter every now and then. Yep. Um so that's really nice. Uh and I was still pretty bad then, but I think when I um first saw like videos on YouTube and other videos on YouTube and Twitch to that were like inspiring me to get better. I would say you mentioned Ladias. Yep. So good. Oh my God. So, so clean talented. and just like, yeah, that man is talented. Like some of us, like you were just saying, some of us have to work hard to, to, to <laughs> Ladi has never had that to man, work. No, 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 no. <laughs> but he's the exception. He's, he just gets it. He is he's, I asked him once, like, how do you do this no pillar thing? Like, is there some like tricks that you use to off take everything? No, he's just like, yeah, I just feel it. Dude, like, well, yeah. I just feel like he, he, he was a drum player. I mean, he has that natural rhythm. I'm pretty that sure. Must be. Like, you know how there's perfect pitch that people just can naturally have? I'm pretty sure there's, like, something called perfect, perfect rhythm, rhythm, probably. And yeah, just yeah. More <laughs> yeah. But, okay, let me just br bring up, a, a, to interrupt once again, nobody cares about what I'm about to say. But I will just say, there is a, a point where you get to playing any sort of rhythm game where you just start feeling it, you know? Like, I remember first learning how to one-tick flick, and it was a counting game in my head. I was hyper focused on every single thing that's happening and then that would just mess feels me up. like effort and then yeah and start. then you start getting that like four tick rhythm where you're like you're mm -hmm. flicking against two different monsters and it's no longer counting it's just like i don't know you're just feeling that little rhythm back and forth yes and uh, that's a really great feeling to get because it means that like, you've learned and it's starting to like ingrain in you anyway. the most the most Two obvious places I've ever noticed this is one, doing Bandos flicking on League when I did it for the first time and understanding this off tick of the Bandos boss cycle against the minions. Yeah. And the second was pretty commonly within the Inferno is Tebow five tick versus major four tick yeah. and one ticking everything. See, I learned that from DKs, believe it or not. I learned from mm -hmm. Prime, Tebowing Prime. And there was a time, I even remember Alfie. I remember vividly watching Alfie do the fight caves and he was one tick flicking the majors. I'm like, you are suicidal like why would you ever want to you could mess up at any point but he was so confident with it and then i remember yeah. going to prime and, and i would almost purposely wait for supreme to spawn so i could start learning comfortably how to like off tick prime and supreme now it is still dangerous because prime can still hit you like 60 but that was where i started to learn the whole like five tick shooting four tick two different monsters attack i don't know it was cool it's cool to challenge yourself like that yeah, I think that was Inferno for me. Where that got the uh, got the sense of like, oh, this is this is four ticks. 
This is yeah. This talk, is we're, I think we're, we're all talking about the stage where Inferno goes from being a, like a, just a standard MMO game to a rhythm game, right? It's it's that threshold that we're trying. I to haven't play. reached that, by you, the way. I'm just gonna you, state right now, I am bad at Inferno. Yeah. But yeah, go ahead. You, you well, this is this is odd because I, I can respect the idea that everything is very much tile based and systematic and uh, in rhythm, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't personally ever get that feeling of counting stuff, ever. And I know other players when they do something like six jazz will just feel out the ticks on you know ba 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 ba, and I can't do that. I have to just think and look at it and react. I've tried it many times, and I, I played musical instruments a lot as well, and I just don't get it at all. Really? I used to. I, it, it was to the point where I've said it before that I don't think old school's a rhythm game. That's just how I used to think because it never appealed to me. No, not appealed, but it never like hit me in that way. Dude, and now I get I get that it is, but it's not. It still doesn't hit me in that way. I think so six. I think six jads is the uh, content I'm most comfortable with, where I can actually go into a flow state. Mm. And t but I, I'm not proficient enough to get out of the flow state and not mess up because like I'll be in the flow state and then you know when you get like hyper aware of like that you're in a flow state and then you get out of the flow state and then you me mess everything up. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but if I get into a flow state with six jads, it's just comfortable. Just don't think, don't think. And then don't think, because as soon as I think about it, or as soon as my, my leg has an itch, Correct. it's over. It's just like, no, I can't focus. Dude, very off topic, but it's the same thing with Guitar Hero. I got to the point with Guitar Hero where I was trying to gold star songs, not missing a single note, keeping the streak alive. And oh my God. that whammy bar. So in order to get maximum points, you actually had to whammy every single long note that was in a star power thing. You never try to get as much star power as possible. Dude, the whammy bar would be the leading cause of me messing up because my finger, like my, my pinky would start itching a little bit. And then that's, I would ho hyper focus on my pinky about it's kind of itching with the whammy bar right there. Anyway, very off topic, but I get out of flow states very easily when I start hyper analyzing what's happening with my body. It's weird. Yeah, I, don't think I, I feel like, yeah, I, actually, no, I, I mean, for me, it's like you can think about it. I, I can think about something really hard and do it, or I can just do it without thinking. If I try and mix the two and think about some things right. and flow state the rest of it or flow state some things and then start thinking, I can't switch between the two very well, I feel like. Yeah. Me neither. Completely off topic again. My favorite game, probably ever, something I don't really play much anymore, is Beat Saber for this idea of float state, flow stating, where you can hone that mechanical ability and like the correct timing, and then you just ramp it up to a twenty with an expert plus 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 song, and it's just so much fun. I've never played. I'm that. sure I've seen it though. It looks so addicting. Yeah. I used to be very 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 good, and then it was I don't know, it kind of just fell off for me for a bit. No, nothing like new coming out that I enjoy. They kind of like went a bit crazy with the the song building, but so so much fun. That's cool. I don't know. If we, we were on the question. Yeah. What's that? I, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if we finished. Uh, exactly. We were on the question <laughs> about <laughs> yeah, the, the inspiration. So no, no yeah. worries. I love that. But yeah. it would be sacrilege to go on without mentioning Mr. Adwam yes. for the Inferno. Yes. That met that he was the man for Inferno oh, for. Yeah. All of the earth, I mean, oh, yeah. just yeah, from, Inferno, from the release. Inferno on lockdown for like two years. Like, no one could touch him, right? At least on Twitch. Like, they were, I think Jolin was doing runs, but Adam like pioneered a lot of stuff, especially on Twitch, like promoting it and doing all that. He yeah, made it look so easy. He, just he made, made low combat capes what they are. He made speed running what it is, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's a king. Yeah. I was like, who is this guy? I want to try some of this <laughs> silly stuff that he's doing. And then I tried it. I got completely wiped. Really? And I was like, okay, yeah. let's go again. And then just get better over time. Um, and then one day, this man uh, comes by my stream while I'm doing Inferno. I'm just <laughs> completely starstruck. Like, wait, is that the real, the real Adwam? Oh, gosh. oh my god. <laughs> Good guy. I really he is just so players. humble and so fun to be around too. Yeah, just yes. like that perfect balance of just like chill but talented, but doesn't have to flex it because everyone knows he's just a god. Oh, he, oh, he can be arrogant. No, no, <laughs> but yeah, oh. you're right. <laughs> I just I love that he mentioned that. Uh, he he was just saying in the cast last week about how Rendy was like scouting waves way back in the Inferno, and then Adam came into his stream and was like, "So you're gonna 
now not cheat right like you're gonna you're gonna do a cape where you're doing oh. scouting and stuff it was just oh. funny because because at the time it was just so like against the whole point of inferno but then that yeah. uh, scouting ended up just being so commonplace necessary for low combats anyway exactly it's funny how like no main accounts scout you would think like wave 63 64 like the difficult well 62 63 main yeah. accounts it's it's not popular people don't trust yeah. they can do it or i don't i mean just firsthand it's, i wouldn't want to scout because i've never done it before i don't even know no, it, the it, exact it, it, mechanic it, to do it i think if someone made a really like made a guide and like popularized this as this is a this is a feasible thing you can do it probably would get gain some traction because it's probably the most singularly strong thing you can do oh yeah like it's gotta be right it's very odd that no one's like put it out there as hey this is just something you can do and this yeah. is how and whatnot yeah, I was considering putting it in my guide, but I mm. think at the time it, it, it was ruins... on that line of like, what doing? And it kind of like, it, you, you touched on something, right? It, it kind of like removes the point of Inferno to some extent. If you yeah. know what's going to happen and you're not reacting and you're just like, okay, I solve this by planning. Is it really, are you really doing the Inferno or is this just like cheese? Yeah. It's kind of more cheese. So. But, yeah, it yeah. just depends how you look at it. Because you still have to execute. Even if you have right. like everything, yeah. like, you still got to not miss flicks and stuff so mm -hmm. all right here's a question from odios he asks is there any content that you wish had more going for it for example better xp drops clues maybe better rewards gp etc i'm slightly salty because back when sepulchre was released i pushed really hard for them to add clues because I thought it was really fitting. And I got <laughs> shut down from so many people across the board, including the J-Mods. Just everybody was like, no, we're never going to do that. Shit idea, fuck you. <laughs> and then fast track, back, fast track, like two two years, whatever. And it's like, well, Clues. Clues are here. Sepulchre. I'm just like, what the fuck? Why? Like, how, how has my idea got so lost in translation yep. that I simply wanted Clues from a reasonable rate? Not competitive, just to be from Sepulchre. Yep. And other skilling activities, for that matter. I love just like, you, Adicon, for just I don't know. stating that. Because <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, it's like, just pain. Like, you're not a clue enthusiast as much as I am. And the fact that you right. promote that, I'm just so happy that somebody else agrees with me. I, I try, I've try. i tried more and more to disassociate myself from the idea of being a PVMer and necessarily wanting PVM things, and much more like looking for the overall health of the game. That's because cool. it's it's much more important to look after that than just what you want. Because if you just look after what you want, you're not going to so the game's not going to thrive at the end of the day. And the more people who get into it, no matter what the reason, the more people are going to end up being there for PVM. Yep. But it's not just that. It's just like, if you see an improvement to something, it doesn't hurt to try and improve it. I think it's just, it can never be bad to put it out there as an idea. Anyway, I'm still salty. That was the point. <laughs> and um, I would li I like to see clues from, just like clues from pretty much every bit of content. It can be absolute crap rates. Just give them the option. I totally agree. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Give clues um, on every boss. I okay. My main, my literally, my main agenda or quote unquote, you know, whatever you want to call it. My main thing I'm going for right now is I just wish skilling had a competitive skill or a clue rates because it's just dominated by killing monsters. It's like I understand that's been what clues have been for the majority of time is like just kill a monster one in one twenty eight for a hard clue, but like it'd be kind of cool to turn the tide and get some breaks from skilling because like that is where you would really want a distraction and diversion from doing let the me, same let, skilling over and over like get a clue scroll boom distract let, let me flip let me flip this entirely for a new take okay a lot of the times clues come from doing pvm or doing skilling in both cases you're working towards either pvm goals or skilling grinds mm -hmm. what if what if there's just nothing attached to it what if you just do an activity that rewards exclusively clues and I think there is kind of that. Well, with mains, there's implings kind of, and there's shades of Morton kind of. But you know, shades has that little bit of XP. Yeah, but yeah it, it really implings is like clues. terrible. Implings rates like the clues per hour is probably only effective for uh, medium clues, right? Yeah, I, I guess. Well, like, mediums and easies, mm -hmm. and hard if you want to. Is it? I, I don't know the money. From... I don't. I don't know the GP and stuff with it, but. But you can't sit down and farm hards at a competitive rate. I'm talking about like a method that would gain you these clues faster than anything else in the game because you are only going for the clues. You're not like oh, getting yeah, Serapis yeah, yeah. KC as well. Yeah. And, that, and to me, that would seem fair. Yeah. See, and I actually, I, going for. I believe that the next clue expansion, I just have a really, uh, 
I don't know. I just imagine this could be a thing is a clue hunters guild. And mm-hmm. I think that and I'm not going to bring up any ideas right now because Ooh. it's just too long. But I really do think there could be a guild where it is really centered on clue hunting and like there's items that can boost rates and things like that for people that just really want to focus on clue scrolls because uh, I don't know. Relocate, we'll relocate, mimic there as well for what it's worth. Probably Dude, good. listen to this. I'm a drum. By the way, he was brought up earlier. Grats on his infernal cape. He Zing. and I both think that the mimic should drop. A metamorphic bloodhound dust at a oh. one at a one in twenty, one in fifty, whatever it is, how many mimics you need to kill, that could be up to balance sake. Uh, but a a dust that you can get, and so instead of the mahogany plank, you'd get a a dust, and that can be used oh on the God. bloodhound to change into a mini mimic that bounces around behind you. Thoughts? That don't would make, be don't the make, rarest don't, pet. Don't make the rate too high, and yeah. Yeah, I was thinking sure. like a one in twenty-five, maybe a one in fifty. Nah, consider consider how like dry you could potentially go. That is true. I that would, is a good point. One in one in ten max, I would say. One in, really? Yeah. There max? are there are ten yeah. people on the high scores in all of the game with more than one hundred. I'm gonna events. I'm yeah. gonna say I'm gonna, gonna go with a comfy one in twenty five would be the lowest in mm. my opinion because I still want it to be somewhat rare. But tw- listen, listen to this: twenty five mimics is only like four hundred masters. That's a lot of masters. No, I know, but time, it's, four, it's less than a thousand to... masters, is what I'm trying to but, say. But now assume you go five x rate. But um, uh, assume you go five x rate to bloodhound. Assume uh, you went for bloodhound then... first, and then you have to imagine <laughs> what, bro? What if fucking? But Casey you would get goes... the dust because of... Casey has 135 <laughs> mimics. Oh, Jace has like 200 something. By so the if way, the rate is Casey and, did a lot Casey... of. Casey didn't have mimics for a large portion of the masters he did because mimics uh, came out in 2019. Yeah. He would okay. be at way more than that because he would be at uh, what is six thousand divided by fifteen, whatever that is. At least three. Four hundred. Yeah. yeah, four. He would be at four hundred mimics at least. Yeah. So. So he'd probably have it, but consider one in twenty five. That's not asking. Well, pretty much. pretty much nobody's going to yeah, do that much. Casey. I, I I don't know. One one in. I'll reason with you. One in twenty max. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll go with a one. And, in may, 20. and, and maybe. But the idea is nice. The idea is nice. Yeah. <laughs> That or, thing is so disgusting, though, with yeah. the, the the slimy stuff coming out of it. It's a cool <laughs> boss, though, that doesn't really... Uh... Stuff uh... <laughs> okay, I it, it, might need to cut that one. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, it is like, like the, some the... weird tentacles that are falling out. I have no idea what it is. Sebe has 68 KC on Mimic. Mimic. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. That would just be so rare to see that. Yeah, it would be rare, but it would also be just a cool little thing, just a trans modification. If, you... if you loved clues, you'd eventually get it. Cool idea could be if you get like, if you did have this new guild, let's say, and you move like the mimic chest over there, have different tiers of mimic for different types of clues. The level easy mimic, medium mimic, hard mimic, and then it reward, reward like the Ooh. rare stuff on that clue. If you're doing a clue with skills, may as well do like a mimic expansion, just yeah. little stuff. Yeah, no, for real. But, but and then you'd have chances for like from the easy one it could be one in one thousand from the medium like one in five hundred whatever. So I you get more chances across the board. I also just thought it would be cool is if you know how on the mimic table you get like fifteen raw mantas or like mm-hmm. some crap. That'd be kind of cool if there was a pretty common drop from mimics that's like a hundred sweets or like something like ooh mm-hmm. that was a juicy drop not like some crap. I don't know. I just wish sweets were a bit more. Sure. Anyway. About Addy, that. your investment. Uh, what investment? <laughs> how, much, how much of your did Addy? Did you have your sweet stacks last time? He gave away a ton of those sweets. I don't know. Yeah, about seven hundred k gone. I think. That for? Jesus, I've had them for like three and a half years at this point, and it's one of the best investments in the game of all time. It's like oh my five, God. It's like a five bill profit or something. It's like the best. There's, 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 there's not many five bill profit <laughs> merchants, but. Ultimately, I give it away, so it doesn't count for me any. But yeah, okay, still fun. Do we have any more on uh, the uh, content? We wish we had more going for it. I think I just kind of went on a ramble, so I don't know if you guys have even answered that. I can't uh, genuinely can't remember. Is there anything else? I think most things are in a good place. Okay. Uh, as much as I would love old content to be renewed, like Nex and Fasani and. and chambers to some extent still it's just it's getting a bit old having to revisit stuff let's focus on the new stuff and make sure the new stuff is really good 
And if it's not quite right on, on release, let's take action immediately to change it to make it better. Let's focus on that, not the old stuff, because I don't think they quite get the old stuff right at this point. Here's one thing from Remcave that I'm looking at. There's one thing in particular I want to ask that he asks. Do you think a comp cape should be in the game? That's the biggest thing. Uh, we've covered a little bit of the other things he's mentioned, but what, what are your thoughts on a comp cape, guys? Exact has 92 defense. I don't think his opinion is valid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Continue, though. Continue. <laughs> I have just been flamed to the ground. And... <laughs> what do you, what are your thoughts on it, though? Exact? Comp Gabe, do you have any thoughts? Do you, do you have any care? I don't think I'm... Addy says I'm not allowed to... I'm not even allowed to think about it. No, he's, he's just, like, right behind me right now. I'm thinking about Comp Gabe, and uh, Addy says no. You, your opinion? I, um... Hmm. I mean, people would go for it, for sure. And it would be something that like wouldn't include like it wouldn't be like you must complete all collection log slots slots because people would want to have it right yeah um i'll just share yeah go for my it. uh thoughts on it i don't think a comp cape is a great addition to the game mainly because it encourages voting no to things because if anything's going to come out it's probably going to be a, a requirement to your comp cape and if you already have uh. one you don't want to do this and you'll vote no but on the other hand i i had an idea for a while of a wieldable collection log book in your offhand and that would upgrade every 100 slots you'd get a new little design on it like it would look cooler like more more badass and um, that would pretty much be the incentive. Like, that would be the comp cape. It would be a wieldable collection log book that clearly visualizes how many collection logs you've had uh, every 100. So it would actually encourage voting yes to updates because if you're really close to that next 100, but there's a lot of hard things you need to get, like a new oh, piece yeah, of content yeah. would encourage More you. More slots. Yeah. And Aesthetically wise, I like it. This is a little yeah. addition to it that I thought would be kind of neat. You know how there's god pages from clues that are completely useless nowadays, basically? That are sure. just floating around the game, a bunch of god pages nobody uses. Buy them now, mm -hmm. buy them that way. I, I was, mean, I was sell thinking, them now to me. <laughs> think, think about this. This might be OP. I was considering initially, what if the collection log book had an unlimited teleport to the Varrock Museum? And then you know what I thought? I thought, how cool would it be if n instead, or maybe it, it's unlocked at like a thousand collection logs, or whatever the number would be, it unlocks the ability to teleport to any library in the game. So any library that's Ooh. throughout the game, you just have a list. So it's kind of like an achievement diary pull up. It just pulls up all the locations you can oh have. Goodness. But it costs one god page per teleport. <laughs> so it's not free. But now these god pages actually have a use because you'd shove them into your collection logbook and you can teleport to any <laughs> library in the game. Very strange ideas, I know, but that that's what I was thinking. I was like, that's kind of cool. I have never thought about the amount of libraries or their locations. I have no idea the... either. I'm just thinking of Archaeus Library, yeah. Barok Library. Okay, yep, yep. Uh, that's pretty much all I can think of. It would be relatively that's convenient awesome. teleports. I don't think it would be a vote no. I think it just needed a bit more consideration, yeah. but... It's interesting. Hmm. What are your thoughts, Addy, on Comp Cape? I would like it if it included Grandmaster Combat Achievements, Achievement Diaries, Quest Cape, Zaya Favor, um, and things like this, which aren't particularly music like cape. Music Cape. Yeah. Things that weren't like 200 mil all and all pets and yeah. things like that. Yeah. 2000 KC top chambers. I don't want that. I want the idea of completing the foundation of the game in the sense of my skills and all the all the stuff in the the quest list and stuff like greening out stuff minus the collection log basically. Yes. Yes. That's what I want. And I I would support it whether it be like a max cape trimmed or a comp cape. I don't think it should be really strong. Maybe it kept, gets like a couple more TPs, but mostly just again cosmetic. Um I heard some cool ideas of like Make it so it requires a threshold of collection logs, like 1,000 slots again, is a mm -hmm. decent one. But I don't know how on board I am with that. I, I feel like that's just going to force people to do the content that they don't really want to do. Um, and I get that stuff like GM isn't necessarily stuff they want to do, but it's completable and consistently not too difficult. So 
compared to collection or completion, it's just not happening. So yeah, it's it's not arbitrary. It's like a set amount. Cool. Yeah, I'd but, be okay yeah. with that. Where it's very clear mm -hmm. what it is. It's not like oh, do a bunch of castle or do a bunch of trouble run, like do a bunch of random yeah. stuff. Exactly. All right. Here's a topic from Duck Chris. Any interest in a mechanical mastery approach to other games, RS3 or something totally different? Yes. Just just make, master all the mechanics of chess. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> chess is a very beautiful game. When you're watching two grandmasters go at it head to head, it's a it's pretty cool. Is it mechanical mastery yeah. though? I don't think it's mechanical. I think it's. I think it's the mechanics it's, of moving your. I need to figure out how to move my knight up one all, square. En passant. En passant. Yeah, the, it's that's more of an application of knowledge and memory. Yeah. Than it is mechanical skill. I assume that's more. That's true. I agree with that. So, so you know, take a game like CS:GO. It's almost like ninety percent mechanical skill, ten percent move. Well, it's more like sixty percent aim. Oh, it's 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 a, it's a huge emphasis on aim because if you just shoot that's someone, that's mechanics, though. I think is that that's that's what that's what I mean. Yeah, right? what so, is mechanics? Is it yeah, the what, physical act of doing it. something in the game, or is it actually like you know in in OSRS we I think have physical, yeah. mechanics, yeah, which is like concepts, which is not physical, and that's a lot true. of people say, oh, you know. They associate exact with wow. mechanics, and I'm like, no, I'm I'm trash at moving my mouse, I would but say, I'm okay at thinking about stuff. I would say mechanical mastery is in physically moving mouse and clicking effectively. Yeah, that's what and I would compared go with to compared too. to mechanics, right? So, but I think people mean that differently when they talk about it in really? uh, RS. Yeah, yeah people are people like are mechanics, like so. Is people saying, is so people uh, saying mechanic. mechanical. People say mechanical mastery as in mastering mechanics as opposed to yeah mechanical. Oh, that's actually. so weird. I, I've never thought of that. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Yet. I'll have to ask yeah. people to clarify now because that may actually be a thing. I've, I think people I, I've both. had a very clear, maybe. I've always had a clear distinction that mechanical mastery applies to movement, prayer flicking, um, gear switches, those kind of things. It's yeah. how you move your mouse. It's, it's your inputs into the game. Basically. Okay, so mechanics in chess is literally moving your pawn forward. <laughs> right. So, it's, so, so, so in chess, in chess, it just doesn't apply. Right. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, so, for what's what's a good other game for this? Because I I play uh, Rocket League, which is fairly mechanical. I play some CS:GO. I play more Overwatch recently. Uh, I love battle royale shooters. As for mechanical mastery, it's an interesting one because there's not a lot of muscle memory in those games. Yeah. You can have set pieces for shooting, but there's nothing like a switch in old school. There's nothing like there's nothing like doing maybe like four to one where you have to be very preci precise with your clicks and stuff. So I don't know if it's something that really translates effectively. It's 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 a much more important skill in old school because it applies across the board. But another game does just like learn to aim for the most part. That's interesting. Hmm. Uh, what about you, Exact? Do you have any? Uh, I don't interest? play as many other games, but Me I neither. That's could I be think. interested. Oh, we are we only OSRs? I'm kind oh, of only maybe. OSRs, and I play chess here and there. But for the Me most too. part, I've been like trying to. I've been having a few interests outside of just the internet and screens in general lately, but. I don't know. I don't know if I could really invest so much time into other games. And I still like OSRS a lot. And I would love to just improve at this game. I like get to a comfortable... Which I already feel like I'm at a comfortable point with this game. But I like... I like being comfortable with my game that I love. And I'm decent at it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I kind of like that. It's, I like that comfort. Also, we've been playing it for this many years. I think it's too late. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Although no. I have been yeah. very interested watching some streams of um, both RS3, um, just in general, as well as some of the Dark Souls series. Elden Ring? And I, um, I haven't watched Elden Ring, but before that, just watching the speedruns. I was okay. su suggested to do this by a friend. Um, he was like, um, yeah, like the the mechanics are... Oh, no, it's not this. The mechanics are... <laughs> The the you know like the the dodges and stuff is similar to like you have to do certain tricks similar to prayer flicking and you might like it or something. And oh, 
Watching yeah. Molgo Kirby do Elden Ring has been really nice to watch because he's really mechanically gifted here in oh OSRS. And then watching him do Elden Ring, he kind of... It, it, there's a lot of memory to it because each boss has its own mechanics. You just have to kind of memorize what combos they're doing and then just, you know, dodge them. Yes. But, yeah, Elden Ring would be really fun to get really good at, I think. That would take a lot of practice. There's people that are so good at it. And it's not tick-based. I mean, it is like precision, like milliseconds, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. So. Okay. There's definitely this weird sense of um, now that you mentioned like playing OSRS versus you know other games, sometimes it feels like because there's such a sense of like accumulation of progress on OSRS, I feel feel like that's one of the things that keeps that would keep me coming back to the game. And do do you feel that as well? I would say it's the biggest selling point of the game, and it's what it does the best is the feeling of progression. Yep. No, other I... games don't have it to that extent. I feel like a, there's a lot of people that have probably burnt out from this game. I'm assuming major, vast majority of people have burnt out from this game, but then they have this overwhelming craving later on when they've just basically dropped this game completely. They have this craving that comes on later, maybe a few months, maybe just a week, maybe like a couple of years, where it's like, I want OSRS. Like, this is the only really? thing I want. Like, it's just this, like, addiction, this craving. Now, is that going to happen to me? <laughs> I think it might. Now it depends <laughs> because you can you can completely get invested in something else IRL related, you know, where it just takes up yeah. all your time and stuff. But on the other hand, and I'll just say for example, I've been doing this as like my income now, so I don't really get a chance to just enjoy a break from the game. I feel like I'm kind of obligated now to play it, so it's tough for me to ever get a shot of comfortably taking a step away from the game and really getting that craving back that's like oh mm, yeah. because i have had that before before i was a content creator i would just stop playing the game for a month or two and i'm like i want osr like i want to play this like this is all i'm thinking about now it's mainly when i was working shitty jobs that was probably like the culprit of it like just <laughs> you do you're doing something you absolutely hate and then you think of like one thing that was always good to you osrs yeah 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 for sure yeah I would say that if I had an opportunity to do something like play Battle Royales mm -hmm. and stream to the same capacity, I would probably enjoy that more than old school. But I would never be able to like fully get myself off the game because mm -hmm. of that sense of progression. You can't just play a Battle Royale and get better each... You can't, you can't gain more and progress more each time. Yeah. That just... And, and if you stop playing, that progress is gone because your aim is going to be bad or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. Progress equals good. Old school equals progress. Okay. Um, did you have any other topics, Adicon? I'm just wondering if we didn't miss one. Or... I oh, think moth, we, we didn't even talk about the moths, mate. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the one that was like really low on the list that I skipped over. Okay. <laughs> My moths. We have, to, we have to cover this. Hemp. Hemsky asks, what's the thing with moths? And you specifically stated on your retweet, do not ask about moths unless you want a six-hour podcast. <laughs> I, I like moths a lot. Why? They're just very cool. It's just very cool. I posted some pictures, by the way. We have, um, we've had since I was very young, a moth box at home. And a moth box can be two things. It's one of those things where it's a glue trap that kills moths. And it can be a light box that attracts them. We have the we have the, the latter, the light ah. box. And as you can see in some of these pictures, we attract a variety of very nice looking, very, very cool mothy boys. <laughs> mothy and boys. It's been something we've been getting, getting out, especially as it, this time of year is perfect both for finding the caterpillars, the cocoons, and the moths. And we've had a really nice variety, including a couple of hawk moths that come out. Plus, in that box, those are those this is gonna get weird in that box are box moths caught in the moth box but are not oh. moths found in the box they are in fact moth box that eat from box moth. plants <laughs> oh my and, god and so the box moth is very prevalent it's an invasive species from china and it's all over box plants around the uk now but you can go into any box plant and pretty much find box moth chrysalis and or box moth caterpillars and i just plucked some out and they were hatching overnight so box moths not in a moth box but found but not caught in a in a moth box 
but not moth boxes. Not 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 box moths in a box because they were in a box. Just moth boxes. Mm. But yes. All right. But besides besides right. from that, they're very cool. So they, yeah, uh, is this your hand in all of these? And I, uh, my girlfriend's hand, my dad's hand, my mum's hand, and my hand for like one of them. <laughs> we're, 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 we're all Those exploring are... moths together. It's yeah, great. that's amazing. Very nice. So, what's the difference between a butterfly and a moth? Nocturnal, and moths are cooler. Interesting. Mm. I didn't know that. Okay. But don't kill moths, people. They're very cool. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd even want to kill a moth. Like, what are they gonna do? Like, they're not threatening me. Now, yeah. if they're in my, if there, if th there hasn't been, but if there was a moth in my room, yeah, I'd probably kill it. I'm sorry. I'm just like, hey, no, I, I don't know. Like what else? Well, I'm not going to just have a fucking moth fluttering around. Just, like just, just catch them with them. Out. Yeah, I guess I could catch it because it's not going to harm me. I could just catch it in my hands and throw it outside. Equality for all moths. I will be their ambassador. Oh I will goodness. be their light in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Addy Con. And exact, I have a couple topics for you to finish off the cast. And uh, right. by the way, I've thoroughly been enjoying this. Uh, exact must leave us soon, so we don't want to keep him up. Uh, we we don't want to delay uh, his rest of, the rest of his evening. So, my final questions are: first, it's going to be a question about what do you guys, where do you guys want to be, or where do you guys see yourself in five years from now? And also some shout-outs. It's a job interview. No, it is, this is a job interview <laughs> to become a co-host of the Save Cast. Now, so I'm gonna ask you guys straight up. So, uh, Adicon, I'll ask you first. Where would you like to be, and where do you see yourself in five years? And the shout-outs will come second, but I'll ask that first. My planning sucks. I kind of go with the flow for most of it. I my planning just I can't see more than two days into the future. I'm I'm generally careful that I'm not going in an awful direction, but outside of that, I just let myself go with flow, which is, I suppose, to some degree, dangerous. But, but it's a lot more it's a lot more fun. Yeah. So I'll I'll stream for as long as I can. I I would love to become more multi-game. I've been I've been playing a bit more Overwatch on stream. It's just fun, and I've been streaming less old school. And it's not that I want to. Disassociate, disassociate myself entirely. I, I'll always come back to it. Um, but there's other stuff coming out that I would just like to stream. It could be more me. Yeah. Uh, specifically, super people. Good uh, Korean made battle royale. Super fun. And as soon as that comes out, it's going to be hopefully at the end of this year. I'm probably going to split my streams 50 50 between old school and super people. And I don't know. I'd like, I would like to grow the audience outside of old school. But I think a lot of that depends on how the game develops. So I'll see where it takes me, basically. Very cool. But try to incorporate. I love to hear it. Exact. Where do you see yourself, or where would you like to be in five years from now? Oh my goodness, I have no idea. I feel like if I say anything, I'm going to look. This channel will still be up in five years, right? And uh, you know, don't 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 get banned on YouTube. And I'm just going to look back and be like, well, what what did I just say? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of different things on my mind. I, I have been considering going back to school um, for, for, for like a master's or a PhD or something. I'm not sure um, at the moment, though. Um, I really don't have like a place in mind, but I know that in the next five years, I would like to have traveled some more, seen more of the world, um, just experienced more around um, outside of the places the very you know you grow up in a place and it's a it's a bit of a narrow experience and i'd love to love to just see more of the world travel um, mm. that's beautiful i like it uh i always like to ask that because everyone's answer is usually a, super different um, by the way, uh this is very off topic but i've been thieving elves this entire time and i think i've thieved eight enhanced crystal teleport oh my goodness is, what I, I just made bank today by the way <laughs> that was isn't it one, is you that? get one per three hours usually i i think it's like you get one every two hours i think that's my okay. goodness. Or, or i guess you get two well when i say i got eight it's only four pickpockets that's i guess four, four rolls still right. in four hours that's, that's a good rate. 
I got I got twelve seeds on the West Ham cast, and that was only a three oh. hour cast. So I was Wait, like, "How much money is this?" I was like, "This one's got to balance out, and I'll just get none." Nope, I'm still doing great. <laughs> how much um, money is this one seed? <laughs> well, okay, so on my loot tracker, it says I've only thieved thirty nine hundred, and I have fourteen shards. So I've in thirty nine hundred pickpockets, I've made forty five mil. So what? Again, those are just oh my goodness. No, it is busted. This pl the left click pickpocket, by the way, is just busted. So anyway, that's off topic. But guys, I want to now ask you for three shout outs. Adicon, three shout outs and why. It doesn't have to be the top three, just three that you think oh. deserve it in the community. Anywhere, streamers, players, anybody, J mods, doesn't matter. Gee. I'll go back to Arkinos initially. Okay. Simply because I've just I've been enjoying him, watching him so much more on Twitch. So he's my first shout out, Arkinos. Uh, if you're enjoying like the the the, the mid game or interested in seeing someone progress rapidly from there, good choice. Um, cool. There's so there's so much good talent out there. There's so many there's there's, there's so many people. It's really difficult to to pick just two. Honestly, I'm not sure. I I am. Mm. I've got a lot of friends who don't stream as well. There's there's people that I know who are who are doing things in the background, just enjoying the game. I talk to them frequently, and I I don't I can't really shout them out because they're just they're doing their thing. But yeah. there are people in that position as well. Uh, no monkey, no monkey. He's a king and fantastic YouTube content. Uh, obviously, Inferno speeds so a bit preferential for me. Mm -hmm. But he's been pouring his heart heart and soul in, and he's really made some crazy progress. Got his sub fifty recently. Uh, and I think he's doing some really, really fantastic videos, just sort of covering as many topics as he can, trying to up the sort of knowledge for everybody, just a little bit at a time. Uh, very good, just level-headed. Yeah, his rambles good, are goaded. Really fantastic, yeah. So I would say Arkinos, No Monkey. And number three... Oh, it's difficult. Let me come back to number three. Exactly. Right. There you go. Exact. Go for it. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, number one, BF Rocket. The man, the Chad. The king. Um, yes, I the king. <laughs> yes, I miss him a lot. Um, yeah, he's just been an inspiration in many, many ways. Um, I believe... He started streaming a few months before I did. Um, and we, I mean, we grew our streams together. Uh, he, yeah, both both in, in the gameplay, his hardcore Iron Man, just, um, just the way he entertains and streams. Um, yeah, just shout out the man. He, he's been an inspiration. Hell yeah. Um, I'll shout out X Lena. Um, also a streamer. Just, I don't know. Absolutely wonderful energy in their streams. Doesn't stream as, both, both of them don't stream as much anymore. Yeah. There you Very, go. Miss them so much. Um, but yeah, I do she's helped me you. personally with a lot of things and just wonderful energy uh, brings so Always much smiling. to the community. Always yes. smiling. Always smiling. Yeah. Yes. Um, how do you choose three, man? How do you choose three? It's difficult. <laughs> All right. Third shout out goes to Mr. Bodhi, the, the man who has just made his return to streaming. Um, I'm so glad to see him back and uh yeah he's just done so much man he's he's built I, I feel like he's done so much to build up this community always shouting people out and um being an inspiration both as as the top streamer as well as you know interacting with the community itself yep um yes Great shout outs. Adicon for your third. You thought about it yet? I will say Mr. Hemis. Okay. Lastly. Hemis. Slept, slept, slept on. Slept on, slept on, slept on. His content's always been really fantastic. He really does a bit of everything in the game. 
and has always been pretty open that he he wants to do a bit of everything in the game, including things like PKing as well. He's not just just PVMing all the time. Please max though him. He's come on. It's about time. <laughs> but there's there's just I think I think he's got a lot more to give as well. He he's always been putting on like little events and things for people, and it's one of those things where you. It's just slept on again. Like a lot of the people just tune in specifically for the events, but he's doing good content all the time. So I think he'll be my third. Very good shout outs. Guys, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you the this afternoon. I will have your guys' links in the description. So of course, exact, you are gonna be uh off away, not streaming as much or potentially at all. But I will still have your Twitch link down there and your Twitter if that's cool. Um Adicon, yeah, for me. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Oh, exact. I'll also have your YouTube because you do have YouTube. And um, is that all the links? Do you guys want any other links? Feel free. Inferno speedrunning, perhaps, for those who are interested in it. Let's I always it. like to, we'll that to push it. Well. I'm actually starting a TikTok. Um, <gasps> uh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, could, I didn't want to like laugh <laughs> I got, I got initially. Excited. I just wanted to see if that was true or not. No. Uh, no, no. Uh, by the way, TikTok is massive. I think I'm a boomer when it comes to TikTok. My little brother moved yeah, in with me us too. recently. He has been it's, all over TikTok. And I'm I like, cannot oh, understand. This. Yeah. I cannot understand the format. It's yeah, too me much. Or... <laughs> it's too, <laughs> too Zoomer for us now. Yes. Um, but, guys, it was an absolute pleasure. And uh, thank you guys for your time. If you guys would like to support the cast, there is a Patreon link down in the description. For $2 a month, you can get your name on the title screen to support save a cast for upcoming episodes and if we hit 50 patrons we're currently at 34 if we hit 50 i will timestamp all future save a cast this one by the way will be timestamped for those listening and you've already seen it because i i like you too so i'll timestamp this one oh, <laughs> but, but uh yeah anyway thank you guys so much for listening as always and we will catch you in the next one peace Thank you so much. Huge. Is, Thank you, is that the? Is that your outro? We didn't, no. We didn't get to say anything. No. Is in. that your? We didn't get a thank you. <laughs> you me and me. Thank you. Oh, shadow saving. We're we're still Yay. recording. There you go. No. There you go. <laughs>